First city built for play is coming to Saudi Arabia. Don't just live life, play life. Kadia. For the longest time, we have wished that the wondrous worlds we game in were real. Explore, discover, and really play.
24-7 and constantly evolving. to the biggest events, where the greatest among us hone their skills. A new era of play awaits.
versus game oh. Got the power on my shoulders Kau ku sang petarung Kau bisa buat ku lelah But you can take me from my order I feel like the flow is lava The energy's getting higher You said you know your moves Cause I don't just believe I got you like the banana And you know you want the power Cause we are better Brandon, alam ko masalimot ngayon ang buhay mo. Kung kailan ka nabigyan ng break as a head coach sa pro scene ng Mobile Legends, doon ka pa nagkaroon ng malubang sakit. Iinday mo ng isang buwan. Itatago mo kasi akala mo na lang naman. Hanggang sa isang gabi, hindi ka na makatayo. Hindi ka na makalakad. Wala nang choice kundi dalhin ka sa ospital kasi grabe na yung sakit na iniinda mo. Magsisimula ang season na wala ka sa tabi ng team mo. Sobrang lungkot at depression ang dadanasin mo dahil sa sakit at kawalan ng pairamdam sa kalahati ng iyong katawan. Munti ka ka nang sumuko sa buhay. Buti na lang at may mga nurse, mga doktor, mga physical therapists at mga kaibigan na nagpatibay ng loob mo. Huwag mo silang kalimutan pasalamatan. Akala mo okay na ang lahat, kaso lulo ba pa lalo ang sakit mo? Pupunta ka sa bingit ng kamatayan, halos hindi ka na makahinga. Doon, mapapadasal ka sa Diyos na huwag ka na munang kunin dahil hindi pa tapos ang mission mo. Hindi pa tapos ang pangarap mo. Sabi mo nga, mag-champion ka pa. Maniwala ka na gagaling ka. Kumapit ka. Sa pagkakataon na yon, madudugtungan ang iyong buhay. Binigyan ka ng isa pang chance sa mundo para to pa rin ang pangarap mo. Kung akala mo wala nang kukuha sa iyong ML team dahil sa kalagayan mo, nagkakamali ka. 
may magtitiwala pa rin. Kukunin ka as coach ng isang team abroad. Igagrab mo yung opportunity kahit pa naka-wheelchair ka kasi gusto mo yung ginagawa mo. Magiging mahirap pero okay lang. Ang importante, sumubo ka at wala kang regrets. Unti-unti na rin mag improve ang kalagayan mo. Sabi ng mga doktor, kailangan mo ma-operan pero wala ka pa namang pera noon kaya naniwala ka nalang nagagaling ka. Sa tiyaga at paniniwala, makakatayo ka rin. Darating ang punto na makakalakad ka na ulit. Himala, di ba? May isa pang biyaya na darating. Lalapit ka na isang kaibigan, si Coach Daki, para maging taktisya ng AP Bren. May chance ka ulit na ituloy ang pangarap. Huwag mo tong sayangin. Ikaw ang susi na magbubukas ng bagong pintuan para sa iyong team. Makapagsibol kayo at dito magsisimula ang sunod-sunod niyong pagkapanalo sa iba't ibang tournament kabilang ang MPL Philippines Season 12. Kung data ay literal na hindi ka makalakad, ngayon lakad matatag ka na irerepresenta ang Pilipinas sa M5 World Championships. David, nakakatuwa manood ng MPL, no? Nakikita mo yung mga idol mo. Yung iba dyan, magiging kakampi mo. Maglaro ka lang na maglaro, tapos magpataas ka ng rank at stars. Sa sobrang loko mo, darating pa nga yung 24 hours na nag-live ka ng ML para magpapansin. Dahil sa kasapagan mong yun, may chance ka pang nakasali ka sa brand. Sobrang saya ng magiging run mo kasi magcha-champion ka na sa MPL tapos makakasali ka pa sa M2 World Championship. Nakaka-pressure pa yan kasi rookie ka pa lang tapos mag-worlds ka na. Buti na lang umayon yung resulta sa atin. Magiging champion ka ng M2. Oo, masaya siya. Kaso warning lang ah, yung mga susunod na mangyayari dito magiging mahirap at masakit para sa'yo. Ganun talaga yung buhay eh. Hindi laging masaya. Minsan, Pag nasa tuktok ka at hindi mo alam kung paano harapin ang tagumpay, sasagad-sad ka pababa at tama rin ka. Mayikinig sa maling sinasabi ng iba. At ang uli, magmamahal ka ng taong lolokohin ka lang pala. Sa mga panahong yun, mapatingin ka na lang sa salamin at parang hindi mo nakilala yung sarili mo. Magiging madilim yung mga susunod na kabanata ng buhay mo. Pero David, dito ka matututo. Oh, baka gusto mo laktawan tong part na to, ha? Hindi pwede, kasi mahalag ang pagdaanan mo to. Okay lang matakot, gawin mo pa rin. Magta-top 8 kayo sa MPL, talo, laglag. Hindi lang isa, dalawang beses pa. Dahil dito, mapaisip ka kung kaya mo pa ba, kung para sa'yo pa ba yung ML. Ngayon ka dapat hindi tumigil. Kailangan mong ituloy at patunayan sa sarili mo na kaya mo. Kahit sa mga oras na wala ka ng ganang gumalaw. Kung magagawa mo to, Magkakaroon ka ng disiplina. Gagawin mo siya dahil pinangako mo sa sarili mo na panahon na para magising at magbago. Kapag naayos mo na yung sarili mo, magiging maayos na teammate ka na sa mga kasama mo. Kung yung dati nga, sarili mo lang iniisip mo. Ngayon, mas masaya ka na kapag masaya yung teammates mo, di ba? Dahilan ito para mag-champion kayo sa iba at ibang tournaments, pati na rin sa MPL Season 12. Matutupad rin yung pangarap mo para sa team na makapag M5. Ngayon, sa pagkakataong ito, mas gagalingan mo pa kasi gusto mong maranasan nila ang feeling na naranasan mo noon. Kai, siguradong may ikaw pa dyan sa banyo kung saan ka naglalaro ng ML. Hindi ka kasi pwede maglaro sa kwarto niyo, no? Dahil sure, napapapagalitan ka na naman. Tatagan mo ang loob mo kasi masasabihan ka pa ng magulang mo na wala kang mapapala dyan. Huwag mong itake yun negatively. Instead, gawin mong motivation yun para mapatunayan sa kanila at sa sarili mo na may future ka sa ML. Magpasalamat ka pa rin sa parents mo kasi kahit na pinapagalitan ka nila palagi dahil sa kaka-ML mo, lagi ka pa rin naman nilang pinapairam ng cellphone para malaro to. Mangarap ka. Gawin mo lahat ng makakaya mo para makilala ka sa ginagawa mo. Iwasan mo yung pagiging tilted. Hindi yun makatulong sa'yo. 
Magpataas ka lang ng stars. May amateur team na makakadiscover sa'yo. At dahil dito, makakasali ka sa maraming tournaments. Marami kang matututunan. Hindi lang sa in-game aspect, kundi pati na rin sa pakikitungo sa ibang tao. Sa tamang panahon, makakapasok ka ng AP Brin. Magiging ganap na pro player ka. Oh, huwag kang kabahan. May mga coach ka na gagabay sa'yo. Tsaka mabuting tao rin mga magiging teammates mo. Kapag may napapatsin kang mali o kailangan niya yung puro, magsalita ka. Mas okay maging totoo kaysa maging pabaya. Matuto ka rin tumanggap pag ikaw naman ang may mali. Hindi ka rin naman laging tama eh. Magkakaroon pa nga ng pagkakato na hindi ka makakaretry sa isang pinaka-importanteng laro sa karera mo. Pero alalahanin mo lang rason mo kung bakit ka nandito. Kung bakit ka naiipagsapalaran sa ML. Magpapagawa ka pa ng bahay para sa pabilya mo, di ba? At pangbabong ka na, di ba? Kaya laban lang. Triplayin mo ang sipag mo. Marami ka pang pagsubok na pagdadaanan. Ihahanda ka ng lahat ng yan para sa M5 World Championship. Malay mo, ang kasunod pala ng tagumpay dito. Sarili mo ng bahay at mas maging hawang buhay. O, Jean. Unang-una, gusto kong malaman mo na may gimais din ang lahat. Alam kong pagod na pagod ka ngayon kasi break sabay mo yung work, paglalaro ng email at pag-aaral mo. Call center agent ka sa gabi, estudyante sa umaga, tapos sumasali ka pa sa email tournaments tuwing weekends. Maka kang namulat sa hirap ng buhay. Pito kayong magkakapatid at walang ibang maasaan ng mama mo kundi ikaw. Kahit minsan, ang side-side na. Nakiin mo muna. Tibahin mo loob mo para makatulong ka sa pamilya mo at mabigyan sila ng maayos na kinabukasan. Tarating ka rin naman sa point na marilas mo na kailangan mag-focus ka lang sa isang bagay. Huwag ka magpapaubos. Mas makakatulong ka sa kanila kung masaya ka rin sa ginagawa mo. Sa unang sabak mo sa amateur scene ng email, wala ka pag-aanong ipapanalo. Pero dahil sa pagtyatsyaga mo, Magtiwala ka may makakapansin din sa talento mo. May makakaalala ng pangalan mo. Nakatawa man isipin, pero napakaswerte mo pa rin. Nadaling ka rin tadaan na dyan sa AP Brain. Narating ang chance mo na patunayan ng sarili. Sa kawalan ng player na pupuno, ikaw ang magbubuo sa team nyo. Pero Jin, kahit na ba'y chance ang pagpasok mo, binigay mo naman ang lahat ng oras mo sa paglalaro ng ML. Kaya naging magaling ka dito. Marami kayong pagsubok na pagdadaanan na sa team. Pero malalagpasan nyo rin lahat yan. Di ba nga, minsan sa buhay kailangan mo muna maranasan yung hirap para mas ma-appreciate mo yung ginhawa pag narating mo na. Ituloy mo lang yung pagsusumikap mo kasi dadaling ka sa landas kung saan matutulungan mo na ang pamilya mo, matutupad mo pa ang pangarap mo. Magka-champion ka sa MPL at magiging parte ka ng M5. Ngayon, ay thankful ka dahil alam mong mas masarap ang tagumpay dahil narasad mo ang pait ng buhay. Nami name
sa mapakali Panay lang ang kamot sa anit at kahit alam mo na di naman to makate Dugo pati laway at pawis tumulo, akala mo ba lahat to madali? Hindi nagmamadali, akyatin ang hagdan na talagang matare Ganyan talaga ang mga batang Pinas, talagang malakas Kahit anong meta, wala kang ligtas, talagang matigas Na parang daliri ng mga kalaban, sa gitna ng laban Shooters namin talagang savage Papaawa sa aming lupang sinilangan Ang dami ng binilangan Ang isa, dalawa, tatlo, handa na ba kayo? Ito na pang apat Kaya dami na naman niyakin kahit nadaanin pa sa mga tipi-tipi-tipidal Paano kami hahabulin? Marami itong gasolin na lalamunin ang lahat ng tipidal Sanay sa ating maandugong palaban Pagpangong babawi kahit sugatan Sinag ng araw, tatlong bitubin Pilipinong may giting nagniningin Ating maandugong palaban Babangon, babawi, kahit sugatan Sinag na araw, tatlong bituhin Pilipino may giting nagniningi Ang maong away ang sinugdanan Di mo sugot madakpan pagbalik Tanang agian kay dirit sumapalit Ang init sa tughan kay dili mawakli Sanay sa ating maandugong Shadow Dragon was once my biggest weakness, but now it's my most potent weapon. Our identity isn't limited to just esports players. Our style. Sweat. Our passion. And vibe. View our, our energy. When we dominate the stage. Hours of sacrifice. 
if we are. So, what is our identity? We are legendary. Undeniable though are the meteoric stats in the middle or in the mobile gaming industry and the eSports Mobile Game of the Year celebrates the best of the best. It is my pleasure to announce the 2023 Mobile Game of the Year. Mobile Legends Bang Bang. Congratulations. Woo! Oh my god. Thank you guys. In every tournament, pros fight not only for glory, family, and their country, but also for the heart of every game. The fans. Are you one of them? My name is Queenie Tornis and I am representing Blacklist International Asia! Perjalanan Sonic ini udah berdiri sejak lima tahun yang lalu. Sampai kita kalah, sampai apa itu, Onik udah ada. Homeboys sebenarnya sangat penting sebab dia bukan saja untuk homeboys, dia untuk tingkatkan komuniti di uh, MLBB dekat Malaysia ni. Kita nak kalau boleh komuniti-komuniti tim lain bersama juga semangatnya macam Flameboys. Hal yang bisa kita berikan secara maksimal uh, itu adalah dukungan. Bila moral player tengah down, tapi kita orang tak tengah down. Kita orang tengah hype. Kita apa-apa pun, kita sebagai macam homeboys ada lima player, Kita orang, Flameboys adalah player ke-6. And I can say that I'm in the, I'm the correct fan of it. Because they really value their fans. I can feel that this is not just like playing games or what, but this is like a family, a whole fan. Player Homeboys punya gameplay, every season, they macam improve, improve, improve. Um, like wins or losses, like um, they really not take it seriously, but they just take it as a room of improvement. Menang atau kalah, still support. Kalau mereka kalah, meski sedih tapi tetap rukun. Kekalahan itu awal dari kemenangan yang lebih besar. We wanted to make sure and ensure that they still feel that we are still here for them no matter what happens. Jadi ada delapan kota yang bakal kita ada di Muspakti. Even if they lose, they will win the next game. Blacklist, break the code! Blacklist, break the code! They have always felt your unwavering support and love. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pag-supportan nyo sa amin palagi. Sobrang namomotivate kami lalo lumaban sa mga next games namin dahil sana sa pag-support nyo sa amin. Kaya po sana na tuloy-tuloy lang. And yun, thank you so much. Maraming maraming salamat sa mga agents na walang sawang sumusuporta sa amin kahit na manalo man o matalo, dyan pa rin kayo para sa amin. Yun. Isa kayo sa mga ano, rason kung bakit pa kami natapat. Thank you sa inyo. Pertama, makasih banyak yang udah dukung dimanapun kalian, dari Manado, dari semuanya lah pokoknya. Dukungan kalian sangat berarti buat kita. Bikin kita semangat, bikin kita lebih konsisten juga biar menang terus. Guys, dukung kita dan kita juga nggak akan bosan buat juara. Terus yang terakhir mungkin selalu doain kita terus. Kasih. Thank you to all Sonics for supporting us. It really is uh, touching and we really appreciate all of you guys from wherever you guys are. And I hope you continue supporting us and don't be bored. We will try our best to win every tournament for you guys.
And then, oh, okay, yeah, sure. And then turn it. Yes, go. <laughs> Hello guys, hari ni kita nak raid Play Player Room Tank dekat dalam M5. Kon. Bu sezon favori tank koyacağımdan biri Malezya'da bayağı izleme şansım olmuştu. Ese koyuyorum. Dekat saya ada Apex 47 eh. Apex 47 daripada team. Kalau tak ingat B guys. <laughs> Keyboy. <laughs> no. Keyboy. Key here. Poshu. My classes is Kim Boy. Kim Boy, my idol. I'm gonna put also in here. Oh, my idol, Baloyski. The macro god, I think here. Oh, I think here. S plus. First off, uh, me. I'm going to put it like A tier. I don't want to overrate myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm back to Oh. It's okay. It's hard. D. Uh, sebab orang cakap dia tak tahu pun. Me. Because I'm bad, I'm going to put you. F. Sorry, Baloy. And me. Okay. Oh, Luna. <laughs> Luna. <laughs> Uh, Luna B. <laughs> Apex. I think here. Uh, eh, here, here. It's okay. Here. Actually, Sorn. On my level. Sorn is like a mechanical player and also likes to taunt people. Ogun, idol. S. Oh, NJ will lose. NJ will lose. For me. Yeah. Sorn. Uh, my enemy. With me. Sorry, you're my enemy. <laughs> matches will kick off the opening phase of the phase two of the knockout stage. The reveal of the M5 main stage also saw two intense series that sent two more teams home. While the tournament is now down to the final four. The showdown between the agents and the geeks started off as fierce as it can get. You, Flickers back, Ohev, in trouble now, Baloo comes in oh! with the Brave Spider and finds two. Blacklist International crumbling under Geek right now. With the Indonesian squad taking the first game. And Geek fam against the odds take game number one. Blacklist International reverted by staging an epic comeback. Boys, keep inside with a wild charge, knock up onto Edward. Luke in the backside with Brave Spider looking for Ohev. Gets a stun, the wave. Oh! Oh! Goes down. Luke! Now it's Luke against the world. Marky looking for some free shots. No way Luke goes down. Oh! Who oh, as well? Black oh! Oh! To turn the game around and take the second lord. And Blacklist International takes game number two. And the series was tied one to one. The agents did it again as their patience paid off, claiming the win and reaching match point. Don't want to stop here. Netherrealm is still oh. in play, but there comes Noah and Fury. A boy! Oh. Back to Edward, able to find a boy. Marking the backside with a blazing duet. Bloisky goes down. Luke is going to be next on the top of the block. Who gets Edward, it? Kyle. Picks up the double. Kyle trying to get oh. the play. Sensui takes it from his fingers. And it was down to the hitman's Estes, the signature Ube of Blacklist International to send the geeks home. The Cambodian champions did what they do best, attack and never look back. And they're all smashed against the wall. Four members of Deus Vault taken oh, no. out. Despite a valiant defense by Sunset Lover, see you soon prevails. Sunset Lover doing everything he can, but they're going to get the final oh! shot. Oh, no way. We'll move on and take game number one. <laughs> The Sooners continued their aggression and cornered Deus Volt from the start. The oh. Victor is going to get the knock up on Asari on Felix. With the crossbow tanks ready to unload once again. Madison going to go down. Oh. Who's able to pick up the kill? Asawa finally getting the four man knock up. Felix in the midst of the ball. Asawa trying to get away, but he can't. Sorry, Felix picks up the kill. And now Kid Baba will fall next. Felix with the double. Sunset Lover all alone once again. Oh. Going to go down. A triple kill for Kuse. 
After over 30 minutes of non-stop skirmishes, Deus Volt showed that they were not done yet. Salvo, look for the kill Carby there as well, and down goes MP. Debu, move forward. Zoo! Magister unleashed his real potential by shutting down MP the King again and again and again. But still, ultimate pool. Magister able to lock on again with a violent record. And Sawo also going to come in with an Owen Fury. Oh. And the Bomba mentality helped EECA to extend the series. It is Rise of the West, as Deus Volt completed the reverse sweep with their signature Diggy Pick. Felix the base down, the base drops, and the sunset closes on See You Soon as the Dark Knights rise. We are now down to the last two days of M5. We are so close to witnessing the crowning of the new world champions.
world's first city built for play is coming to Saudi Arabia. Don't just live life, play life. Kadia.
journey of epic proportions, the stuff of myth and legends, long-term storytelling told on the grand stage at the mall. 
about to conclude tonight in the M5 World Championships Grand Finals. Welcome my boy, at your service, my name is Leo, here with Gideon, Mirko, and Wolf, setting the stage for Indonesia's Onik and the Philippines' very own A.P. Bren. Today's story can't just be told amongst the four of us. Honestly, some might even say a blind cat could have predicted that this matchup was gonna happen. Someone did say that, right? I remember very vividly in the back, but it's just crazy to see, even though we predicted this outcome, the two best teams in the world, AP Brand and Onik, go head to head in the grand finals in this arena with a full crowd. And the development of these two teams were amazing. They are like the best in both worlds. They have the best mechanically skilled players, and they also have the best coaching staff. I mean, this is a match made in heaven, as I would say. We have a capacity crowd live here, broadcasting from the heart of Manila in the Philippines. The Rizal Memorial Coliseum has never felt more alive. The M5 World Championship is powered by Moonton, presented by Kadia, supported by ROG, the official gaming phone. Grab, the official Super App partner, and Secret Lab, our official chair partner. Thank you to our lovely sponsors. M5 would not have been possible without your support. This is also presented by Kadia. The play of the day coming up in just a bit. There's a lot that's happened so far in the grandest stage of them all as we conclude 2023. You guys have any sharper memories? Because to me, it's been a blur. It has been a blur. Some of my favorite moments will also include some of the dark horses. Devu, we will never forget you. I mean, that that's one of them, right? The Bomba uh, in M5 has been phenomenal, but one particular play, I feel like, especially yesterday, that caught everyone's eye has to be the comeback moment from Keyboy. That implosion in the end, a flicker implosion that was truly a certified Keyboy moment. <laughs> I think for me, um, what, I think there are so many good, like, nerd, good plays for nerds, you know? You know, like uh, the defense for sure, the Lord dances. I think that the M5 has shown us many good strategies from uh, all of the teams around, even the teams that didn't make it to the grand finals. That's why I felt like this M5 is just like a you know top level from other M series. Just as it should be, the world is watching. Even soon to become MLBB fanatics are watching. And if this is your first World Championships, you better not miss a beat. Let's go ahead and check out that play of the day presented to us by Kadia. Come in from the knockout stage, day number six. This one brought to us by Keyboy. Miracle, you're gonna enjoy this one. It's that implosion. That implosion was absolutely phenomenal, but it's all the build up towards that play, right? It wasn't like Onik uh, weren't able to make plays at all. AP Bren were ahead. They were the ones dictating the tempo of the game, but when it came down to a lot of the defensive moments, Onik were able to push back multiple times. So they have set that up and they've already kind of read out how AP Brand likes to go for the sieges. And in the end, they were able to capitalize fully on just a few mistakes, few demonic forcing into the base. And I would say a little bit of a mispositioning from Super Marco, who was already playing very safe, but in the end still got caught out by that implosion flicker combo. And it all comes down to this the greatest finale. Two tournament favorites meeting at the grand final stage. Who would have thought that their journey would have come to this in the way it did? I mean, considering the preparation that was needed, the preparation for Onik initially, which fumbled, this is round two. And what I do feel about this is the story that we have, this great finale that we have, it's a developing story that would have stemmed a year ago, right? Specifically for AP Brand, because this lineup that they had, this is kind of quite a gamble that they did when they t took in uh, Caltesia as well as Ogwen. And then for Onik, also a very long year of drought in their uh, in, in that organization for international tournaments. But now with Kyrie and Kochev, they have been achieving so much. So I think this is a a very long story that we're just heading into the last chapter of. That's right. The past month wherein we started the M5 World Championships is but what a chapter in both AP Bren's World Tour and Onyx Golden Road. Let's take a look back at the journey of these top two teams from the upper bracket down to the lower as they prepare for glorious combat. We started with eight teams in the knockouts. Now we're down to two. Yep, and so far Onik and AP Brand, they've fed, are fed up with each other. They've beaten each other to a pulp. As soon as AP Brand dropped down to the lower brackets, we saw possible turnarounds. Devu and Blacklist looking to rise up. What's crazy is the fact that, you know, even though Blacklist International and Deus Volt had a phenomenal run, AP Brand with all the doubts, with even the crowd support going to Blacklist International more in that lower bracket finals, 
a lot of people were asking, after that 3-0 beating, after that comeback in game number one against Onik, how will AP Bren do in the lower bracket finals? Are they even going to be able to perform to an average AP Bren? And they did. They stomped. They destroyed Blacklist 3-0 to make it convincing and to make their vengeful comeback in the Grand Finals. And we can see that the development coming out from AP Bren was more about their draft adjustments. And if you're looking at their previous match, between Onik and AP Bren, surely there's a lot of doubts for AP Bren because it was a 3-0. But if you look at it, AP Bren did not exhaust their hero pool going up against Onik during the first time. And there's a hard reset because they had to wait for another day to fight again. So I think this will be a totally different series as compared to before. I mean, this is the greatest finale. Onik versus AP Bren. When you're asking these two great teams to be great, the truth is, we ask for more. We ask them to be better than great. And in this very moment, preparation is going to be key, especially for AP Brem, but even for Onik. That free flow style, it makes them unpredictable. It makes them squeeze out wins that almost feel undeserved. And tonight, we're about to make history once more. Legacy in the making for both of these teams. No team has ever won the M Series twice. AP Bren might be able to do that. No host country has ever won the M Series. AP Bren might be able to do that. No team has ever completed the Golden Road. Onik is on their way. It feels like whatever the outcome that is to come later on, we will see history be written down in the books here. Legacy in the making, it couldn't have been this epic, right? I mean, Ooh. really, these two teams, one on the world tour, kind of a golden road by themselves as well, with all the odds stacked against them, but with the home crowd support. I really just can't wait to see how they're able to bounce back. They weren't able to figure Onik out yesterday. But now, what does change? You mentioned earlier that they did change, or maybe they were hiding a few things in the drafts, right? They were letting go Nolan three games in a row. These are things that no other team... It's crazy, actually. ...has done against Kyrie. I mean, exactly. against the Assassin Master himself. Why would they do that, Wolf? Why? I, I mean, I, I wish I could explain. I wish I have answers, but even as... As a good friend of Duckies and a coach friend and the rest of AP Brand, I'm also, you know, surprised that they gave Nolan, the OPest assassin we have, to the OPest assassin player that we have in the world, you know, with Kyrie. So um, there, there are really no valid explanations from that, apart from the fact that they really just want to make sure that they can win against uh, um, Onik with the standard draft that they had. But it didn't work. For sure, there will be adjustments. I don't know about you boys. I'm curious to know your opinions. I, I feel like I already know theirs when it comes down to which team storyline do they love the most. I personally love the Onyx. What about you, Leo? I've been a fan of the Hive. Count me in as a member, even in the early days when they won that world championship in Singapore about two or three years ago in M2. Gentlemen, all right, let's not have miracle talk. We, we know how potent that is. No, 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 no. I want to hear from Wolf. Ah. Uh my prediction already yeah you know what i'm gonna go all in of course i'm in the philippines i'm friends and also a big fan of ap brand i'm gonna go with ap brand it's gonna be a 4-2 win for the philippines 4-2 4-2 already result memorial coliseum i hope you guys are ready let me hear y'all roar one time i like it i like it we're building up to a best of seven we're taking it from this level, and later when the draft begins, I hope you guys are able to provide us with a little bit more. The stage is being set, and the teams are about to be ready. Let's throw it over to the lovely Mara and the very handsome Mikey to open up this show. Thank you, talents, and hello to everybody watching from all around the globe. My name is Mara Aquino. And my name is Mikey Reyes, or people call me Tito Mikey. Now I want to feel the energy in here and see who is rooting for Onik. Let me hear it from you. Huh? All right. Onik fans are in the house. Good job, though. But I want to hear from the bees, from the high of AP Wow, the energy here is phenomenal. Now, I know everyone
everyone is excited for who we will crown as the next M Series World Champion. But first, to commemorate the start of this prestigious event, how about we'll kick things off by announcing the M5 Fan Choice Awards. And to celebrate this achievement, may we call on stage Regional Esports Head of Moon Town Games, Miss Sophie Go. Garnering over 17 million supporter votes, the M5 Fan Choice Award goes to Onyx. And to accept the award, please let us call on stage head of Onyx MLBB. Sir Ahmad Mars Marsam. Congratulations to Onik. And we will hear a few words from Sir Ahmad. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. As a surprise representative of Onik, uh, I would like to thank uh, Muntan and all sponsors for the opportunity of us all being here in M5. Thank you so much, Muntan. And also, thank you, Philippines, for being such a great host for us. And also, I would like to thank all Mobile Legends fans and all esports enthusiasts for supporting uh, this Mobile Legends esports scene. And also, especially Sonic, right, for supporting us always being with us and yeah all for sonic for everyone here i also can say this award is not for only only not for sonic also but it's also for all of you guys because no matter where you come from no matter which team are you supporting we all have the same passion the same energy for the game we love mobile legends yeah And also, this award will boost our energy in the Grand Final letter. So, see you in the Grand Final. Thank you so much. Go on it! Thank you so much and once again, congratulations to Onik. Now, let's see what else is in store for our M5 Grand Finals. So, let's throw it back to all the talents all around the globe. Casters. Pasok. Thanks, Mara. Thanks, Tito Mikey. And thanks and congratulations to Coach Mars of Onyx and all the Sonics around the world. Back at the analyst stand, opening up the show once more, adding a little bit of layers to the story we're about to tell. We're now joined on the stage by the breakout star of M5, his kid Bamba. I mean, Hello, if, everybody. Hello, everybody. If there was a fan favorite award, I think we all know who it's going to go to. And honestly, should there be a fan favorite award? Uh, I'm actually not sure, man. Uh, I think it's a nice little thing, you know? Uh, when people can show their support openly and we introduce an award like this, it might increase more support generally to the community. So I think it's a nice thing, you know? I think it's safe to say Rizal Memorial Coliseum, everyone in the stands are considered Bomba Natics now. Just look for me to sign up. It's already certified and approved by Kid Bomba. From Germany to the world stage, you are now an MLBB icon. How has your journey been so far? Talk to us. Um, it's been amazing. All the support I've been getting has been so supporting to me and I've never had a feeling like this is just something It's surreal to me that so many people actually support Devu, support me and I just want to say a big thank you again. Uh, I had nothing where I came from. I came here taking a big risk and it paid off in my opinion. 
Let's reel it back to the matchup at hand. Gideon, Miracle Wolf, and I actually started it up. AP Bren versus Onik, Onik versus AP Bren. What do you think of these 10 players going into uh, the Land of Dawn? Because if I remember correctly, you've faced Onik in a 5v5, right? right? You faced him in the knockouts. What do you think of AP Bren? Uh, AP Bren is a great team. I think they can actually win this series. Uh, if they don't fail the drafts, they can close it out pretty quickly, in my opinion. Yesterday, there was an issue with Anolan. Uh, in the first game, they got the Mathilda, and it was a pretty, it's a pretty good hero against the Nolan since you cannot do anything when she's just circling around the Nolan, right? Doing damage to him. So if they find the new version of the Mathilda when Mathilda gets banned, uh, I think Bren has a very good chance of winning the whole thing. That's some great insight. And as a matter of fact, it's great to hear because we got the lineups and I want you to talk me through these players, right? Who are you looking, if you were facing them, how would you handle them, right? Let's pull it up on screen for everybody. Introducing some of these players, it's roll call time, Leo. Here we go. You are at the receiving end of Boots' lane and you've also faced off against CW, Kyrie, Sans and Keyboy. What was it like facing Onik? Uh, Onik is a very strong team when it comes to micro. Uh, they find a lot of pickoffs and they're very quick when it comes to the map. I feel like some other uh, strength relies in maximizing the AD carries farm. For example, you would see Boots uh, just having pretty low gold compared to every other, any other guy in the team. Kyrie, uh, Sans, and CW mostly have the most gold in the team. And when Kyrie is on Assassins, then he excels. For me, CW is a key player in the series and Sans. Uh, CW mostly because his ADC is just so strong, his 1-1, one -one, his Bruno, we all saw the defense. Um, it was pretty crazy, so I might be looking out for Kyrie's, Assa Kyrie's Assassins tonight if he gets the Nolan again. It might be a show in itself. Uh, maybe they, maybe he's going to pick up the Fanny in the finals, would be Ooh. crazy. <laughs> and for Sans, I'm really looking towards his like, Valentina if he gets to pick it up. Also, his Novaria has been straight, pretty strong throughout the series. And his Skadida with the pickoffs has just been amazing as well. Man, you have you have seen this team right through them. But what? let's compare them, right? You're talking a lot about CW, we're talking a lot about Sans. Let's compare them to AP Brand with Super Marco, Kyle TZ, Flap TZ, Few, and as well as Ogun, specifically Super Marco. You're talking about CW being such an incredible AD. What about Super Marco? Super Marco has been amazing throughout the Soul Series, man. Throughout the whole tournament, he's been performing great. I feel like some of the strengths will lie in the Brody and the 1-1. And Super Marco has been probably the best one of the whole tournament, in my opinion. Oh. The way he performed yesterday versus Blacklist was just amazing. Then if you look at the roster few with his like, signature pick, Odette and Fovius, they can do so much with that. Uh, Fovius Flexway can be a very good option for them in this series. And Flap also has such a big hero pool and it allows them to utilize so many heroes that usually can only be flex cannot be flexed that much. Fovius, Arlot. All these kind of heroes. I think they also have uh, Grinova Rome in their pool tonight. It's gonna be amazing. Talking about that, I think Gideon would understand. From an explainer to another explainer, who would you rather face off against? Flap TZ or Boots? Um, I think in the team fights, Boots might have a small advantage, but when it comes to laning, Flap TZ is clearly the stronger player, in my opinion. Only when it comes to laning, though. After that, I'm not the one to dodge, actually. It's a team game. After five to six minutes, it's usually group up, so... Uh, whoever has the lead, whoever wins the second turtle is probably going to be able to stomp. I hope it, it's not a game where both teams just stomp each other. Uh, I hope it's going to be a close series where objectives get traded a lot. Speaking of, Gideon, I think it's time. We should ask him. Yep, 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 yep. I mean, we've been so very curious about it, right? If, just if, there was an opportunity for you joining one of these teams, better yet, facing off one of these teams, which would you prefer? Um, joining AP Bren, facing Onik, because I lost them and I want to get my revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine having one of these gentlemen on your side, right? You have a jungler as amazing as Kyrie, a jungler as amazing as Kyle TZ. We're presenting here how often they're able to get kills from all of the other lanes. You see here, Kyle TZ, able to activate the roam a little bit more, just bear down on Keyboy, uh, that's theoretically. Kyrie though, favors uh, the uh, XP lane more. Did he hit you a lot? Um, I feel like it just comes to the swapping lane after the fourth minute, right? You usually see the XP lane that's swapping lane with the gold lane. Gold lane goes to the opposite side of the turret to be able to farm a little bit more freely. 
And I think that's the timing where the jungler and the XP cooperate a lot in that, in that five to seven minutes. In that window, I guess Onig really utilizes that window with Kyrie and Boots, so that's probably where that statistic comes from. Safe to say, even Kyle Tizi would actually prefer that, 27 to 28. Secondary would be Rome. So I think it just makes sense. That's where how the, that's where the, how the turtle fights break out. Yeah, I mean, we've seen so many types of like neutrals, the way that EXP specifically plays that huge role. Talk to us a little bit. Well, I, I mean, from an EXP laner to EXP laner, how much impact do we really have over the game? XP laner is such an underrated role, in my opinion. They make out a lot of the objectives, you know? You Almost every objective is like 50% of the XP laner's job of the XP laner fails before the first turtle. Uh, first turtle is such an important objective right now. If you lose that objective, you can lose a lot. It should be an equal trade every single time you give the first turtle away. Either you only give the first turtle away or you get a kill in exchange. Any other, anything other than that, you just get snowballed and XP plays such a massive role in that. Usually it's also the XP controlling the long lane, how Wolf calls it, right? Mm -hmm. And that is also such an important part when it comes to Lord Dances. So really looking forward to the matchup today, Flaptizi versus Boots, because it's just going to show us who has the superior macro, because for XP you need a lot of macro. Wait, 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 wait. Again, show some love to your XP laners, but wait, I think I'm getting breaking news here. Get in. Is it in your feed too? Yeah, it's in my feed. I hear it too, loud and clear. Oh no. Folks, watching at home, you're gonna wanna hear this. We got breaking news on the upcoming M6. We're not even done with M5. Check out what's up for next year. Welcome to the Mobile Legends Bang Bang M1 World Championships here. Most the champion of Mobile Legends Bang Bang M1 World Championship 2019. Welcome to the Mobile Legends Bang Bang M2 World Championships live. Uh, yes, hey. Bring La Malaka. This is the M3 we have been waiting for, featuring the best of the best. Ladies and gentlemen, your M3 World Champions, Blacklist International! We are here in Jakarta, where the M4 knockout stage is taking place. Echo are your M4 World Champions! Welcome you to the M5 World Championship! championship will be held in Malaysia. What exciting news. I know we're here for M5, but who's hyped for M6 in Malaysia? No, I think we have an incoming call here, Tito Mikey. Wow. We have a call? Who's on the line? Hello, Rose and Sith. How are you guys doing? Rose and Sith are live in Malaysia right now. There they are. Hello, Hello Mara and Tito Mikey. Hello, Filipinas. Kamusta kayong lahat? We are live from Malaysia. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. And now it's officially where the MC started. And now, Malaysia, back to become the host again. Rose and Seth, it's great that you already know me. I hope to meet you guys very, very soon. But what does this mean for the MLBB community in Malaysia that we're coming back to your country? All right, guys, so there you have it. The M6 World Championship will be coming right back to Malaysia where the M Series actually started. Yeah, di mana kita sangat-sangat berbangga di mana negara Malaysia sekali lagi selepas M1 berada di Malaysia dan sekarang M6 
kita akan menjadi tuan rumah. Yes. So guys, to celebrate such a big announcement on the grand finals of M5, we actually prepared something for the people here. Betul tak sih? Yes, untuk merayakan acara announcement ini, kita ada sesuatu khas untuk anda bersempena dengan Malaysia menjadi tuan rumah untuk M6. Malaysia adalah negara pertama menjadi tuan rumah untuk M5 dan pasukan Malaysia untuk Tona M telah menjadi tempat yang ketiga pada M1 tersebut. Yes, for those of you guys who do not know, M1 was held in Malaysia where Tona placed third place and Evos Legends from Indonesia took home the championship. All right, so this is a very special celebration for the announcement for the next host country for the M6. With the M series returning to Malaysia, it just means that the Malaysia esports scene is rapidly growing. And we would like to invite Daniel Chua and Najwa Latif to sing the Gamuro song to celebrate this very, very special announcement. And let's sing together for these very iconic songs together with Daniel Chua and Najwa Latif. Alright, siapa tahu uh, lagu gemuruh ni? Come, sing together with us, okay? Let's go! Bila bertalu, rentak di kalbu Yes! Hasrat yang tersirat semakin kuburu Bila bergema Laungan gembira, harapan menyala nadiku berganda. Let's go, three, four, gemuruh jiwa, semangat membara. Let's go, dari puncak ingin ke angkasa. The Mobile Legends Bang Bang M Series World Championship is coming back to Malaysia. And to further celebrate this wonderful news, allow me to call on stage the Under Secretary of the Department of Tourism, Attorney Shireen Gail T. Yu Pamintuan, as well as Deputy Minister of Youth and Sports from Malaysia, we have Mr. Y. B. Adam Adli. And accompanying them are two Malaysian MLBB legends, Chiku and Moon of Toda. And before, and before our turnover, may we please hear from Attorney Shireen Gail T. Yu Pamintuan about her thoughts of this great news. Distinguished guests, esteemed colleagues in the world of esports, to my fellow Kababayans, and especially to all MLBB gamers and fans present here at Rizal Memorial Coliseum and all those watching on their screens across the globe. Mabuhay! Love the Philippines! A pleasant evening to all of you. The big night is finally here. And on behalf of the Philippines Department of Tourism and the Filipino people, it is with great honor to welcome you here in Manila. Tonight's electrifying grand finals is a celebration of excellence, expected to be an epic battle filled with intense strategies and amazing, amazing teamwork. 
We extend our deepest gratitude to the luminaries who have been instrumental to the success of this event. To Mr. Lucas Mao, Esports Global Managing Director, and Mr. Roger Yu, Mobile Legends Bang Bang producer and Vice President of Moonton Games, your visionary leadership has been the cornerstone of this collaboration. To Ms. Sophie Guo, Head of MLBB Regional Esports, your expertise has been invaluable in orchestrating this very grand affair. I would also like to extend a special salute to Deputy Minister of Youth and Sports Malaysia, the Honorable Adam Adi, whose support and advocacy for esports have significantly contributed to the vibrancy of this industry in our region. We also extend recognition to the following individuals for their unwavering support. Attorney Richard Clarin of the Games and Amusements Board, Honorable Abraham Tolentino, President of the Philippine Olympic Committee, and Mrs. Michaela Jaworski, Representative of the International Olympic Committee. Special mention also goes to Mr. Brian Lim, President of the Philippine Esports Federation, Mr. Boban Todovsky, Secretary General of the International Esports Federation, Mr. Do Viet Hung, General Secretary of the Vietnam Esports Federation, Mr. Afik Fadli, Fadli Bin Narawi, President of the Sarawak Esports Association, Mr. Panupong Ong Kunaruk, Secretary General of the Thailand Esports Federation, and Mr. Yi Xian Hao, General Secretary of the Esports Association of Brunei. Your collective efforts and commitment to the esports community has been pivotal in elevating the stature of this championship. We are filled with immense excitement and pride as we stand at the forefront of a pioneering venture in esports and tourism. What an interesting combination mobile gaming events and tourism makes. Fans travel far and wide to attend these events, which in turn boost tourism in the host country. So thank you for choosing the Philippines and for allowing us to showcase our culture through our people, our food, our award-winning and breathtaking destinations, and of course, our famous Filipino hospitality. Tonight marks not just a celebration of our partnership with Moonton Games, but also a bold step into a future where gaming and tourism converge in a spectacular display. In the thrilling world of Mobile Legends Bang Bang, a game that has captivated all of us and millions globally, we find more than just a mobile multiplayer online battle arena, we also discover a platform where skill, strategy, and passion unite players across continents. The Philippines in particular holds a special place in this dynamic world. Our nation has not only embraced the spirit of Mobile Legends, but has also risen to prominence with our Mobile Legends Professional League birthing world-class teams and showcasing our potential on an international stage. Again, we extend our heartfelt gratitude to Moonton Games, a titan in the global gaming arena, for their pivotal role in bringing the M5 World Championships to life here in the Philippines and for providing us with the opportunity to host this esteemed and much-anticipated tournament on our shores. This collaboration is a testament to the boundless potential of esports. To Malaysia, the next host of the M-Series, we are confident that this journey of gaming excellence will continue to flourish and inspire. Our commitment to the vision of President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. is reflected in the support extended by various government agencies, including the Department of Foreign Affairs, our Bureau of Immigration, and the Bureau of Customs, their cooperation in facilitating visa processing and equipment entry has been truly invaluable. Our Office of Film and Sports Tourism, on the other hand, has also crafted tour packages, not only to immerse you in the M5 World Championships, but also for you to explore and experience the Philippines. To the two elite teams battling it out tonight, the atmosphere is absolutely electric and the anticipation palpable as we all eagerly await your battle for ultimate glory. 
So we wish you magnificent performance, high sportsmanship, and truly a time full of joy and excitement. To Moonton Games and to all of us who join in this journey, maraming maraming salamat po. Congratulations. Love Mobile Legends Bang Bang. Love Moonton Games. Love the Philippines. Mabuhay. Now, to commemorate this event, let us commence with a handover ceremony. The first ever Mobile Legends Bang Bang M Series World Championship title was hosted in Malaysia. Now the country known as the melting pot of cultures will host another World Championship. Good evening, um, Madam Attorney, Sharon Gale, CEO, Pamintuanan, and the Secretary, Department of Tourism Philippines, esteemed guests, passionate esports enthusiasts, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, a heartfelt thank you to Moonton Games for the invitation to join this Mobile Legends Bang Bang M5 World Championship right here in the captivating city of Manila. My first visit has been nothing short of amazing and I'm eager to discover more of this beautiful city. I extend my appreciation to the Department of Tourism Philippines Under Secretary Shrin Gale Siu Pamindran for the warm welcome and the prospect of future collaborations between our two nations. It is truly an honor to see top tier teams from around the world competing at the highest level, showcasing not only their exceptional skills, but also the unifying power of esports. This experience is made even more incredible for me as I personally witnessed the gathering of thousands, if not millions, of MLBB enthusiasts from around the world, both here and online, showing unwavering support from their favorite teams. Distinguished guests, this moment represents the culmination of Ministry of Youth and Sports' continuous collaboration with Moonton Games, which began from MPL Malaysia Season 7 through the last year's season 12, including the send of various Malaysian teams for MSC and M Series and other diverse collaborations. I too am thrilled to see representatives from Malaysia, homeboys, and Team SMG competing and progressing through M5 stage. While it's unfortunate that we won't see our Malaysian representatives compete in this grand final, their unwavering spirit is greatly admired by all. I truly hope that homeboys and team MSG leverage this experience as fuel, striving for improvement and returning even stronger next year. Pantang kita mengalah sampai habis, we don't quit until it's over. I would also like to extend my congratulations to the final two teams competing in today's grand finals, Epi Brand and Team Onik. We all look forward to witnessing the best gameplay and sportsmanship that MLBB community has to offer. Ladies and gentlemen, as we gather here to celebrate the M5 Grand Finals, I am thrilled to announce that Malaysia will be the proud host of the M6 Mobile Engines Bang Bang World Championship in 2024. This marks the second time Malaysia will be the host of the championship following the successful hosting of M1 in 2019. This achievement isn't just for a single person, but for all Malaysians. We made it. M6 will be a momentous occasion for our nation and we are eager to welcome players, fans and esports enthusiasts from across the globe to experience the unmatched hospitality and passion that Malaysia has to offer. The collective efforts of all Malaysians will craft an unforgettable experience embodying the spirit of Malaysia truly Asia. Thank you and may the battles be intense, the victories be sweet and the friendships be everlasting. See you in Malaysia for M6. Jumpa di Malaysia. Thank you very much, Sir Adam Adli. We look forward to your warmest welcome for M6 
in Malaysia next year. Also, thank you very much and congratulations on a successful hosting of M5, Department of Tourism under Secretary Attorney Shireen Gale. For now, the quest to becoming better than great continues. So we're going to go back to the casters from all around the globe. Casters, paso! I, 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 I can I change my predictions? I need AP Brand to win. I need a host nation to win. This is this is not cool, man. No one told us about this. According to history, a host country has yet to win the world championship on home soil. So with Malaysia hosting M6 already, Gideon. I. Look, 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 I made predictions in the past. Usually I'm pretty accurate about them. Sometimes and most of the time not, but but I wasn't expecting it to be in Malaysia, right? Nobody informed us about this. It's a surprise even for us here in Malaysia as well. So I can only hope that the Hive takes it away <laughs> for the sake of Malaysia's chances a year from now. Kid Bamba, you want to go to Malaysia? Oh, I'd be happy to, to be honest. Malaysia is a pretty nice country, I heard. The World Championship is happening there and maybe you know, I'm, I'm hoping and I'm expecting for you to play your best in 2024 so we can see each other again. How about it? Uh, I'm pretty sure that will happen, actually. I don't think anybody's stopping me in my region. Oh, ho, ho. y'all heard it. Bomb fanatics all around the world. Book your flights to Malaysia. Now let's reel it back to the matchup at hand. Again, storylines that trump all prior. AP Bren and Onik on their own road to greatness, cementing their stories in history, etching it into the sacred timeline, making this tonight for all of you watching online and joining us in the Coliseum, a canon event for all of us. Talking about Onik, it's the golden road. No other team in the history of MLBB Sports has ever done what they have done. Everything Onik touched in 2023 turned into gold. They won everything. Mm -hmm. And that's not all. AP Brand, after their success in M2, have been looking to make it to that World Tournament once again to be one of the few teams, or at least for some of the players, a two-time world champion. Now, I've got to ask you, Kid Bamba, what would you prefer? To have an entire year dedicated to your team or to be maybe some of the most memorable moments here at the World Championship. Some say people only remember the last tournament. Uh, so you're asking me if I want to be the most successful team in history or the most successful team in history? <laughs> <laughs> yes, basically. <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, for me, I think winning the M-Series twice shows a little bit more consistency because what can happen is you can win M2 and then win M5 and it's so, so much time and being consistent over two years is being better is better than being consistent over one year. But you can't discredit the Golden Road, man. It's also a crazy achievement. So for me, if I had to choose, probably winning M-Series twice. But Golden Road is also crazy. Mm -hmm. That's right. Onik from Indonesia is just four games away in this best of seven from completing the Golden Road. They have won back-to-back -back MPL Indonesia titles, the MSC title coming in from Phnom Penh, Cambodia, and now have flown out all the way here in the Philippines to take down the M5 World Championships. On the other hand, M2 was taken by the formerly known as AP, uh, Brenny Sports, now AP Bren, from Singapore in lovely Suntech City. And now with Flap TZ, Few, and Coach Ducky still in the team, they're going for that two time, two time M Series win. Were you watching uh, M2, Kid Bamba? Uh, actually, not that much. I watched the Grand Finals. It was a pretty interesting ride, best of seven. Uh, only M1 and M2 have been a best of seven, so. I'm hoping for a best of seven again, to be honest, but I don't know if it's going to happen. I can't help but want a best of seven as well. And I mean, for some of these players, winning the first time must have felt like electric, right? I mean, imagine winning. I, I can only put myself in your shoes, winning the EECA title, but how many times can you win before it gets a little stale? Uh, never. I think winning is so good. Like the feeling of just, I guess success is just a nice feeling, you know? And now, again, coming in from Germany, which has little to no tournaments, you're standing on the world stage. More power, Kid Bomba, more power. Audic and AP Brand, they're gonna need it all as they go into this best of seven. And now, the moment of truth. We have to do what we gotta do before the match begins. Let's get into some predictions. What do you think? Um, this might be controversial, man, but I think it's gonna be a 4-0 for Brand. 
Whoa! Controversial. I don't know, with that crowd and how hard they're cheering, nobody's gonna doubt you. But I gotta stick to my gut here. As much as I would like the host country to have a chance, facts don't change. Onyx has done it one time. I'm pretty sure they're gonna do it again, but it won't be easy. I'm thinking 4-3 in favor of Onyx. All right. Uh, both very possible. I gotta ground the expectations here. Again, a 3-0 sweeping loss has to have woken something up from AP Bren. They've gone all around the world in 2023, and now on home soil, I think yesterday's events won't keep them down. I won't say a 4-0 sweep. I mean, Kid Bamba sees something else. He's been in those boots. He's played against the best of the best. But I think I'm gonna stick to my guns. Uninformed opinion. Might be a 4-2 AP Bren. I respect that. I respect that a lot. That's, oof. Ooh, it's gonna be an interesting one. I, it's tough to say which team is going to come up on top, especially if we're talking about things outside of the game. How hungry are they for the win? Or maybe even a possible reverse sweep. It's tough to call. Kid Bamba, it's been a pleasure. It's been awesome to have you here. Any final messages for the fans all around the world, the Bomba Natics, to these two teams about to go into grand combat here tonight? Um, thank you for all the support I've been getting from the Philippines. It's been amazing, like I already said. Uh, you can hear the crowd, I mean, it's crazy. And I want AP Ren, I think AP Ren is gonna win 4-0, but I hope it's gonna be a best of seven, to be honest. I wanna see something exciting, something that's gonna get my blood pumping, you know? Since I'm not playing, I need something exciting. <laughs> You're gonna get it, real quick. Can we all do the thing together? Hey! <laughs> all right, also hoping for a bit of showmanship from both these teams, right? The best of the best. Right, um, I think, I mean, I, Onyx is just so great. Brand is so great. I, as I already said, I think 4-0, but it's unlikely if I'm realistic. So I'm just hoping to see the best from both teams and maybe some crazy picks. Maybe our dad's going to get paid. <laughs> maybe Again. Bobby Smith, maybe Kibo is going to come out with a T-Grill, four-man stun again, three-man stun. It's going to be crazy, man. I'm looking forward to it. Gideon, are you ready? I'm ready for it, man. I've been waiting all year for this. All right, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to set up and get ready. Strap in, and if you're here with us in Rizal Memorial Coliseum, get ready to go ahead and make some noise. We're throwing it over to Mikey and Amara. It's time for the Grand Finals. It's AP Brem versus Zonic for the Grand Finals. Brem 5 is better than great. Sixteen of the world's strongest teams have gathered in the heart of the Philippines to vie for the coveted World Championship title. They have joined the fight, climbed to the top, and dared to be great. Ladies and gentlemen, we're left with two great teams. Two great teams, but only one will be better than great. Witness the shaping of a legacy that will leave an indelible mark on the pages of MLBB history. This is the grand finals of the, the M5, M5 World, World Championship.
Championship!
It's been with us for five years. To those who don't understand or don't care, this means nothing to them. They might even say, what's wrong with these people? I guess people tend to have negative perceptions about things that they just don't understand. Yes, it's a game. It's a game. It's just a game. It's a game. It's a game. It's a game. Yes, it's just a game. But it's definitely more than just a game. To those who get it, or should I say love it, it's a whole different story. They choose to devote their entire youth to make a mark in this brief period as eSport players. If it's just a game, then why does it hurt so much to lose? Untuk rakyat-rakyat Malaysia yang mengharapkan lebih, kita orang minta maaf sangat-sangat sebab kita orang berhenti kat sini je. Why do we let emotions get the better of us? Why does every hard-fought victory win the world to us? Because it's, it's not just a game. It's a commitment to give everything you've got. the supporters who are there with you along the way. For the collective efforts of the entire community to elevate the sport to, of course, greater heights. Beyond the rivalries, it's the friendship 
It's not among just the players, but with everyone else who's involved. Yes, we may have started as just a game, but we are progressing <laughs> one step at a time. From the humble beginnings of M1, and now we're here at M5. Everyone who loves and understands this world is supporting and fighting together to achieve something great. And we're not stopping, we'll keep moving, we'll be better than great. What? Yeah! 
Championship Grand Final begin! From the start, everyone had already set their hearts on these two teams as the finalists. To spice things up, they first met in the upper bracket and on it completely tore AP Brand apart. Somehow, they managed to climb their way back to the Grand Finals. Um, our loss in Onik is like, before even the match, we feel like we're just gonna win. But when they come back after Game 1, they get like tense. That causes Game 2 and Game 3 to be more one-sided for them. We really wanted to play against Onik again. We really want the bench that boosts our confidence in playing against Blacklist. I feel like I'm going to lose now. Pwede lang makapaglaro ako ngayon dito. Tuturugin ko lahat ng mga katapat ko. And now they meet again? In the Grand Final? This is the rematch we've been waiting for. Okay, regardless of who wins tonight, it's a great conclusion to M5. Onik is blazing on what many deem a golden road. The champion! Your kings of the galaxy! Onik! Amongst the Sky Kings, the golden boy Kyrie is arguably the best jungler out there. The stellar lineup also has Boots, the Tank, CW, the Silent Carry, and K-Boy, the Playmaker, and Sans, the Maniac. Gua dulu belum ada kepercayaan diri dan mental yang kuat dan sekarang gua nggak peduli siapa ya, siapa lawan gua karena gua yang terkuat. Looking at AP Brand, we have Fury Flap Dizzy, the M2 champions. Since then, they haven't seen much in terms of results. It wasn't until recently that a promising lineup emerged with rising stars like Super Marco, Kyle TZ, and Oakwood. The pressure now falls on Feud to lead the team. After Manalo ng M2, feeling namin kami na yung pinakamalakas sa buong mundo eh. Pero nung bago lahat ng yun, nung nalaglag kami sa playoffs nung MPL Season 8 tsaka Season 9, lalo na di kami nakapag-qualify ng M3 tsaka M4. Ngayon, nandito na kami sa M5. Gagamitin ko yung tiwala ng mga teammates ko sa akin para ilig sila sa tabi pa. You're not fighting this alone. Let's win this together. If AP Brand takes the series, it's a double win. The first team to secure a second M Series title and the first to win on home ground. Kami ang unang Filipino team na nanalo ng M Series at kami rin ang unang Filipino team na mananalo ng M Series ng dalawang best. For Onik, this moment is equally defining. Indonesia will finally take back their throne and claim the title as the best in the sport. Lu bisa coba untuk menang, tapi kita pastikan Indonesia yang akan bawa pulang Piala M5 ini. A grand opening that's fitting for a grand finale. Honestly, it brings chills to my spine and tears to my eyes, man. That was emotional. Welcome. This is the MLBB M5 World Championship. With me, LaFell, as well as Mirko and Wolf, how are you guys feeling? Great, better than great. It's the grand finals. There can only be one word to describe it. It's hype, Wolf, yeah. LaFell, and I cannot wait to get into the games. Yeah, emotional. That's what I'm feeling right now after seeing all of those videos that we've come together. I mean, imagine spending the year for this specific moment. It's, it's a very emotional for me, man. Gentlemen, I need your help because you guys need to tell the world because all of this, the M5 World Championship is powered by who? Mouton! And is presented by... Kadia! And is supported by... ROG, the official gaming phone. And here's the thing, when you want food, when you want to travel, I like to grab. What is the grab? That's the official Super App partner. And we're on get amazing gaming chairs. What is it, Wolf? It's Secret Lab, our official chair partner. Thank you to all of our sponsors. M5 wouldn't be possible without your support because look at the crowd, look at the support. 
And a special shout out as well to our global presenting partner, Kadia. Kadia is a giga project, a city that's being built in Saudi Arabia. It is the future capital of entertainment, sports, and culture. With all that hype though, sit back, relax, because we're gonna get into the best of seven with Secret Lab powering us behind us here. Don't just stop at the best hero builds and combos. Get ahead of the competition and reach Mythic or Mythic Glory or Mythic Immortal with Secret Lab, the Titan Evo gaming chair, outfitted with the pro-grade ergonomic features engineered for maximum performance. Shop match-winning comfort and keep yourself at the top of the game. Oh, now, now I'm hearing the crowd. I wanna see where the loyalty rise, Riza Memorial Coliseum, let me hear, are you with Onyx? Now let me hear, are you with A.P. Brad? The crowd has spoken. And while they're speaking, the M5 is still ongoing, unlock. Yuzong's M5 exclusive Dragon Shade skin and Prime Cosmic Dragon skin. When you buy the M5 pass, accomplish all activity tasks to reach level 75 for free. A ton of M5 exclusive rewards are also waiting for you. Get yours or, a, or a give it to a friend right now. And I gotta say, Wolf. Okay. I love being in Manila right now. The energy is beyond electrifying. It's crazy because uh, I think that. Even the teams that aren't Filipinos, even the players that aren't Filipinos, are being cheered upon. And that is what I love about esports. We just want to cheer for the best. And then right now, we're the world's best teams in the world of MOBB for a best of seven grand finals to define who is going to be the world champs now. All oh, I full. can say is I love my job, Mirko. I love it oh, more. Man. I love it better. It's a full best of seven, and we get to cast it here. I really hope it goes full best of seven. All seven games, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even though Onik were able to take AP Bren down in the upper brackets, it'll be different here. They've made the right adaptations yesterday against Blacklist International. And now I'm expecting the same thing. You guys can make adaptations as well back at home. How do you do it? Watch on TikTok for TikTok drops. Watch for three minutes and you guys can win one TikTok viewer chest. And if you watch for five minutes like LaFell, what do you get, LaFell? Here's the thing, for five minutes you can get a TikTok deluxe chest. Damn! But if you watch the entire grand finals, you will be witnessing your new world champion. And I gotta say, there's nothing more than I want to see where how this can shape 2024. Imagine seeing the best mechanically skilled players and the best coaching staff in the grand final. Yep, we're looking at the talent prediction here. You guys know, even the production's like, nah, don't let LaFell cook, but Merkel, you're cooking. You're going for AP brand. Are you gonna apologize soon? Well, you're no. in the Philippines, by the way. I'm in the Philippines. <laughs> I am, but. <laughs> I gotta do it, man. Yeah. I gotta do it. 4-0. Of course, of course. Yeah, here's the thing, right? It's not yes. just for the team that'll win, but it's also a curse to the score. Got I don't it. want it to be a 4-0. I want it to be a 4-3. I think whoever wins this, as long as we get a good series, respect given over, hype, everything, we're gonna see the best. We're gonna see something better than great. I gotta ask, Wolf, it's been years we've been seeing Filipino, Filipino grand finals, but this time mm -hmm. is the Philippines going up against Indonesia. How are you feeling? I'm very, very happy about it. I've, I think that after seeing the Page vs. Page finals two times, I've always said like, okay, we have to have a Indonesia versus Philippines or a Philippines versus someone else kind of a, a grand final, and we are given it. Oh yeah, and now you can hear the crowd roar when we see we're going into the draft of this first game in the best of seven between AB Brand going up against Onik, where again, they faced each other before AB Brand. Will they ban out the Nolan? A big problem was that Nolan, and it seems like AB Brand this time, they've swapped those sides. They want right. to pick it up for themselves. They want to bait Onik to letting it go towards yeah. them. And for some reason, the Kaja still is there. That's the ban for AB Brand. Now with the Joy, they will ban out the one one which obviously is one of the heroes that you don't want to give to Arnik, knowing how CW is good, good with it. Oh yeah, right now, looking at the bands here, AB Brand betting out of Kaja as well as the Joy. Mm -hmm. Arnik now with the Faramis as well as the Guinevere. We've seen how Arnik, they have the capability of taking a team fight and making sure that just one is needed yep. for them to close out the game. 
But I gotta talk about mental here, Wolf, because mm -hmm. again, AP Brand, after losing, they couldn't reset, they couldn't get back into the game. Yeah. But today, should they be fired up going up against Onik, or should they calm themselves down? They really have to be calm right now. That's what they need to do, because you have a seven game series ahead of you. You, wanna, you don't want to exhaust your energy just trying to be, you know, be good at the game or uh, trying to fix your mental. You have to really resolve all of your energy so that sure. you will win the seven game series. I By the way, I think Fredrin is going to be the first pick. Yep. That's uh, what I heard, what we can see from the from the crowd. Quickly answered by a Valentina, even when there's a Fredrin, and of course, um, I believe that was uh, Bruno. Yep. And also the Nolan band, right? Instantly respect here from Onik. They know oh, how hard it is to go up against the Nolan. They know how hard it is to play against it. They played it yesterday against AP Brand. And it's a Dyra? What? Dyra, there. It's, it's a, a Dyra pick. Exactly. Very early on. For the folks watching at home, don't worry. The pick and bans is still ongoing and we're yep. witnessing here. Looking like, yep, the Dyra is getting picked up. This Looks like they want to answer the Fredrin very early on. Yep. Arlet is uh, is open. Always on the way. There is a Matilda, obviously, that's uh, uh, that we can see right now. Uh, very early Brody here coming out from uh, AP Brand. Yep, looking like they want a lot of damage coming in from the goalie here, and we can hear the crowd cheering for the Matilda pick. Yep. It's a comfort pick, right? Not just the Matilda, but also the Brody for Super Marco. If they want to really just get into the game, snowball yeah. it out of control, they need to play for Super Marco. Yep. I think, for me personally, it has to be when, I t when I'm talking about the highlight players of AP Brand, it's their roamer for sure. and their gold laner. So if Super Marco gets facilitated with a great hero that can bully and look for that snowball early with a roamer that's so, so uh, mobile, they can get oh. these lanes all ahead with a Fredrin in the mid lane to just hold Onik back. It yeah. seems like they're doing exactly what they did to Blacklist yep. yesterday. A Tigreal, obviously one of the heroes that is going to be rising in popularity, at least in M5. And a Paquito immediately going to be the band for AP Brand, who is uh, blue side, right? uh, red side, I mean. Oh, yeah, they're blue side. Yeah, woof. So that was Onik Man and Paquito. I got to talk about the timings here, because looking at AP Brand, when they do have the Brody, the second turtle, the Brody will rotate to that turtle Correct. and join the team fight very early on, yes. getting that two item power spike by that point. Yeah. What is the timing for AP Brand here? Uh, what, what kind of pressure do they want to put on Onik? You nailed it right in the head. It's uh, the second turtle. And one thing that you'll notice about like Matilda Brody is that the Brody is much faster when it comes to farming because of that guiding wind. You're going to see like a cross map play, like maximum range guiding winds that they min max. And uh, uh, for sure that will be the timing. Second turtle going uh, and they're going to be just uh, completely ravaging through inside of uh, Onik. That's why Onik went for the Tigreal because they want to look for a stopper for this uh, kind of uh, aggression coming out from uh, AP Brand. To the folks at home, we got our draft back here. AP Brand picked up. The uh, Fredre Matilda as well as the Brody while Onik picked up the Valentina. Mm -hmm. This Dyroff, we can't say it's for Boots or Kyrie. Exactly. exactly. And as well as the Tigreal here, because we've seen Onik play it both ways. Yep. At this point, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's why you, you first pick it, and then eventually they'll get their marksman in the fourth pick. Lilia being banned here by Onik. They might consider getting the Claude or a Fredrin in, oh, or sorry, a Carry, in fact. Because carry is great against the Fredrin, and in a way, it can man up against the Brody, or at least the uh, hand-to-hand -hand combat against that, uh, that Brody. And we know for sure that uh, CW is a player that can actually play that hero. That's something that maybe Onik are looking to attack from the angle. that They can actually secure, well, maybe not a gold laner here, save the gold laner for last. Yep. I do want to bring up the point that for Onik, I think even in yesterday's series, right, we, own, we didn't get to see Onik on the red side at all. AP Brand decided to take it away from Onik all three games. Mm -hmm. And the fun fact is, I feel like AP Brand did that intentionally. They know yep. that Onik have sublime win rates, phenomenal win rates on the red side. Yep's favorite to side to, to try deal. to outdraft their opponents. Yep. With the Bruno Man here, they've already secured the Brody. They want to really facilitate Super Marco, yep. but Onik's doing the same thing, but to few. They have first pick and second phase. They can deny even more heroes yep. from AP Brand. Right now for Onik, they banned out the Paquito. Mm -hmm. This looks like they don't want cross map plays. They exactly. don't want any flanks coming in. Yep. What kind of marksman are they thinking to pick up? Now, that's why I, f I felt carry should be the pick for them, as well as uh, something like a Clint. Now, we know that uh, CW have played before, maybe yeah, not in M5. My buddy. That's my so that's... Uh, should be Claude. Should be Claude, yeah. yeah. Should I be believe Claude. it is a Claude pick All right. coming in for Onik. And 
Okay. Uh, so right, squad. Cool. I got a big question here, mm -hmm. right? They pick up the Claude, so they're trying to just secure that and then hide that flex yeah, dive exactly. all the way to the end. Exactly. Is there a possibility we get an assassin here for yes, Kyrie? Yes, there's a high possibility. Especially if you don't go for another sustained hero here coming out from, uh, Arnett, come from AP Bread. I'm thinking like Angela Arlet for them. Arlet is a, has a great combo with the Frederick because of the um, amount of CC that you can get so that you'll always refresh your dashes for the Arlet. And it's also a flat TZ special. And then you supplement that with something like an Angela so that your Brody will be stronger. But they can also go for burst heroes. Maybe Kadira, in fact, for a few. In, in this particular matchup, because you want to go for burst now. You don't want to go sustain battle against uh, um, Onyx. My question is, is it not too risky? Because there's a Frederick as well as a Brody. Picking up many assassins, but I know Kyrie is the, oh, the master assassin. For the sure. best assassin player in the world, but yeah. is it even possible with this kind of draft from uh, coming from EP Brand? Uh, against Minotaur, probably. Oh, a Thames. That is a Thames. Oh. Wow. Looks like AP Brand finished up the draft with a Novari as well as Thomas. That's right. That I think Thomas. you want to you wanna park your Dyroth in the XP lane and maybe get something like, like a Baksha, for example. Is it, uh, is it actually still available? Yeah, Baksha is still available. And it's actually pretty good for Onik. You can go back to that or maybe a Martis, in fact. Full aggression in the early game could definitely work. More mobility as well. But if you're on best of both worlds, the Assassins will be a solid choice to go for. Dyroth Flex into the jungle is what they decide to go for. The Tarizla in the XP lane for Mr. Boots. Let me just say, looking at draft coming in from Onyx, very strong when it comes to the team fight. But here's the thing, they can play a 4v5 that Claude can go to the side lanes. So that will be all about damage for Onyx. But late game damage. I would say though, there is a massive combo between like uh, all the physical damage leaders here coming out from uh, Onik. They have sustain from the Turizla, so that that will be the guy to be in the front lines, and then the Targaryen to follow it up. Then you have the combo, Dyroth plus the Claude, right? For the pen uh, additional penetration, that will be your damage source for the side of Onik. Now going into this game, a reminder: this is going to be the start of the best of seven. Both teams. This is going to be a test of their stamina, of their mental. How are they going to survive this onslaught? And moreover, AP Brand, can they overcome what happened yesterday? We'll witness, can they do it in the Land of Dawn? Let's see if they can, man. The Dyroth into the Thamas lane. Thamas perhaps with vengeance, and then it gets real hard to go and all in. What the Dyroth loves to do, and what both teams loves to do, is that early game pressure. We're fighting head on, guns blazing into the early game. Lavel Wolf. Sounds like we're in it already. Yep. We're pr we are in the game, but for now, we are going to make sure all things are... Let's try to cast the game while listening to it. I can listen to, for, for them trying to take the purple they're, buff right they're now. They're going to get the purple, purple buff. buff. Yep. Yep. That's the purple. And the Novaria is helping out. Yep. Helped out. Helped out. He's now in the mid lane trying to clear the wave. Exactly, yep. exactly. And I kind of feel like both EXP laners are... Freezing-ish the lane, they're looking at each other and yes. just trying to poke each other out. In fact, they freeze it so much, I think there's a pause. Oh, yeah. There might be it. There might, there might be the case right now, yeah. right? We're just holding yeah. up again. We got some Filipino fans in the building, as expected. It's, it's all about that support right now yep. in Rizal Memorial Coliseum. But for the folks watching back at home and also the people watching in the venue, please do be patient with us as we deal with yeah. some issues. Yeah, but it's okay. While the pause is happening right here, we do have to talk about how both teams want to approach this fight. Because again, looking at Onik, the thing that I'm looking at is because when they ban out the Paquito, they have a better chance in case if anything goes wrong, CW can go to the side lane. And I kind of feel like with CW, specifically CW on the quad, it's not impossible for him to win a 1v2 situation. Not at all. I think he's one of the best weak side gold laners in the world right now, but he is facing off against Super Marco, who this time has his comfort hero. In all the times that I feel like uh, AP Brent has won an international tournament when they were representing the Philippines for ISF and C Games, it was on Super Marco getting a, a bully pick in the gold yeah. lane, and then they snowball from that Brody to rotate him across the map. Exactly what we saw again. From AP Brand against Blacklist yesterday, yeah. they were able to utilize Super Marco to rotate to neutral objectives. It's a strange angle yeah. to attack from, but it is an angle that is optimal yeah. for AP Brand. And even that's even more uh, applicable for this particular game, just because of the Matilda, right? I guess I think that we've seen this so many times. You park the Matilda in the middle of the mi of the lanes, mid to bottom, for example, or bottom or top to mid, that you utilize the guiding wind, maximum reach. 
range and the, because of the wilderness blessing and available for the Matilda, you really cover up so much ground and the guiding wind, uh, it looks like a massive teleport spell afterwards. So. Um, you're definitely going to see that kind of uh, that kind of play style coming up from uh, AP Brand. Right now, looking at the draft index, looks like in terms of the late game potential, both teams are quite equal. But when it comes to early to mid game potential, it is Pharaonic. So having this dire off in the jungle, it is going to be pretty strong going up against the Fedrin. However, looking at the combination here, Wolf, the Fedrin, the Matilda, the Novaria, as well as the Thomas, if the Thomas joins during the turtle fight, I'm not entirely confident that. Onik can really secure things, even though they have the early to mid game potential. I guess because of the fact that they are Onik, you know, maybe they can secure it. But <laughs> <laughs> no, technically speaking, there's a there's a definite like approach here for the side of Onik. The way that they will set up their box, it will be the turtles the first, like tanking all of the damage. Badoop Smith gonna be there, so um, the levels as well as EXP is important for boots. Then you have the Tigreal coming up from Keyboy for the su surprise place. You would not see. Kairi as well as uh, uh, Sans leading the charge because of the two big boys from Onik that might be their setup for the box. And with that box, that's the big, I feel, issue for both these teams, right? They want to try to set it up, but the other try wants to try to make it as chaotic as possible. They want to try to attack from different angles, and I think with AP Brent's comp, that might be what they're looking for here. Yes. Attacking from different angles, using that Mathilda to create havoc in these team fights, yeah. and Thama should be doing the same thing, right? If he got the Vengeance here, it'll be really, really hard yeah. for the Claude or anyone to even deal with it. Yeah. Let me misuse my power at the moment. Misuse? Yes, because right now, while the players are on stage, I want the players to hear the crowd cheer. If you're with Onik, chant Onik. If you're with AP Brand, chant AP Brand. And Mirko, I know you're with Onik. So let me hear all the Sonics. Onik! Oh, we're in the game! We're in! Let me hear AP Brand! And with that, let's jump into the game. Into the game. <laughs> We're in, all right. Onik versus AP Bren in the early stage. Really, one minute has elapsed. And what does it look like so far? Like maybe we can take it slow with the emblems first here, Wolf. Yeah. We haven't uh, seen them actually right now. Um, yep. We're going to be looking at, towards that later on. I would. I'm actually surprised that Brave Smite is uh, Kyle Teasy's choice because I think in the Philippines, where we kind of have a region that likes the uh, quantum charge actually on that particular hero. And Zap Teasy going in for Impure Rage. Now, one thing that we do know about the Brody is it's a uh, great laner. Like 1v1 almost wins almost all of the mat uh, matchups. And right now, looking at Kyrie, Orly setting up for the Eternal Keyboy, absorbing quite a lot of damage coming in from Few as well as Ogwen. Not going to be having priority going into the Turtle fight. Kyrie's holding it, resets it. Sounds and Boots rotating over. Both teams looking to go and contest for the first turtle of the game. Flap Teasy already regaining that prio in the bottom side of the map. But both teams are still hovering over. Yep, right now, again, if you brand, they do have the Astral Echo to find the opposing side. But Boots goes in. Three man penalty zone off the sounds. It's damage coming down. And that's going to be Keyboy who shoves the back. Kyrie winning the Red Street battle with the implosion coming down as well. Now it's going to be Vue. Very low first blood picked up by Sounds, but a good appraiser is back. Turns it around. Now Boots all alone. It's a two for one trade. Make a two for two for the turtle, but if Boots gets taken down here, Onik will lose out in the first fight of the game. Flap Teasy. Congratulations, Onik got the turtle, but they have to pay with three members. It's not even worth it, Wolf. Not at all. At the first turtle fight, you don't want to get that turtle in exchange for three heroes. That's the AP Brand. But a wonderful placement coming out from Flap TZ, just keeping his taps up to Kari. Kari was way, 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 way slow because of the control coming out from Flap. He still was able to get the turtle, which is amazing, but the succeeding fight, because they were poked down so much, they didn't have any staying power anymore. This is why I was wondering, is it good for Onik to fight around the turtle? Because the poke coming in from AP Brand, as well as the heavy damage that they can put out, Kyle TZ wants Keyboy. The CC, right? It's phenomenal. Kyrie jumping in, Sans is there as well with the help of CW. That's a three-man circling eagle knockup. CW forced to use the defensive battle mirror image back to his own turret. Turn of our memory also used up there. A good shot off the CW under his tier one. Ogus looking for a dive angle. Jumps in with the guiding wind. Super Marco looking for a stun. Battle mirror image out. Super Marco gets one hit on the turret gold and backs away. 
be great for CW for sure, as he's able to stand his ground. But overall, this is really good for AP Brand because now they are overtaking the jungle. Kauti's in Ogwin. And the coverage that they have because of the guiding win and the sustain that they have with you from long distance. Woo! Even an appraiser's wrath just to keep Keyboy at bay. They know how big the playmaking is. Mm -hmm. Boom. Dude, yeah. the impact is so huge. The entire map lights up. And speaking of the entire map, it looks like what AP Brand is trying to do is try to cover 51% of the map. They're making sure Onyx stays honest. Onyx stays in their <laughs> path. I love the crowd, man. I really do. They're cheering for the screen going back to normal Onyx. Some good damage on Ogwen. Astral Echo connecting onto all four. Flapteezy holding onto the turtle. That's a good Astral Spear onto the back. Boots gonna be zoned away for now. Kalteezy jumping in, getting a taunt, knocking Boots up. Flapteezy doing the same thing. Now with Infernum in a circling Eagle. Boots with a flicker backwards. That might just be a kill. DPZ to fall oh! back. Dude! Dude! Gets a snipe from downtown. That is Keyboy who's forced back. And now the entire Onyx have to pull back. Massive folks coming out from AP Brand at the positioning. Oakwin was so instrumental in that as well as Flap Teasy. This surprise pick with this Matilda and this Thames can make it difficult for Onyx to get and uh, get some territories, get some ground, and view being on point with the spear. The way that I see it, AP Brand wants to tell the Sky Kings stay down, stay grounded. We're not going to allow you to fly. But looking at the pacing here, I gotta ask you, whoa, is this enough? Because Onyx, it looks like they're fine moving in this pace. Oh, definitely. This is what they need to be doing. And the thing is, they're not really like stumbling or they're not giving anything uh, for Onyx Esports again to kind of move on. And I think this is uh, the way that they're handling the left side of the map with the Brody to top lane. It gives them so much ground to work with and so much control at the early stages of the game. And with a 3,000 gold lead, they're really dictating the pace. They're already rotating up top. They know where the Battle Mirror Image is going to be placed down. GW, no turret there, but he backs off to the Battle Mirror Image. And now Onyx are looking for a counter attack. But it is going to be fumbled instantly. AP Brent spot them, and they know exactly what they were planning. Right now, I got to ask, well, what is Onyx able to lose out? In terms of trading, they're losing turrets. Mm -hmm. How many turrets can they afford Ooh. to lose? Well, they do have good late game. I think they're going to be happy just keeping all of their outer turrets before the first Lord. I guess that's already a good sign for Onyx. Because right now, I mean, if the first Lord goes in favor of AP Brand and they don't have their turrets anymore, that's going to be a very bad problem. But I think we, just to answer your question, that's the most that they can have. All right. Looking like Onyx, they got to keep that in mind. Onyx got to keep that in mind, man. If they want to make sure that they are still breathing into the game, they got to make sure when the Lord happens, the outer turrets are safe. Looking at the mid, very healthy. Looking at the EXP lane, looks like it's generally quite okay as well. Yeah. Now looking at the turtle, it's in favor of AP Bren with three members of Onyx getting spotted out. Boots walking up now. Flap Teasy doing some damage on a keyboard, poking him down with an Astral Spear, connecting onto the back line as well. Circling Eagle, knocking Kyrie up, zoning them away from the turtle. And Boots is forced to run away. Flap Teasy. Just wreaking havoc as Kalteezy picks up the turtle. Once again, three turtles to AP Brand. No contest for Monik. We got to talk about Flapteezy here. He's really pushing everyone from Onik away. How's he doing this? No, this is the strength of the Thames with the Impure Rage and the Threat of the Vengeance. Then there's always that Ogwin factor where no matter what happens, he's going to be saved. That's why the two of them just go together and there's nothing that Oni can do. The early game tempo from uh, the side of AP Brand was dictated by this Thams as well as this Matilda. Well, good news for Oni fans because EW is still deathless. Sans is able to protect himself with the all coming in from Matilda. So far, a pretty slow paced game. It looks like Oni again. This is the kind of pacing that they are forced to go into. But Kyrie, now again, the question to Wolf: Can Kyrie farm up enough that he can cause trouble for AP Brand? Oh, it's not just about himself. I mean, the answer is yes, Ooh. but Kyrie still secures yeah, it. Kyrie still secures it. The answer is yes, but he really needs to find his teammates. I think you know, 
when you look at the Dyrdoc, you would think that this is a singular hero or an individual kind of hero, but it's not. It's a combo-based hero. You need someone else with physical damage to combo with you so that you're able to just make full advantage of the passive as well as the kit that, that Dyrdoc has. So I guess for, for Kyrie, yeah, surely you can farm up, but you need to utilize your teammates as well. Exactly, right? It's not a solo hero here, especially I feel like the way that Kyrie's building towards, it's more of that utility build. Anti-Quirus first item, only a Fury Hammer mm. to help him deal some damage and a little bit of penetration. So this pick is really reliant on everyone else dealing damage. He's a utility jungler. Help me understand this, Wolf. Why is Keyboy positioning the way that he is positioning now? Oh, it makes me wonder. He doesn't have any teammates. I think he just wants to make sure that the purple buff will be uh, at least uh, watched. And there's really nothing that they can do right now, aside from farming. He's spending his time here so that he's going to be able to land a wonderful uh, implosion once they see the other members. Yeah, looks like they're setting Maybe up on the move. board here. Sans flickering out. Astral Echo thrown out as well by Sans in panic. And I feel like for Keyboy, is he trying to learn from his idol? The BBB, the big brain below, and now it's the BBK, big brain Keyboy, perhaps. Yeah, here's the thing, AB Brand, no one sees this. No one knows where Keyboy is, but even if he gets a five-man implosion, Will the damage be enough, Wolf? Maybe. They have the Dyron, so they can. The damage will be there. Oof. But AB Brand's Oof. damage as well is quite massive. Look at the poke coming in. Boots yep. is even already down to half. Even don't, the don't. Lizard did not spot out T-Boy. Yeah. Another Astro Sphere. Boots taken low. Penalty zone. That's a DPZ, but not a defensive penalty zone. That's a desperate penalty zone from Onik. A 4.8k gold lead, oh building my. up to 5k, and it has halted any shot of Onik to look for an angle to fight. It looks like T-Boy abort the plan. This is not going how we want it to go. T-Boy returns, and now Onik, they got to pre-plan what else are they going to do. Astro Echo finds two. Fish and mail. Onik forced back into their tier one, and Super Marco! Mr. Reketiano picks up that tier one in the mid lane. The turret eater. Oh, this is definitely going to be AP Brand's power spike. Anonic need to hold their ground. AP Brand's line up with this Matilda, with this Brody. They're very, very strong at this moment. And the thing is, because of the fact that Few had a great time in the early stages, he's going to be the one to supplement the damage in the latter portions of the game. So AP Brand, even their composition is like this, they're not technically just an early to mid kind of a lineup. They do have the late game uh, because of this Novaria. And Onik needs to respect that. They need to make something happen now. How's the clear though, right? I mean, Onik right now, they're trying to deal with just a super big wave. It's not and good. It's not, it's good. not good. We saw the main reason they were able to come back was that wave clear with the Lily. SCW gets poked by a torn apart memory. Zone back to his base. Something about Onik. I believe, and I kind of feel like all the Sonics believe, as long as the crystal is not destroyed, because it's not just in M5. They did it in M4 as well. When the odds are not in their favor, they will find a way. They will be able to do the impossible. Dude, was that against the Valley, dude? Maybe, talk about memory. Oh, Kyrie forced back. Battle Mirror Image defensively as well. Onik offended off the First Lord, but I would say it's quite value. AP Brent got half of the HP for the turret in the bottom lane. Yeah, that's right. The Twilight Armor picked up by Kyrie. This is uh, definitely a, a reaction to what AP Brent is giving them. Going up against the Novaria. And if I'm looking at the heroes, uh, the composition of Arctic, there's really no dive that can get too few. So I think that this is uh, another problem that they have to go through. Even then, the front to back composition of AP Brand is also a thing of beauty because you have Vlaptizi, all, all very, very farmed now, with the Imperial as well as the Vengeance, and then you have Kalkizi to man the front lines as well. You have the Guiding Wind to start. The front to back whoa, whoa. of AP Brand is just perfect. Ogwen is a roamer, let me remind you. Yeah. And he's doing that much damage to CW. I really am curious to see how far behind CW is compared to Super Marco, right? Because Marco's been eating turrets, but it seems like in terms of levels, even damage earlier, CW has got quite enough. So let me just ask, Wu, because you were talking about how Onik, based on their lineup, it's not going to be easy to catch Few. So if Few is not the target, who should be the target? Whew, so, you know, is it the front line? Is it Super Marco? I think um, Onik will have to settle for the front lines, yes. Because that is the idea of the Dyroth anyways. Of course you can dive, but... Good shot again, Astral Echo. Now revealing a few members. Kyrie going to be engaged on right now with the Surfing Eagle, the Tommy of Brazier's Wrath. They get some strike coming out, and it's on in time right now. It's actually an implosion out of the penalty zone. But it's still not enough. 
Super Marco is free hitting. That's a flicker and a torn upon memory. Good attraction by Sans. A good shot over. Sans dogging away. AP Brand looking for the end angle now. 7 to 1. 10,000 gold lead building. Two members down for the Sky Kings. Onyx lost two, and now everyone from AP Brand. They're marching forward. They're looking at the base. Flat easy goes in. The hive in the building erupts. In the way it's been cleared out, but the turret, the base has been taken away. AP Brent snatch a victory from under Onyx feet. This is the beginning of AP Brent telling Onyx no more. What happened yesterday was a fluke. If you give us an advantage, we're going to take the win. A beautiful execution coming out from AP Brent, the way that they drafted their early game composition with the Proli as well as the Matilda. With the Frederick, that's the first pick. Who would have thought that? We did not look at this hero, the entire M5, and now, during the Grand Finals, first picked by AP Brand. This is the level of world athletes. They made sure with 123 heroes in the game, never lose sight of the heroes that were once strong. They've used these heroes. They've mastered the heroes. They know how to execute it well. Even though it's not meta right now, they are the ones that create, that shape the meta. And with that being said, this has been an amazing game, but we need the assistant of both Leo as well as Gideon to tell us what happened in this game. What a way to open up the series here with AP Brand taking the very first game. I couldn't believe what was going on, and especially with what the what the heck happened in the draft. They've learned a lot from the last time they've met, Leo. It's a much better way to go ahead and take control of an early game advantage that they very much had in game one in yesterday's upper bracket final. And now it's clear, AP Bren has woken up. They have. They've opened up the draft, and more so, they've opened up some interesting picks here. And let me tell you, Leo, have you heard about this man? M2 World Champion. Season 6 and Season 12, MPL PH Champion. Oh my goodness, this man continues to roll harder and harder every single day. From level 1 to 4, he continues to dominate. He decided to pick Thamus this game. Have you heard his name? David, David Charles, Charles the Filipino, Filipino Cannon! I can't believe that Thumbs debuted here in the knockout stage two with a dominant victory like this. He built the Vengeance, you see that? Yes, and honestly, for most Thomas players, that's the way to go. You're looking to be able to withstand the damage and honestly, utilize your ult in the same manner to buy that extra bit of time. But you can see, for the side of AP Bren, it was clear that they wanted to play early game, and more importantly so, they had no real answer to the Slamas for at least, at least the first six minutes, unless they were sending their gold laner over, but I don't know, CW, he was not leaving that lane anytime soon. Quick flashback to what happened exactly in a game of one. First turtle was scored by Onik, but at the behest of the rest of the team, it turned into a bloody trade. It was unfortunate that when Flap came to his senses, when Flap said, it's go time, it was a cannon event. He just started to... now under-leveled, under-farmed in a matter of fact. Well, at the same time, you would imagine that CW would have a strong lane until AP Bren decide to attack it, right? From EXP, they move to gold. From gold, they start pushing into the jungle. Once they knew that Kyrie was not able to find just that little bit of steam, a little bit of gas to get the whole comp snowballing, that's when it all started crumbling down. Yep, in the first half of the draft, it looks like Onik had a solid plan. But I don't think they saw it coming when AP Brent closed up strong with the two final picks. Again, they were owning the map as soon as that initial trade happened. So for all of y'all chess fans out there, AP Brent played the open fort gambit. They let through a little at the start 
and then eventually went for the punish. Mm -hmm. And the best part, the foresight coming out of it, right? The information gathering from their mid lane really makes a difference in these sort of senses, right? You need to keep tabs on where exactly Kyrie is going to go. Because again, Kyrie is the only quote unquote early game that they actually wanted to get the momentum to push forward to break through AP Brent's entire composition. And if you found that snowball, this would be a very different game. But in the meantime, it's something to Something to consider, right? Going into the next game, it's adaptation coming in from Onik, but I think at the very least, we can say that AP Brand have learned from their mistakes. Yep, with that said, I think the game stats will actually tell a better story because of how this game happened so fast. Some of us might be wondering, what exactly did these teams make of the small lead that they had? And then eventually, when AP Bren was dominating and calling the shots, how did Onik try to close that gap? Because if I'm not mistaken, the gap was relatively small and it's suddenly huge mm -hmm. until it was just impossible for Onik to even leave their base. That's why all of these weird bush camping from Keyboy felt like they were just one time, big time. If this doesn't work, you got to pay the price. And let's not forget, it's not like Onik didn't have a chance here. They found some great moments against AP Brim, but unfortunately the numbers doesn't back it up. When you're already behind 8K worth of gold, you're gonna get stat checked. The items don't, aren't there. There's nothing they can do. That's right. And there was a moment wherein the Matilda was just putting CW in its place. We're gonna go into a quick break when we come back more of this Grand Finals. You're watching M5. Do you ever get scared of losing Kimmy? 
well, big bro. I think we should cherish the joy and excitement of each game. Not who won or lost. That's right. I'll strive for victory. But I won't lose myself in its pursuit. I'm back. First city built for play is coming to Saudi Arabia. Don't just live life, play life. Kadia.
Let's this run versus game now. Get the power on my shoulders. Tao ko sang pataro. Kung isa buhat ko lang, but you can keep me from my heart. I feel like the flow is lava. The energy's getting higher. You said you love me. Cause I don't just know you. I got you like the banana. And you know we hold the power. Cause we are better. Transcend myself into this game, yeah I've made the power to tell me the freak Come on, I'm not going to get my mind Let's turn off the game, shall we feel better than great It's how we feel I feel like the flow is lava The energy's getting higher The seven miles Cause I don't just want me I got you like the banana And you know you hold the power Cause we are Brandon, alam ko masalimot ngayon ang buhay mo. Kung kailan ka nabigyan ng break as a head coach sa pro scene ng Mobile Legends, doon ka pa nagkaroon ng malubang sakit. Iinday mo ng isang buwan. Itatago mo kasi akala mo na lang naman. Hanggang sa isang gabi, hindi ka na makatayo. Hindi ka na makalakad. Wala nang choice kundi dalhin ka sa ospital kasi grabe na yung sakit na iniinda mo. Magsisimula ang season na wala ka sa tabi ng team mo. Sobrang lungkot at depression ang dadanasin mo dahil sa sakit at kawalan ng pairamdam sa kalahati ng iyong katawan. Munti ka ka nang sumuko sa buhay. Buti na lang at may mga nurse, mga doktor, mga physical therapists, at mga kaibigan na nagpatibay ng loob mo. Huwag mo silang kalimutan pasalamatan. Akala mo okay na ang lahat, kasululo ba palalo ang sakit mo? Pupunta ka sa bingit ng kamatayan, halos hindi ka na makahinga. Doon, mapapadasal ka sa Diyos na huwag ka na munang kunin dahil hindi pa tapos ang mission mo. Hindi pa tapos ang pangarap mo. Sabi mo nga, magdi-champion ka pa. Maniwala ka na gagaling ka. Kumapit ka. Sa pagkakataon na yon, madadugtungan ang iyong buhay. Binigyan ka ng isa pang chance sa mundo para to pa rin ang pangarap mo. Kung akala mo wala nang kukuha sa iyong ML team dahil sa kalagayan mo, nagkakamali ka. 
may magtitiwala pa rin. Kukunin ka as coach ng isang team abroad. Igagrab mo yung opportunity kahit pa naka-wheelchair ka kasi gusto mo yung ginagawa mo. Magiging mahirap pero okay lang. Ang importante, sumubuka at wala kang regrets. Unti-unti na rin mag improve ang kalagayan mo. Sabi ng mga doktor, kailangan mo ma-operan pero wala ka pa namang pera noon kaya naniwala ka nalang nagagaling ka. Sa tiyaga at paniniwala, makakatayo ka rin. Darating ang punto na makakalakad ka na ulit. Himala, di ba? May isa pang biyaya na darating. Lalapit ka na isang kaibigan, si Coach Daki, para maging taktisya ng AP Brand. May chance ka ulit na ituloy ang pangarap. Huwag mo tong sayangin. Ikaw ang susi na magbubukas ng bagong pintuan para sa iyong team. Makapagsibol kayo at dito magsisimula ang sunod-sunod niyong pagkapanalo sa iba't ibang tournament kabilang ang MPL Philippines Season 12. Kung data ay literal na hindi ka makalakad, ngayon lakad matatag ka na irerepresenta ang Pilipinas sa M5 World Championships. David, nakakatuwa manood ng MPL, no? Nakikita mo yung mga idol mo. Yung iba dyan, magiging kakampi mo. Maglaro ka lang na maglaro, tapos magpataas ka ng rank at stars. Sa sobrang loko mo, darating pa nga yung 24 hours na nag-live ka ng ML para magpapansin. Dahil sa kasapagan mong yun, may chance ka pang nakasali ka sa brand. Sobrang saya ng magiging run mo kasi magcha-champion ka na sa MPL tapos makakasali ka pa sa M2 World Championship. Nakaka-pressure pa yan kasi rookie ka pa lang tapos mag-worlds ka na. Buti na lang umayon yung resulta sa atin. Magiging champion ka ng M2. Oo, masaya siya. Kaso warning lang ha, yung mga susunod na mangyayari dito magiging mahirap at masakit para sa'yo. Ganun talaga yung buhay eh. Hindi laging masaya. Minsan, Pag nasa tuktok ka at hindi mo alam kung paano harapin ang tagumpay, sasagad-sad ka pababa, tatama rin ka, makikinig sa maling sinasabi ng iba. At ang uli, magmamahal ka ng taong lolokohin ka lang pala. Sa mga panahong yun, mapatingin ka na lang sa salamin at parang hindi mo nakilala yung sarili mo. Magiging madilim yung mga susunod na kabanata ng buhay mo. Pero David, dito ka matututo. Oh, baka gusto mo laktawan tong part na to, ha? Hindi pwede, kasi mahalagang pagdaanan mo to. Okay lang matakot, gawin mo pa rin. Magka top 8 kayo sa MPL, talo, laglag. Hindi lang isa, dalawang beses pa. Dahil dito, mapaisip ka kung kaya mo pa ba, kung para sa'yo pa ba yung ML, ngayon ka dapat hindi tumigil. Kailangan mong ituloy at patunayan sa sarili mo na kaya mo, kahit sa mga oras na wala ka ng ganang gumalaw. Kung magagawa mo to, Magkakaroon ka ng disiplina. Gagawin mo siya dahil pinangako mo sa sarili mo na panahon na para magising at magbago. Kapag naayos mo na yung sarili mo, magiging maayos na teammate ka na sa mga kasama mo. Kung yung dati nga, sarili mo lang iniisip mo. Ngayon, mas masaya ka na kapag masaya yung teammates mo, di ba? Dahilan ito para mag-champion kayo sa iba at ibang tournaments, pati na rin sa MPL Season 12. Matutupad rin yung pangarap mo para sa team na makapag-M5. Ngayon, sa pagkakataong ito, Welcome back to the M5 World Championship! And here with me, CW's family! Hello, everybody! You're Ricky, CW's brother. I see you all the time. Can you let us know who you, who's here with you? Yes, uh, first of all, this is my dad. Hi, dad. Hi. This is the CW auntie. Auntie, hello, auntie. And CW auntie. Auntie as well. CW cousin. Cousin, what's your name? CW father, brother-in-law. Brother-in-law. Uh, I'm CW sister. CW sister. Okay, so there's how many of you? There's three of you? Three of you siblings? Yes, three of us. 
No, only two of us. Only I, two of you. I mean, like you, CW, and the older sister. How many of you are there? Uh, we are five. Five. So CW is what the youngest? Yes, he is the youngest. He's the youngest. Youngest of all. L let me know how is he as the youngest brother. Uh, for me personally, if you know him closely, he's kind of talk active and like the. No, he's talkative. Yeah, yeah, he's talk active, and he's also like. Uh, poking fun to each other. So he's talkative and he likes to poke fun yeah, of yeah. people. So that means the next interview, I need to focus on CW and I need to interview him more. Is that correct? Yeah, you should interview him one by one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to him. Yeah. I'm going to talk to him a lot more. Now, have you guys been to the Philippines before? Um, actually, this is my third time. Your third time? So you like Philippines that much? Yeah, I love Philippines. How about CW? How many times has he been here? Um, if I remember correctly, this is his second time. The second time? And then he went here the first time, what, for vacation? Maybe vacation or having fun, I don't know. Oh, you don't know? The older brother doesn't know. So how do you guys like Philippines so far? Good? If you love Philippines, give me a thumbs up. Oh, I love it. I hope, I hope everyone's been treating you well. Now, give me an inside scoop because it seems like CW has a lot of support from his family members. You know, not a lot of parents understand about esports. So, how did your parents react when he told them he wants to be a professional player? Um, for my parents, I think the only supportive one at first is my mom. The was mommy. my mom, yes. Mommy's always supportive. My dad is uh, so scary. No, you didn't want him to play? No? Yeah, he, he, used, to hate, he used to hate gaming as general. Really? What changed his mind? Um, because I think he changed his mind because uh, CW is a hardworking person. He likes to play competitively before becoming pro player and he Already did earn so much, so my parents. You already earned so much. Yeah, kind of see mm, this is a great future. Maybe you should go um, play professionally or something like that. Did CW ever share what he wants to do if he wins the M5 World Championship? Maybe he will treat us to Japan. He's going to treat them to Japan. You know, the world is different now. Esports is now such a great career, and CW has proven himself so much. Now, there's people watching from all around the globe, and also CW could hear you. What do you want to say to CW right now? For CW, I hope you will play without any pressure and keep giving your best. And let's see how CW does with Onyx as we head back to game number two. Casters from all over the world, let's get it on. Casters, pass up. Thank you very much, Mara and W for CW's brother, because now we know Calvin Winata is talkative. Jay Wei, he's very talkative. Just Mara not, should interview him more. Not on the mic, man. On stage, he becomes <laughs> he becomes an introvert completely. Yeah. But I gotta give us a big shout out to CW, man, because I actually sat with the auntie uh, during the group stages, and she told me that CW paid for their trip here what? to the Whoa. Philippines. So they love w, it here. Man. W man. W. You yeah. can't spell CW without a W. w. That's right. And uh, I wish oh. I was that rich. Yeah, yeah. me too, man. This guy is. Yeah, he's here. No, yeah. it's not. It's not true. Richest caster in the world. That's I think the true. crowd agrees that too. Is not true Wolf at is all. the richest caster. That is not true at all. They don't agree, right? Oh. You, are, you really want me to ask? No. You know, you know, no. you, know <laughs> you know, you know what I will agree. <laughs> what is that for everyone watching on TikTok? You guys can get TikTok drops. Watch for three minutes. You can win one TikTok viewer chess, and watch for five minutes or more, and you can win TikTok deluxe chess. If you watch longer than five minutes, maybe you will know. In terms of the debate, who is the richest caster? Is it really Wolf or Mirko? Or LaFell? I'm out of the equation, man. I'm, I'm at least like top six. If you really no, want to make not. this a debate, right? I mean, no, you're not. never mind. Let's just get into the draft. <laughs> yeah, with that being said, we're not going into the draft. Why are you lying to me? Ah, Why are you sorry, looking man. at a trophy? I'm sorry, man. I thought, I thought we were going to get... Oh, that is a good trophy right there. Ooh. It's the same design as the M4 one, right? Because they swapped an M4. And man, it looks good. Yep. It looks clean. That was the one Echo brought home, right? That's right. Um, we, from uh, we, 
we brought it home from Indonesia. We? Very. Yeah. We? Of we? Course, You're a part of, of Echo? No. Are you analyzing for no, Echo? Hell no, hell no, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> My brains will not be as good to, to be part of a championship team yet. You know? Okay, with that being said as well, again. So you're part of a team? Oh, you are part of a team. Okay, either way. <laughs> We're a team. The World Championship trophy for three years now has been here in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Based on the performance of AP branches now, they want to keep that world trophy here. But again, Onik, this is their Your chance is to bring it over <laughs> and not let it stay in, in the Philippines. And we are here in the draft. Yeah. The draft might have started. Always you know, Lavelle, the they, they, I hear Matilda team. have a chance to break three curses back to back to back. Okay, what's the curse? First curse. Wait, gotta do the night. No host country. No host country has ever won the M series. And also, number two, mirror curse. Number three, two time. So now, we live in the world where there's a possibility. There is. That AP Bread. AP Bread is a curse breaker. They, yes. Mm -hmm. Breaking the curse of the host country. Mm -hmm. And then being the two-time world champion. With that being said, we're jumping into the draft where AP Bread have the momentum. They have their first game win. Onyx, this is their moment. This is their chance. If they want to keep in the game, if we want to make sure it's not a 4-0, they got to win this one. Momentum is big, especially when AP Bren gets it. We saw even in the game itself, when they got that snowball rolling, it was almost uh, impossible to yep. derail it. Onik this time with first joy. pick. Oh, they instantly pick up the joy. AP Bren, are they going to be picking up the Valentina, which is the typical answer to the joy? And then the Fredrin that we saw, um, they utilize so well for the side of uh, AP Bren. Because the, the thing with Fredrin against Joy is obviously the Joy will be able to get away from the Fredrin, but once you get on top of the Joy, you're going to be A-OK -okay because of the continuous stunts that you get out of the Fredrin. Another option is the Akai that AP Bren also likes. Let's do a very Ooh. quick recap here. Tiger Bruno. Let's okay. do a very quick recap here. Onik has banned out Faramis, Matilda as well as 1 1. AP Brand has banned out Gunavir, Nolan as well as the Kaja. Mm -hmm. Onik first picked the Joy very early on, and AP yep. Brand responds with the Tigreal as well as the Bruno here, mm -hmm. where again, the Tigreal, I would say, is multi talented. He can do a lot. Yeah. One of them is that he can actually slow down the jungler. Yeah, exactly, because of the push. That you, that you have, and that's uh, going to be a problem for Kairi for sure. That means that they need uh, they, they need a hero from the room that can actually match where the Tigreal is. So that might be a hero that the uh, Boots, or sorry, Keyboy might be looking towards, like a, some, someone to kind of keep life. tabs on the on the Tigreal. If that's going to be the Claude and Joy together. I mean, I understand that Teresa, but Claude and Joy together, there's so much scaling on the side of Arnik. Don't get me wrong, they're very strong in the latter portions of the game, but uh, might be too greedy. Yeah. Especially considering both of them can technically be countered by the implosion, right? They go in, they can get combo That's together. Right. And in lane already, it's already a tough matchup. Mm -hmm. Bruno versus Claude. I've been in the receiving end of a Bruno matchup again when I'm on a Claude. Yeah, but here's the thing. Not I kinda, fun, man. I kind of feel like the Claude is for two reasons. Because I kind of feel like for AP Brand, they do respect CW. So this Claude could be banned out. And I kind of feel like... Seeing the Tigreal, you're kind of looking at a draft that does not have a Minotaur. So perhaps that's also yeah. another reason why CW was like, okay, I can use the Claude here. Yeah. But they got to finish things out because a AP Brand just now, he was a very big impact. And the Paquito, before it gets banned out, yeah. instantly picked up. Yep, the Paquito obviously great against uh, Claude when it comes to like, uh, the some moments of the game. Um, what I don't like about the, the Claude is that there's that passive that we know for sure for Tigreal. Tigreal actually likes. Yeah going up against the Claude. It's like a Minotaur, right? Almost like a Minotaur with a second skill, but this time it's a passive. So I'm interested why Onik went for this kind of play. Obviously, the Claude is great versus the Bruno, though, in the latter portions of the game. But in the early stages, it's not going to be the right answer. So I will not be surprised if Baby Brent just bans out the Angela, because it's a, uh, it's, uh, you know, he has a, a lot of uh, vehicles here for Onik. No yeah, looking at the draft right now, looks like Baby Brent are putting respect onto Sans because he is a playmaker for Onik. Onik betting out the Boxia, yeah, making sure that perhaps they're really looking at a jungler that is not super tanky. And we saw how the Frederick was very impactful in the game. Will that be one of the bans? 
I believe for Kyle Tuzi as well, he's been able to flex, utilize the flex pick of the Makito, right? Yeah, that's right. I believe it was group stages or somewhere in the knockout stages where Kyle was able to utilize this. Yeah. But either way, they always go for the FDP. FDP? Full damage Paquito. That's right. They want to go for um, all out all damage Paquito, which is going to be great versus the, this Claude. And then eventually the Joy, if they do lock it down. I'm curious. if I think AP Brin might just get the few hero on their fourth pick. Yeah. And what else is there? I mean... They might. <laughs> there, there are players the who Sunday actually Z like the cushion going up against domain. the Joy. Looking Whoa. at the Lilia as well, Kadita Ben is very clever because, like you said, Wolf, a lot of scaling coming in from Onyx. They need a very strong mid laner to actually help them out in the early as yep. well as the mid to make sure that they don't receive a lot of problems going into the game. But what is the safer pick here? Valentina, Valentina. picked up. Yep. Very I'm, safe. I'm, I'm looking and I'm thinking, I don't know, a, a court maybe even? Four. Because wave clear as well? Yeah, for, for Onyx. For Onyx, for sure. The f with the Faramis being banned, it's not available. You, you go either Eve or... Uh, Novaria? Even Eve Novaria, Novaria. Novaria is a bit safer, though, yeah, right? Safer, Compared to yeah. the rest, because you are going to be able to have that range yeah. advantage against whoever you're up against. Or maybe they go Angela plus uh, perhaps a Cho, a defensive hero. I think Ooh. Angela plus Ruby, actually, for, uh, for Onyx. Or Rafaela, Angela. I mean, they double down in the support because... I think that for both the Joy as well as this uh, this squad, you're you have so much scaling, so you you're so dependent on scaling and uh, getting items that you need some supporting from your roamer. <laughs> oh, it's, yep. Your Gord, the Gord, Gord picked up as well as yep, the Ruby, Ruby here. Oh. Okay, the two analysts got it right. Yeah, I'm I, I feel clever calling out the Gord. <laughs> you guys are clever, right? The Gord and the Ruby here, mm. the Ruby. It's going to be quite good at actually stopping yep. any of these initiations, especially the dashes Ooh. coming in front of Keto. But AP Bren, what if they go Phobias for AP Bren? Oh, that's going to be pretty good. Joy, then, Ruby, Claude. Yeah. And then just flexing the Paquito in the jungle. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's the case, even the play by play can call it. Yeah. <laughs> they can even heck. I mean, I mean, I mean, you can be proud of yourself. It's fine, man. Yeah, it's for fine. sure. People but love you. I don't like the Phobias, though. Like, All right. I mean, it's I, I get it, right? I mean, it's a lot of damage. You can actually jump in and distract a lot of the backline members. It's yeah. good for Snowball, yeah. but maybe they want something a bit more reliable. Yep. And that's the Martis, Martis in the jungle. All right, so the Paquito is going to be going to the XP lane. They know there's a lot of CC on Onyx. They go with anti-CC. Yeah, looking at Onyx draft here, I kind of feel like they have to be very calculative with their aggression because going up against a Martis, if you force out the turtle and you take way too much damage, mm -hmm. you're going to put the Martis on the pedestal. The Martis will be a very happy boy. Yep. Happy man. Happy, Happy man. man. Obviously for Joy as well as the Claude, the late game is the power spike. And they're going to be really, really strong. If we're going to be looking at the heroes, that's evident on the side of AP Brand. They, they don't have the best defense against the Joy as well as the Claude, so that's going to be a problem. But in the early stages, that is where this Bruno Martis lineup snowball coming out from the side of AP Brand might be uh, what we can expect. As we go into game number two in the grand final of the M5 World Championship, can Onyx delay the game, scale it up, or will AP Brand bringing the pressure and stop them in their tracks? We'll witness in this game number two of this best of seven. Starting us off already with the crowd roaring again in Resolve Memorial Coliseum. Anything interesting to note down here as we get into the game, Wolf? Well, I'm surprised that there's no Tigreal invasion yet at level one. I don't think that they'll ever be uh, considering it because Keyboy is keeping taps on Ogwen. This is what we said, right? There has to be a hero for Keyboy that kind of mirrors where Ogwen wants to go for. And going in for the quantum charge yeah. on Ogwen, interesting. He wants to. Yeah, he wants to be part of these skirmishes, and uh, yeah, Kairi still has the retribution, so it's going to be safe. He uses it. Retri over Ogwen with a shove back onto Kairi, but he's still going to be able to dish out some damage. Keyboy is coming in as well. Ogwen with a flicker backwards defensively. That's a flicker as well. Don't run. Rook kick. Keyboy picks up first blood in game number two. A change of pace for Onik. A good start, but again, we got to see how this impact really happens. What's the advantage of Onik now having the first blood? Oh, that's a lot of advantage because now Kairi gets to level 4 without any problem. They can contest the turtle because the ultimate coming out from Kairi will be up soon anyways. And the fact that Keyboy had an extra EXP from that kill, that's gonna be, eh, that's gonna be great. Electrifying beats already used up Keyboy as well with his own round Wolf King, but it's a mortal coil and 
It's a complete opposite approach, right? Master Assassin for Mr. Recitiano, Super Marco, and for CW, it's that tenacity. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've seen that AB brand, they really want to win out the lane, but I've been looking at game number one as well as game number two. AB brand has been putting a lot of pressure inside the jungle of Onyx, yeah. but why are they putting in the pressure there? It's mainly because of the joint. They don't want to. They don't want carry to snowball. Kyle TZ, it, um, Kyle TZ, I mean, despite being pressured, will get to level five first. But I don't think that they will have time for this. Good poke coming up from Sun. Great oh, poke and boots as well. Forcing out a mortal coil. Kyle TZ is so completely away. But Black TZ doing the same thing to Sun. Forcing a flicker out. Harry jumping in, finding the retribution on a turtle as Keyboy dishes out some damage with boots. Just trying to keep AP Brand their front line at bay. And Onik have secured a neutral objective without giving anything away. Onik is starting off very, very good, even though Flaptizi was able to zone Sans away. But looking at how Kyrie is playing the game and the engage coming in from Boots, it's very, very impressive. So now, Onik, even though it's a 300 goal lead, is actually quite impactful here. What do yep. you think, Wolf? Yeah, definitely impactful. We were talking about, about the laning, I mean, the scaling of Kairi as well as the CW. The fact that they're not getting run over by the Tigreal, by the Pokito, oh. as well as the Martis, that's great. And Sans for some reason, again, Keyboy. Oh my. He found the I'm offended off camera. Few was caught off guard. And Sans just missed it gushed. Oh, look at the bottom lane here. for Marco having to go back. How easy is there? CW, I don't think he can do anything here. Not much, not right now. He pops in at Go on it because he <laughs> farms back. But Wolf, they're being kept at bay. The smartest gets yep. outscaled by quite a bit. Not for sure. Not a good sign, but they can still recover. They still have, uh, what, five minutes to go with this? If they find the opening finally with Kyle TZ, they can uh, just run over and then Flap TZ eventually controls the map. That is definitely what AP Brand is looking for. Yeah, right now we're looking at two minutes to three minutes. We see how CW is double farming both the goal lane as yes. well as the mid lane. And we got to talk about this. Gord not receiving the, the farm. Is it still fine for him, Wolf? Yes, in a way that all he needs to do is to actually equalize the lanes. At this point, Sans, he just needs to prolong the game. That's what he needs to do. It feels very adaptive, right? The way that they are actually giving CW these waves. They yeah. know that Sans just picked up a kill, so that he can afford to actually give a wave in the mid lane. That's when CW decided to rotate over. Yeah, this is one of the benefits of having a mid laner that is not farm dependent. But let's look at the items here. Yep, there's the Hunter Strike that uh, Lab TC has picked up. The FDP. FDP. FDP, the full damage Paquito. And it's gonna be oh, look at uh, utilized up top. A lot of damage onto Boots, an implosion committed as well. Boots now caught and I'm offended. He pops in the penalties on Flickers out to safety. No but should fall. The Decimit finds the kill. And Kyle Teasy will give AP Bren their first kill on the board for game number two. But looking at Onik here, they're really trying to trade things off because they're like, okay, if you get one kill, we need to get two. I kind of feel like that's the idea. And the two that they got was the buff, as well as CW getting a little bit of farm coming yeah. in from that mid lane turn. He's, he's getting gold fast. And the thing is, Onik lost their flicker onto Keyboy. It's going to be a massive uh, battle spell to not have for two minutes. Knowing full well that the five to seven minutes, that is actually the power spike of AP Bren. Onik, despite them leading, when it comes to the goal, they should not be that comfortable. And burning boots as well as Keyboy's flicker, just like that for the trade-off, might not be the best choice. Not the best choice, but I think that's the only choice that they could have made. AP Brenner doing so well at going for neutral objectives, but also screening the map. They know if Onik want to look for a trade, and they get the more valuable one. By calculation, oh, flicker implosion, bringing him back. Now the shove in, but a mystic gush. There's a lot of damage to the back as well. Keyboy gonna be knocked out by the worldly. I'm offended, not connecting the Destiny that does though. TPZ by Boots. Defensive penalty zone to the back. GW finding a trade in the bottom lane. And he will be able to get just the turret here as Ogwen screens him and pushes him back again. I mean, we saw in the interview, CW can get money, man. He can get the gold. And I kind of feel like Onik right now, they are fine with giving something up as long as they get something back, as long as it's not a, a losing trade. Proactiveness coming in from AB Brand, yep. but we got to look at Kyrie as well. He just finished his Starlim side. It's just one item, but once he gets two, once he gets three, yep. it's going to be trouble. And speaking of trouble, AP Brand already invaded the purple buff that should be belonging to Kyrie. Then they secured their own. They even got a turret up top. And obviously, the power spike that we're talking about for AP Brand, we can now feel it. And Onik will really scratch their heads with yep. the flicker being burned out by both Keyboy as well as Boots. I want to mention. Ago. I want to mention as well. Even though Sans, he was giving away the lane, he has a goal advantage over Few. Yeah. 
I guess because of the kills that he was able to get, as well as the assist. But Onik, they don't need to panic. All they need to do now is to defend their lanes. Make sure that the middle is going to be intact. Keyboy and Sans might throw their bodies just to defend that. And then secure the, the farm onto CW. And again, looking at the wow. gold here, CW is number one, Super Marco is number two. But looking at Onik here, the way that they've been moving around the map is like that they're not sacrificing too much for helping out CW. Yeah, now they've actually lane swap, decided to do that. Maybe Red feels very happy to do that. Flap TZ 1v1 against CW, but Battle Mirror Image is going to be used up. Flap TZ, knockout strike, one more shot, blazing duet from CW. No battle spells used up just yet. AB Brand in the bottom lane, that's a penalty zone, connecting on the open, but he gets a massive shove on the three. Kyrie walks out with the electrifying beat, Super Marco, did she got damage on the boots? I don't bend it! Into a decimate! Oh. Kyrie with retribution, he misses it! But Kyle doesn't! He finds another! D-Boy falling, south of the mid lane, pressured down on his own tier one. Kyrie looking to clear out the waves, that's a dive angle from AP Brand! A decimate and Kyrie will still be able to walk away, Super Marco! Gets a big goal on top. CW, 1v1 against Flap TZ. Battle Mirror Aim is going to be used out. Knock on strike, 1 2. CW takes the 1v1. Hey, why did you bring a gun to a fist fight, man? CW was playing unfair, but we got to look at the items here. Yep. Onik, what's happening here, Wolf? Well, it's a massive snowball. The Radiant Armor picked up. It's the first time for Kyle TZ. That paid dividends, and now he's going to be. Tanking through Onyx damage. Mortal Coil, but a penalty zone will be used in time. Kyle TZ going for the bang! He turns it around! The shutdown goes to the Roamer. I would say that's still a win for AP Bren. Onyx right now making mistakes. We saw the mistake just now. Kyrie unable to secure the turtle. Good thing by AP Bren, they actually reset it so that the retribution was not enough. Yeah. Now, what does Onyx have to do? Well, Onyx just have to defend once again. Very unfortunate that CW was the one get, that got picked off. That was great play coming out from Kaltizi with the blade armor as well because Onik was trying to run him down but he lasted for such a long time that AP Brand was able to trade it off. With the Radiant armor as well as blade armor picked up by this Kaltizi Martis. Now you know that they have the snowball. Definitely needs to secure the, fir the second, uh, I mean the first Lord for AP Brand for sure. The question is, well, we see AP Brand right now with a thousand gold lead. They're moving as a unit, they're moving as three, they're moving as four. What are they planning, Wolf? Are they just wanting to get kills or they just want to zone on it away? Yeah, this is just about zone, uh, zoning on it away. They do have a lot of potential when killing. But at the same time, if they just secure the Lord and then just take the turns, they're going to be fine because what happens afterwards was will be to, for them to take out the jungle of Onik. Well, right now, looking at the goal, looking at the positioning, it is definitely AP brand favorite, and Flap TZ is doing the most amount of damage in this game. Looks like he's fine being alone. AP brand doing this 4-1 positioning is good for AP brand. It's massive for them. Kyrie looking for an angle, gets shoved back by Open, electrifying beast. Whoa! Oh! Kyrie has just stolen it away. Kyle had the retry. He had the level advantage as well. The magical man. My goodness. Only one time, man. Kyrie was like, don't worry. It was just luck. It was just a mistake. Holy. I'm not going to lose the next one. I got this, says Kyrie. Brings me back to the time where I was able to work with this man. Wow. Wow. Just wow. Wow. What, what a steal. What a steal. That's what we're wowing about. Every time he's, he's doing that, back in his uh, younger days, you know, he would scream, Dimo Akaya Saratrian, which means you cannot out retry me. Ooh. Ooh. You cannot win a duel Ooh. against retry. I mean, that's the mentality you need to be a world champion. Because right what? now, again, this is. We got to talk about the situation here. Even though, yes, Kyrie was able to secure that Lord, yep. but we cannot deny it is still in control of AB Brand. Yep, they sure. are the one in the driver's seat. I guess the best part here for the side of Onik is that nobody died during that exchange, right? They were able to snatch the Lord, nobody died. So that means that they can at least equalize the lanes. Every minute that they buy for CW to farm, for Kyrie to farm, that's going to be great. Great news for Onik. So now AB Brand again. Looking at the tempo that they're moving, I personally for me, even though Kyrie can scale up very well, CW on the claw can scale up very well. Yeah. Late game Onik is gonna be very dangerous. That's right. AP Brand, do they have to force things or they're fine taking it at the tempo that they're taking it right now? Mm. 
I guess with the hero that they have, they cannot. Like, if they had them, something like an Arlet, perhaps, yeah. they can force things. They have that Tigreal as well as the Paquito, which is a, you know, committal kind of a lineup. As well as the Martis. You, you cannot just, you know, get a kill and then get out. When, surely you can because you're fast, but it's not that kind of hero. But then it gets too risky, does it not, yeah. right? I mean, if you do uh, not force anything, don't look for a snowball, then it's completely reliant on the Bruno. You have a lot of cover, I get it, right? You already yeah. have a Paquito, the Tigreal, the Valentina as well. Three amazing cover heroes. But Onik, they went for the other side. You have cover, we have dive. They have a Joy, a Claude, a Terizla, and a Ruby. Everyone wants to, di to dive. And the Gord, he's playing the, the best defense is offense. Yeah. The best cover is if my team dives in and I deal free damage. Yeah, because looking at this game, it reminds me of a Diggy, an alarm time bomb. Because right now, AP brand, hoot, 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 hoot. M3 facts, Sky wow. King. Wow. Well, I guess wow. the saying is true. This is yes. not a Lord confirmed. It's a Lord steal. 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 Eight, eight times. Eight times. In M5. And this is the season, or this is the M series where a lot of people are saying, you know, Kyrie's retry is not as good. It's so-so. So. It's so-so. This is so-so, apparently. <laughs> Dude, eight <laughs> steals is so-so. Oh, my goodness. Okay, maybe, maybe when we hit double digits. Maybe that's the threshold the people are looking oh for. Maybe they, You're the Sky King, aren't you? Yeah, maybe they didn't finish their sentence so, so good, right? Okay, yeah. here's the thing. You want to know my reasoning of why it's only eight times? Why? Because they've been dominating the map so much. You're right. They Wait. don't have the opportunity to steal. They just You're claim right. it for themselves. And, and still, eight times. So only a few teams give Kyrie the opportunity to even steal it because they started it. And to think that they're dominating so much that they actually don't lose so much games. Actually, their only loss might be against the uh, Blacklist, right? And one yes, against yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. in the knockout stage. The knockout stage. Wait, in the entire tournament, the only they, game that they, they lost. They, another, they had another 3 1, I believe. No, Remember the 1 1 from uh, See You Soon? Where they were a turnaround? Hey, look, I man. believe it was 2 0, bro. I got, I got ADHD. Check I it. can't I can't remember anything much, but. Right now, we're looking at the players again. Thank you very much to all the audience here in the venue as well as watching at home. We are going to provide the best, I would say, services for the players to make sure that they are having a oh, good yeah, time they... in game. But That's either way, right. right now, again, AP Brand, back to the topic. Yep. No losses from, from uh, Onyx. Yeah, They've I mean, only dropped to the two Black. PH teams. One, yep. Two games against Blacklist, one game so far in AP Brand. Yep. The Atas Langit at Onyx. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's how you be the Sky Kings. What does that mean? be untouchable. What does that mean? There's the sky. And then above that, there's Onik. Yeah, that's basically the... Yeah, yeah the Atlas Lange at Onik. Above the skies, there's Onik. Onik Lang. Flashback to MSC 2021, that's the gist of it. LaFell, you just gave us the gist of it. You know what? The first time I met you, that was the first thing you said to me. Yes. <laughs> the gist of it. And now you know why. That's, that's, why we're working that's, together now. That's where our friendship began. We got that With connection. With the gist of it? Yeah, the gist of it. Our connection is special, guys. Yes, we are special indeed. In fact, this whole desk is special. Yeah, with a special connection as well. That's right. That's the title of the podcast. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, he had to go there. <laughs> okay. He had to go there. He Check went out. from soft selling to hard selling. <laughs> Check out YouTube, find Wolf, and you'll be happy. Now, oh, that's right. I want to be happy too. Me too. AB Brain right now, <laughs> is there a good chance that they can end this game in the next 10 minutes? It, there because in my head, chance. that's that's the, the the timeline. There is a great chance, especially if they keep their. I think they have the. They still have their battle spell, so that means that even in this uh, Lord push, they're gonna be able to defend and then try to make baby take tur turtles, and they have the Bruno reaching the critical mass. All right. So yeah, to answer your question, yes, they do. Oh, here it is. Top player KDA in M5. Wow. Wow. Even wow. Hoots there. So 14.92 for Sans. TLB. 14.08 for CW. Even though TLB didn't make it, but Hoon has been spectacular with KDA. Kyrie's not here, but Hoon is. Hoon is here. Kyrie. So does that is mean he. Hoon is better? He is he. Hey, numbers don't lie. <laughs> numbers, numbers don't lie. So Sagan is top five players in M5. Let me just say, Onik might be looking at Hoon. Onik may be looking at Hoon. Who knows, man? Hoon is showing up. No. Nope. Okay, fine. Maybe not Onik. Maybe BTR. I don't maybe know. Maybe it's a reach, but... Yeah, now the question is, right, like, is it stat padding or is it legit? It's legit, man. Okay. I think if M5 or any M series uh, is a difficult tournament to kind of stat pad, bro. Double digits KDA, man. Yeah. 14.92.
Shout out to Mobazane. He must be loving this asset right now while he's restreaming. Yep. Dude, you know what? Shout out to Mobazane. Shout out to all the restreamers out there. Mm -hmm. Maybe you guys don't hear this enough, but we love you. Yeah. You're the real MVP. No, I think we are. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, anyways. Again, looking looking into this into this game, Onik has a chance because talk us through this, uh, Mirko, the scaling of the uh, joy as well as yeah. the uh, quad. Oh, but and with that, no. we are going into the game. But you can still talk about it. All right, so the scaling, right? I mean, for the quad, it's going to be amazing towards the later stage of the game. You deal so much DPS. Whoa! Just as oh I say God. it, the mirror curse is real, man. I say his name and he dies. I'm Flap TZ gets knocked out. To the family wow. of CW, I'm sorry I mentioned it. We're sorry. We're sorry. We're yeah. special. And with uh, Flap TZ not even having to commit the, the flicker, that's okay. going to be a. I don't know what happened, but that's going to be great for AP Bread. They must be, must be feeling great right now. And now, what they can do is to control the long lane once again with Flap TZ, then just uh, continuously siege against AP Bread. Right now, Ogwen is looking for a target. Sans able to stun him up. Looking at the position here, Ogwen is going to figure out where the majority members of Onik is. Having Kyle TZ as well as few there, they are in position to follow up whenever necessary. But the more important one is, look at Flap TZ. He's hiding. He is. He's doing a good job at it too right now. And Kyle TZ is just going on to the purple buff. Trying to steal the way a good steal back, or I would say recovery from Onik there it was a stun mystic projectile into Kyrie's retreat. That's right. Looking at the goal here, even though CW has died twice, so what Marco hasn't died at all, yep. only a 300 goal difference. That's impressive. The two Very waves, impressive. I believe, yeah? Yeah. Yep. The double lane setup that was uh, given to CW. And the fact that they're defending mid, this is the most important resource now for Onik. Getting the mid lane intact means that you will have access to all to your jungle so, so much easier. And that means also that you can position yourself around the Lord later on. Yeah, losing the side lanes is like uh, losing a sock. A and then sock. losing the mid lane is like losing a shoe. You can still wear a shoe without a sock, but you cannot wear a, a, a shoe with a, a sock without a shoe. Wait, what? I think you can. <laughs> But yeah, we get it, okay, we get it, right? The mid lane is more important. Listening from the crowd, I guess we can. Yeah, we can. We can. Right, right, right. right. Thank you, crowd. Thank you. Sometimes you got to get them to correct us, right? Yep. Yeah, but, you know, um, I'm, I'm running out of, out of yep. ideas. What, what can I say? It's special. Yeah. I think uh, I think Merkel wears his expensive shoes without the uh, socks. Hey, don't get to that, right? Kyrie now trying to steal it. Oh, he doesn't get it. Ooh. Kyle Teasy takes it away, snatches it away from Kyrie's hands. Hey, by the way, Super Merkel. Went for the RG, a rose gold meter. It's gonna be perfect versus the aggression that can come from Kyrie. And now the Lord Dance has begun. We gotta talk about AB Brand 1.3k gold lead. Onik here, they are at a disadvantage. Science keeps trying to figure Ooh. out where the members of AB Brand are, and he's been finding them. Looking at the HP as well, AB Brand, they are chunked down just a little bit because Kyle TZ has been absorbing the damage coming yep. in from the Lord. Keyboy. Can he find a good opening here? Kyle might have to reset this. CW's walking up right now. Kaltizi finds a good pinch down, but CW takes in a half HP. Boots doing the same thing. Mortal Coil used up defensively. Kyrie takes control of the Lord. You're not going to look to reset it. I'm abandoned into the Mystic. Gosh, it's an amazing duet as Boots distracts the back line. Few very, very low. Not going to be chased down. Kyrie finds a double kill right now. Kaltizi is going to be forced to use the Mortal Coil defensively. Kaltizi went for the hills. The Mystic projectile Ooh. connects at wow. max range. And Kyle TZ falls. Now it's Pop TZ was looking for an angle to maybe turn this around, but Onik, they've taken three members down from AP Brenner looking for the Lord. Run bias. Whoa, what happened there? How uh, did Onik immediately take control? It was the Lord Dance and the bait and switch that you saw coming out from CW went in forward so that he will force some rotations from AP Brenner. In fact, two people followed him afterwards, and that's how they were able to get it. By the way, the underrated factor of the court. Oh. Ouch. Ooh. Ouch. Ow, oh, man. Yep. The underrated factor for the Gord is that he can clear the left push mid with just two spells and you can uh, scout out where the opponents are. Shove. Yep. Ogwen has no dash now. CW Battle Mirror Image to the front. Ogwen forced to flick around. Flap! Flap! Teasy! One shot with a nature. Flap Teasy gets out just barely, but CW does the same thing. Oh, man. 7-7, seven to seven, game number two. Dude, Onik has been waiting. Mm -hmm. They waited for CW. They waited for Kyrie. Look at the items now. Yep. This is the power spike they were looking for. So the three items now onto Keyboy. That means that he is not easily taken out. You can see that CW eventually gets to the win of nature and the Malefic Lore. 
Dude, right now, listen defense. to the crowd. It's all for AP Brand. They're still looking at AP Brand to defend this, but Onik, with just one more dance, it was 1,000 gold lead for AB Brand. Mystic now it's two points everywhere with them. Implosion only onto Keyboy. That's the Roman for the team. Kairou, that actually find Pinch. Keyboy finds it. And on the Super Mario penalty zone. Darts away from and the knockout strike brings Boots back to the turret for AP Brand to do what the crowd's been chanting. Defend! Right now, Onik, they are trying their best to get the resources coming in from AP Brand. They wanted the structures. But AP Brand, how did they... How did they do that? How did they defend so well? That was the old oh, win. Oh, right onto Kalteezy, blazing duet! Flat. One agent leaves that Mystic Gush as well! What? what a bait! Sans flickers out of the shove. Ogwen stunned up. Kyrie walking up against three members. Looking for the dashes. Wow. One more should be able to do it right now. Stop teasing to be taken low. But Kyrie, Kyrie decides to stop. Sans. Love Sans. That was crazy. That's Look crazy, Sans. You can see the damage output now from Gamera, from Kairi, as well as Sans is nah. It, they really do hurt now. And the thing with Gord is that even when it's a defensive kind of hero, and it's strong at when, it, when he's able to land his spells, it still is a pretty good scaling hero as well. The Impure Age versus the spells that he has and the items that he picked up, Sans will be a threat in the latter portions of the game as well. Looking at the damage dealt here, Flap TZ was number one, but Sans was able to overcome him. And again, he has been absorbing less minions, mm -hmm. less minion gold, just because he's sharing it with CW. And now, yep. Onik, I wow. would say this is, this is their win condition, no? Definitely. We're reaching the point where they're stronger. I'm offended. Flicker already. Oh, you no. keep burning this away from Oban. And now what do they use to catch? They exactly. practically can't. Kyrie dashes forward, forces that mortal coil, even pops in that electrifying beats. Oh, that's a problem for AP Brand, that Flicker was the sole reason why they were able to defend the bottom lane and get to two kills afterwards. And now that the Lord is going to be available for both teams, I mean, if you're looking at the Flap TC, he's making the lane pushed against Onik, but not having the Flicker Implosion, that's going to hurt. Yeah, right now, the Lord Dance is started by AP Brand again. We got to remind ourselves that Onik was able to win it out with CW using himself as bait and then giving the opportunity for Onik to bite back to go in, to get an engage, and dish out the damage. And now it's Onik. We're holding it in, despite Joy being seen in the top side of the map. They still want to go for the Lord Dance right now and CW's damage. He's definitely scaled. Conceal play. Keyboy finding with the position of Super Marco. Kaltizi forcing his way in. Ogwen looking for the back right now, but Kaltizi is going to be popping down. That's a retribution from Kyrie. Super Marco free hitting in the back. Boo's going to be taking very low, and that's going to be a lot of damage plays out by Kai. Jumps to the back with the electrifying beats. Super Marco, one last shot. Should do it, but he's unable to find it. Only an immortality. Burnt down for AP. Brent, they're looking for more into the mid lane. A good stun to take Flap TZ lower, but he still has the immortality. Mystic Gush trying to predict the maneuvers from Flap. But for Onik and AP Brent, who wins it? Definitely Onik getting that Lord. But good thing for AP Brent is that they only lost their immortality in exchange for the turret in the middle. So they're still trying to get some kind of trade. And AP Brent. Unfortunately, with just Kalteezy manning the front lines, it's not enough. You see the damage output from Onik. It's always a threat. Everybody's a threat now from Onik. Yeah, but Keyboy taking quite a lot of damage. And speaking of threats, man, I'm looking at Super Marco. The damage that he dished out was a lot. Yes. Onik, they have to respect it. I gotta say, either CW or Kyrie, they gotta find a way to get it to get to Super oh! Marco and take it down. A mistake and a costly one. AP Bren with Kalteezy. He's looking for more. The Mystic Projectile stops Kyle. But that's a big, big kill in the 19th minute of the game. And Onik, whatever, whatever playstyle they're doing with CW, it worked in some of the moments, but in that crucial one, it didn't. What I'm trying to say is, CW in the first Lord fight, he went for the min-max play where he's trying to bait on AP Bren and become very aggressive when it comes to his positioning. It paid well during the first Lord, but not in the second one. All right, electrifying beats, immortality. Now Winter Truncheon bot, Flap TZ, buying a lot of time. Ogun running in with a conceal. Implosion flicker onto Kyrie, but he buys oh. the immortality. Now few with the damage as well. Boots still terrified down. I'm offended by a few. Kyrie walks away. Keyboy does the same thing. Super Marco sliding tackle. On to the front. Keyboy brought back to the team. Immortality still ready. He buys it in time. Kyrie looking for the flags. Kyrie looking for the electrifying beast damage, but he won't be able to find it. AP Bren maneuver out of a team fight that they have won. This is the best players in the world. You one mistake, and it feels like 10. Onik, after CW made a crucial mistake, AP Brand controlled the map, 
AP Ben won that fight. Wow. And they have equalized when it comes to the economy. And even after Flap TZ had to utilize the winner, Truncheon, it was just a, a ploy for AP Bren. The rest of the members get back. It looked really dicey though. Ogwen might have been like far too early. AC Field not in range. But eventually Cal TZ was there. Uh, AP Bren squad were able to get to find something even in this stage where Onik has a lot of strength with their with their items with their natural scaling. Yeah, looking at how AP Brand has been positioning as well, you need eyes in the back of your head, man, because the flank coming in from Kyle TZ and Flap TZ as well, it's like whenever oh. you're focusing, something else is going on. That's a lot of damage, but Flap should be able to sustain back up. He pops the regen and he goes onto the waves. Does he have a bloodlust? He, he doesn't. I, yeah, I don't think so, no. I don't think so. I think it's all from the Festival of Blood. And the uh, RGM. Yeah, RGM. For sure. So now, looking at CW, we have... Okay, right now we got to talk about this. CW Win. is the aggressor. He's the bait. But here's the thing, man. Wait, oh, no. do they not know? Okay, Kyle TZ sees it. They see it. Flap TZ sees it too, but he might be too late right now. They're going to go on to Kyle TZ. Burst him down. Kyle will lose his life. A shutdown for Boots. Keyboy zoning down. The members! Boots! A penalty zone on the Super Marco! Holding him back. Now Flap joining in the team teamfight. But a win! Oh. An implosion to the back. CW finally plays a new weapon. Flap TZ goes in for the punches. A lot of damage plays down. Super Marco free hitting for the back. That's a lot of damage down. Why? Why is that affected? Super Marco loses his mortality. Keyboy will not lose his life. AP Bren. They're still able to sustain backup. Super Marco, no flicker though. Kyrie looking for the assassination, looking for a play. Super Marco steals some life back with that house claws and is able to defend. Don't offend Keyboy! Oh my goodness. Keyboy goes in and he's gonna bring all you in! A big shot, but an even bigger shot from Kyrie. CW picks the base turret in the mid lane down. Now Ogwen, one member left standing. Kyle TZ gonna be back in four seconds. Ogwen melted down by CW. Evolve Lord still crashing. In the bottom lane, Onik taking their time. Kyle TZ holding it down, going for the wave. What? Lord went back and forth. Mystic yep. projectile onto Ogwen, dodge away from Mystic. Gosh, I'm offended. Kyle TZ melted down again. And now it's going to be two members in desperation going in. One second on the flap TZ. Who expected a full reverse sweep? It will never have happened in the M5 Grand Finals. We're back to equal on the board. Ladies and gentlemen, we have your attention here. There is no such thing as a clean sweep in the M5 World Championship. We're starting this series with a one to one. And we ended that game with a wonderful display of duel of mechanics from both of the teams with Keyboy and Ogwen making their own plays. But in the end, it oh was. Oh my goodness. We've done it. We hit We've done it. Three, three million point four million. That wow. deserves a clap, everyone. Thank you very much to all the audience here, as well as you guys watching at home. And let me just say, this deserves it. This is the beginning of an amazing grand finals. I'm sure. A lot went on. Back and forth. Pendulum swings. We need the help of the panelists. Leo and Gideon, you got to help us out here. We'll do more than help you out. We'll actually break down this game again. Onyx showing exactly why they are a force to be reckoned with on the road to claiming the golden road. Going past 20 minutes, taking the availability into their own hands. What a game. Truly a beautiful game here from both of these teams. We saw some really good moments, but more importantly, the adaptations in the draft as well has been spot on. We're really seeing these teams target each other in the most painful areas, finding those pressure points to make the difference, to find those advantages in the game. In addition to the draft, again, forcing AP Bren to respond a certain way, play a certain way, come execution, Onik is second to none. The way that Keyboy and Sans would set up an almost just two-man kill squad that would force out uh, resources from AP Bren, flickers, ults being spent out, it just compromises what AP Bren wants, especially in the late game. Absolutely, right? But before we even get to the late game, 
turtle fights were already a bit of a struggle. We did see that Onik was struggling in the first couple of minutes, and all of this coming down to the flexibility of Super Marco and as well as Flapteezy. Full damage, Piquito as well, swapping the two and making sure that once he has that full item and having an early game marksman, gives them the flexibility of deciding who gets to participate in these upcoming turtle fights. Not Lord fights, turtle fights. Because if Mr. CW knows anything, once Flapteezy had two items, he was definitely in the danger zone. And that's why throughout the early to mid, it was clear that AP Bren was still playing with fire. They had dynamite in their hands. And by dynamite, I meant a, a Filipino cannon. But that Flapteezy Gambit can only do so much because as you'll see throughout the highlights, he was positioned in a way that if only Onik were to bite down onto the bait, if only Onik were to be fooled by what he was trying to do, then it would work out. That aside, he was just a flanking XP laner. We're going to award our MVP for game number one, putting one on the board for Onik. It's game number two. We're giving it over to Gilak Sans. Oh my goodness, this guy is still crazy as ever in his name. He's playing a difficult position. Mid lane, yes. Did he get his comfort pick? Well, you would make an argument for it, but Gord, especially once you're up against a Tigreal, especially when you're up against a Paquito, your positioning must be crisp, smooth, and most importantly, clean. Looking at his item build, something might be sticking out to you folks. That is indeed a Guardian Helmet. Something tells me this was but a result of a juggle. This is an item that was built in the heat of battle, wherein this battle mage, this Gord, which has, I don't know, if you'll read it the same way as I did, respectfully replaced Eve and Farsa. He's weaving out of combat. When you go into the late game and you're taking damage, the way that Super Marco's throwing out them balls, you're gonna wanna space out and then come back. Yeah, and I think, you know, the, the, the combination of Keyboy and as well as Sans is what's most important here, right? Keyboy is going to try and slow down and peel people away from Sans' position because Sans is the safe haven. He is the person that they can fall back to when all hell breaks loose. Because once they get hit by a single projectile, a single CC, Whew, that gush makes all the difference. You'll see your health bar go from 100 to zero in no time. And it's because of what Sans is putting on the board that's actually making AP Bren's movements all the more awkward. You see Kyle Tizi here building full tank Mardis. Even he can't stand in front of the gush, so he has to be choosy. He has to choose and pick which angle to come from. See, look at this, pow! Mm. Flap Tizi coming in like he had to dodge. So again, those little micro adjustments compromise AP Bren's approach. I mean, we eventually have to come to that one big fight at the end, right? We're, what everybody was hoping that it was going well, right? You're hoping that Keyboy is going to get punished in these small moments. You're hoping that Kyrie gets into that back line, but it really boiled down to one fight, especially once things got super even. The three man I'm offended that saved it all. Even prior to that, the blockage of the champion stance jabs from Flapteezy, literally making all the difference. And it seems like now we're looking at a new roaming matchup in the making a rivalry between a roamer that displaces the whole team and another roamer that displaces the whole team the ruby and the tigreal we're going to see more of these two heroes in the future because there's a few left in this series we're just but at one and one real quick gideon come on over i want to talk to you real quick yeah 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 you know got the mvp here the huh? season 11 mvp of mplid dude i heard that this guy he moved from jungle back into mid. He was once in a rivalry against Kyrie, and what? since then, season nine, he had a 100% win rate on a fanny. No, that's crazy, that's crazy. That's oh, Gilak. That's Gilak? He's Gilak Sans. But when we look at the overall emblems, we see how some of these small moments make the difference, right? Number one, right down here, guys, the laning has changed. It has evolved to a certain degree. Master Assassin on both side laners. This is what's making the difference. And this is why Mr. CW gets one shot even in the later stages of the game. He was playing the defensive emblem, the tenacity. That's why he was so open about his BMI. It was so generously used to save himself from both Flapteezy and Super Marco, which was fine because it was actually Onyx frontliners that was compromising AP Bren. That's why he was okay to just work on the waves and then come in, deal the initial damage so that Sans and Kyrie can clean up. That's why maybe there's a lot of magic defense items from 
AP Brin. Mm -hmm. And even so, right? You gotta think ahead. You gotta start thinking like a scientist. The mad scientist himself, ending the game with the Guardian's helm. Again, you don't expect to see your mage decide to go for this item, other than the fact that Mr. Flap himself, or arguably, if he did get caught by Ogre, which is the worst case scenario possible, he had an opportunity to live. With the extra HP, maybe that's all they needed. It's this that's actually really frustrating for AP Bren. I could imagine there was a solid amount of time when they were in the lead and that it seemed like the Lords belonged to them. But that's why their long lane control relied so much on the Flap TZ getting it right because not a single Lord went their way. With that said, you're looking at the post-game stats here. A lot of damage coming in from CW. This is spread out between heroes and waves. You have CW also farming his mind out 803 and Kyle TZ using his iframes, using his build, and just hopping in and out of combat to be AP Brand Sandbag. I mean, that's just the next level after you've been practicing your mind out, right? And we've a look at the damage taken. Kyle, he understands his role, and the same goes for Ogwin. They're the punching bag of the team as much as you would like to believe. But even more so, Good Guy Boots is throwing away his life. And I would make an argument that it's an interesting trade. He's using the penalty zone to start off fights, to slow people down, just so that Kyrie can even the score, and more importantly, be able to prioritize neutral objectives. Check this out. CW was actually third in most damage taken from Onik Indo. And what that means is he almost just barely gets away with his life. And that's because of his smart use of his battle spell and his BMI. Now back to the damage dealt story. Of course, a lot of it was on Super Marco, a lot of it was on Few, but when you're playing with a lineup that actually compromises your spacing, which the Valentina is very reliant on, it's kind of hard to lean on that. It mm -hmm. makes Few play only a certain way when Onik allows for it. And the worst part, once you start playing into these lore dances, information is super important. And unfortunately for Few, his abilities are quite short range if you're comparing it to the extra bounces that you get from the Mystic Projectile at times. And that's what's really frustrating because people People who need to open up the map risk themselves putting their lives on the line just to figure out where is Sans. So with that said, you're going to have to wonder what's going to go down in game number three. How are they going to adjust? Because truth be told, despite what happened in the draft, despite how long this game went and where Onik actually pressed down on the pressure points for AP Bren to fold in this way, again, they went the distance, 22, 23 minutes. What's AP Bren to do? Again, it's not like there's anything wrong clearly with their approach. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of the few situations whereby somebody has to take a back seat. And in this particular game, they have very similar win cons. Take away the trigger finger, make sure that you burst down your targets, and you've got to win, right? But I think specifically for Few, when he's going up against someone like Gilak Sans, he has to go toe to toe now. He knows that Gilak Sans has too much of a pull. Maybe there's somebody else that they could target. Maybe they could be looking into CW's side, right? Or if that's too much to ask for, maybe Good Guy Boots needs to get put down a peg. If you beat down on Good Guy Boots, it's gotta be more than just beating the lane up. That's exactly mm -hmm. what happened in game one. If game one was any indication that by attacking Boots, you get some payoff, then that's just half of the solution, half of the way towards a winning strategy. Mm -hmm. If that's what AP Bren does once more in game number three, then there has to be a follow-up because Coach Eb and Coach Addy, they're always a step ahead. Yep, it's spilling influence. It's converging down into the jungle. That's how it always happens. Start from the EXP, melt it down into the jungle until the mid lane gets affected too. With that said, we'll throw it over to Marakino. She's with the crowd here in Rizal Memorial Coliseum. Let's see what they're up to. You're watching the M5 Grand Finals. It is one all for AP Brand and Onik. Now I want to hear, where are the AP Brand fans? Let me hear it from Onik. Okay. I think the Onyx fans in here need a little bit of help. So how about we call Clara all the way from Indonesia. Clara, how are you? Hi Mara, I miss you so much. I miss you so much. We are so excited here to meet you in Philippines. Mabuhay! Mabuhay Clara, it's one all right now. 
now. Tied game. Are you guys nervous? Are you nervous right of now? Of course, we're nervous, but we are so happy to see Onik play. And they're so energetic, and we trust Onik with all of our heart. Okay, I want to see the energy there in Indonesia. How about you show us around? Cheers, cheers. Mara kepengen lihat, guys. Semangat dari kita, kita tunjukin ya. And it's only not not a half. It's so little here. We are still have there, and in this side, we have some new time because they win the battle this early evening. We want to show you and the word, guys. So let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's go. Oh, oh. Semuanya. Love it. Okay, okay. I love it. You know what? It's Clara so here with energy. I love the energy there. So I'm gonna need backup. Bees, where are you at, Bees? Come on over. Come here, come here. I need a little bit of help. I'm gonna need your help here. Indonesia is showing us their energy. So we need to show them how we do it here for AP Brand in the Philippines. You go, you go first. Okay, okay. All right. Filipinas, when I say AP, you say brand. AP, yeah. AP. Yeah. When I say AP, you say brand. AP, yeah. AP, yeah. AP brand. AP brand louder. AP brand stronger. AP brand fiercer. AP brand. Let's go. AP brand. AP brand. Okay, Clara, what do you guys have? Oh my God, I'm a mess with Filipinos crowd, but we got more. We got more. We have more. Kita punya satu special. Tadi ini baru, ini baru, ini baru. Siapa ni? Ini boleh, boleh, boleh. Let's go, let's go. Kalau saya bilang siapa yang juara? Ini semuanya paham? Siapa yang juara? Champion. Siapa yang juara? Siapa yang juara? Onik yang juara. We got there the energy again that we want the crowd and the champion Mara. It's so lovely to have you here. You know what? How about everybody in this stadium? When I say go, you all say Onik. Go Onik. Go. How about for AP Bren? When I say AP, you say Bren. AP. Bren. AP. Bren. Clara, this is one intense fight. One all. It is tied. This is anybody's ball game. So how about we go back to game number three? We're gonna head it back to our casters. Bye, Clara. Casters, pass off. What do you what do you mean? What do you listen to you? What do you mean listen to you? What do you mean, what do you mean listen to you, man? So will be no, 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 no. One one, one one. We just won game number two, man. No, no, one one, one one. Come on. LaFell, say something, man. I'm a Malaysian. I can't relate. Okay. That's fair. I want to cheer too. That's fair, that's fair, you know. Okay, you know what? Let's stop for his sake, right? Yeah. If, if, only, least, if, least, if only next year you have Malaysia. Dude, if, if only the camera was on us, yeah. they could have seen something cool. But either way, it's going into game number three, man. This game we start off like this is a boxing match, man. Yeah. One takes a punch and then someone else dishes it back. At this point, I'm impressed that the players have room to breathe. For sure, man. They've been beaten to a pulp, both of them right now, from two games of yep. complete team fights, crazy mechanical duels, and now we get to see even more. We've only seen the start of it. Remember, 
two games out of seven. Yeah. Yeah, and here's the thing, man. Speaking of a one-two punch, you guys can get TikTok drops. Watch for three minutes, and you can win one TikTok viewer chess. Watch for five minutes or more, and you can win TikTok deluxe chess. Play, watch for like what two more hours, and you can play like Sans. Just watch it until the end, right? Then you can play like Gila Sans or mm -hmm. Gila Kyle TZ, because he was kind of Gila in game one, bro. Yeah, there's so many Gila moments. Okay, okay what is crazy, crazy in Tagalog? Baliu. 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 Baliu Fiu. Baliu Fiu. Baliu Fiu. That might be it. It doesn't work that way, but yeah, sure. Oh, come on. <laughs> See this? Guy who made the joke, guy who said it first. Yeah. Something like that, right? Yeah. It I, cut out before. I could read it. I'm amazed that even without your glasses, you can still see. Yeah, man. Shout out to Mirko. He broke his glasses, but he's still yeah. moving in strong. Yeah. Somebody with the Grand extra Final glasses caster. can... Uh, I feel like I cast better without the glasses now. Hey, you know what? You're better great. than great. You're better than great. You're exactly, than great. exactly. <laughs> Going into this game, we saw the difficulties coming in from both teams. CW on that quad. Mm -hmm. Does it have to be respected with the band? Oh, and we oh. see Cheryl Yao here okay. going for Onik. So SG okay. is with Onik. Is that right? How is that? Wait, okay. wait, wait. What this is this? guy is like, Onyx next on to me left. is Onik, and AB next to me is AB Brand. He's neutral. Are you Malaysian? <laughs> Are you Malaysian, <laughs> sir? I, mean, I don't think he is. Uh, Either way, going back to the topic. Should the Claude be respected in terms of the bands? The Claude should not be respected when it comes to the bands, but should be respected when it comes to the answer to the late game, for example. Bruno, surely, a great hero in the late game, but maybe they should match that. Uh, th they should have a hero that can destroy the uh, CW in the late game. With that being said, we're jumping into the drafting phase for game number three, where both teams, they can take a punch but more importantly, they can dish out the punch. We're looking at here, looking like both teams have already banned quite a few heroes here. And we're just waiting on the first pick. Looks like AB Brand will be the first pick we and Onyx will be second pick. Banning out the Kaja, the Joy, and 1-1 one, one for Onyx. Banning out the Matilda, Nolan, as well as Guinevere. First pick, Frederick for AB Brand. Mm -hmm. Onyx follows up Your with the Theramis <laughs> as well as the Bruno. <laughs> Ooh, great to choices here, but is to we've seen the from the two games yeah. right now, Yep. Blue side, 100% win rate, right? Yep. And I think uh, Valen and Claude could be good for, for AP Brand. Claude, obviously great against the Faramis, great against the Bruno. Valentina can be able to copy that Faramis. The only next option might be Lilia. So I'm thinking Lilia or Valen with the Claude here for AP Brand. Yeah, because I kind of feel like if you don't take those options, it is going to be banned out for you. Let's right. go seven games. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, we do want seven games. Let's go! Let's go seven games. We also have a picture of Alien there mm -hmm. from Fireflux. Shout out to Alien if he's watching this. That's right. And again, looking at this, I agree 100% mm -hmm. with you, Wolf. Yep. But looks like they're going for a different angle Ooh. here. They're picking totally up the Brody different. as well as the Arlip. But we can see when it comes to the fights, they yep. can fight a lot of CC here. Yep. And that, that's a combo. That Frederick and Arlip, that's a combo because you have supplementary sup, uh, stuns that can allow the, the, the Arlet to have so much dashes, unlimited dashes, unlimited uh, ways to sustain himself. <laughs> Mercury crowd is real. Yep. I mean, you said a 4-0. And it's not 4-0. So right. that part of the curse is real already. Okay. Okay. All right. So again, going back into the draft here, mm -hmm. I like what you said, Wolf. Yep. The, a lot of vengeance coming in from yep. this Arlet because of all the CCs coming in from AB Brand. Most wanted. Nolan is the most contested what? hero. Banner yeah. pick 143 times in 145 games. 99%. Ban and pick rate, and now the Onyx, they're going with Nakai, batting out the Novaria as well. Now my question is, is this the most, uh, like, contested pick of all time, or was the Fredrin even Ooh. more contested at M4? I don't know, but either way, for M5, it's not a Nolan, it's a Yeslin. Yeslin. Well, technically mm. Nolan, because we don't get to see him a lot. Okay, you know what? Never mind. Yeah. yeah. Neverland. Ne well, we do get to see him, so it's not never. Never say never, man. All right, Wolf, take over. Your team yep. is bad. Nolan, uh, obviously, Nolan is one of the strongest heroes, but so is the, the Novario in the hands of AP Brand. I think their few is very comfortable with this hero, despite, you know, ha having to face the fair miss. The thing with Novario is it's a threat when you don't have the dive. So Onik banning out this Novario kind of tells me they will not go for any kind of dive kind of composition, maybe on the XP lane. But overall, they will close this out with a with a front-to-back composition, maybe secure the Minotaur, maybe secure the, the, the Tigreal as their front layers, or me, maybe even a Ruby, again, for Keyboy. Yeah, honestly, having that Novaria with the Fredrin as well is going to be very difficult for you to fight around the Turtle here. Yep. 
With Onik, it looks like having the Akai is going to protect the back lines here. So yep. perhaps they're fleeing again for CW. So yep. Onik going into this match, going up against AB Brand, they're really putting a lot of pressure on CW's yep. shoulder, uh, well, shoulders. What's interesting is the fact that they are ignoring the Valentina completely. It yes, feels sir. like yeah. they want the Valentina. We yep. will overload you with more ultimates already at Akai yeah. and Aferamis. Which is crazy because you have uh, you have so many good ultimates to copy and they're j just yeah. forcing the Valentina out. Meaning to say that they uh, they they, I mean, they know that, a that the AP brand will not have a good time with that Valentina. We got to have this conversation as well. Yeah. Going up against the Bruno, I kind of feel like the distance Valentina goes in is going to be a little bit easier right. for Bruno to deal out the damage yes. compared yeah. to the Novari as well as the Lilia. So I think this is solidifying yeah. uh, Wolf's uh, theory about how mm -hmm. the draft, they're not going to go for dive. Yeah, they're not going to go for dive. So Minotaur should be the ban here for AP Brand. I want to give that. Even when uh, you have access to Valentina, that's a zero that will make Onik Whoa. really comfortable. Whoa, what? what was that? Wait. Let me just see here. I'm not seeing a ban. So Seems like there's no ban. No ban? For AP Brin? Is that a mistake? It has to be, right? It has to be. We're talking about Nolan, not Noban. Whoa. I mean, I don't know how we're... Okay, they're uh, solving it. They're solving it for sure. Yeah, for now, again, we're just uh, looking into the situation. And when I say looking into the situation, we're turning around and we're looking at the players. No. I don't know. I don't see a lot of reaction coming in. No. Right? No. Okay, but, but okay, we, can, we can see here that they are discussing. So... Yeah. I feel like Ani, they're just waiting to see what is going to be the result. If not, we're just going to continue to, to pick up bands like, like normal. Oh, it's okay. all getting picked up. There is a bit of dive. If this draft goes through. Yeah. How do you recover now if you're AP brand? I mean, obviously, the min we were mind talking games. about Minotaur, but could be mind games. Could be, right? AP, AP brand still has the Valentina, but uh, maybe they consider Angela now, the heroes that they have. And then... How about Diggy actually for AP Brand? Diggy Lapula or Ooh. Diggy and uh, perhaps Valen. You know? That's a good choice. Mm -hmm. Diggy, Valentina, you steal one of the ultimates and then the other one is used to just yep. force the team. Spicy. Yep. Okay. Very spicy. I'm not against it. I'm really not against it, especially yep. going up against uh, Onik here where you want to contest the neutral yep. objectives. Having a lot of damage before the fight starts is going to help out, especially because yep. they ban out the Novaria. Probably There's because of no that reason. Gord. Gord. Oh. And the Lapu. Hey, the panelists talked about it. Hey, oh. listen, 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 right? Okay. So we got word that, okay, we're going through with this, but we got to talk about this Gord because even the panelists has talked about this is the new age of an Eve, new yeah. age of a Farsa. So it's all about zone control. Gord is great versus Fire Mist overall. But against Yuzong, but against Yuzong, no, against Akai. Yuzong oh. round. Oh man, that's a, uh, that's a, you know, that's a weird pick. But of course, AP Brand, they might be able to make it work. Which means Onik can just go for something like Ruby to defend themselves, right? Someone who can tank the damage of the Gord, the front lines. They still have the Minotaur as well. Uh, they have so many heroes for Key, but even the choke could work in this particular scenario. Definitely, against a Brody, right? Yeah. I mean, that's usually the green light to go for a big pick. Yep. And hey, you there called you it, Mr. Yeah. Wolf. The Cho comes in. Ooh. But yeah, to confirm to everybody who's still wondering, no ban, that is indeed what you see. No ban coming in from Mind AP games. Bren. Mind games. Mind games. AP mm -hmm. Bren wants to give a statement. Yep. Against Ani, we just need four. And here's the thing. Is but if they not, lose, is right? It not, but is it not impressive if they win, though? It would be. If they win, though. If they win, it would if be impressive. Win. Amazing. But yeah. then I got to ask, if they lose with four bands, that mistake could be like a oh, man. bit costly. Oh, obviously. I mean, you're going to be uh, scratching your head so much. And you're going to be filled with regret afterwards. Well, with this just tells us that uh, AP Brand just needs to win. Yeah. <laughs> While we're jumping into this game, hit Scratcher or not, we got to see. With AP Brand coming in with the mind games, is it enough to shake the Sky King Sonic? Or will they will the continue to show the that they are Smash untouchable? Them. We're going into game number three. All troops deployed. It's scary. I'm actually scared for the Gord in the Welcome early stages, just mainly because of the Yuzhong, the Akai, and then you have the supplement of this show. And even then, we were talking about no dive from the side of uh, Onik, but then if you realize after the Yuzhong as well as the Joe pick, with the Faramis intact, that means that they have the green light. They have the license to get into the back lines now. The first three picks coming out from uh, Onik might not be dive heroes, but with the Faramis in combination with the Cho as well as the Yuzhong, that's going to be scary. I'm legit scared for this oh. board. 
Oh, Flicker very aggressively in the start of the game. Super Mario taken low, but look at the decision to not Flicker back. He decides to walk away, but he will pay with us a lot of HP. Mm -hmm. Now we got to see how CW manages the lane because it looks like Super Marco, even though he was chunked up quite a bit, he is going to be able to last hit that gold minion there. So good effort coming in from Onik, but Super Marco sticks to his guns, yeah. staying in the lane. Good at the other lanes. It's Lapu Lapu versus the Yuzhong. I believe that Flap Easy will have a great time this game. I think that overall, this was uh, probably the best pick here for AP Brand. Great versus the Faramis. Obviously great against CW, and CW did not go for the Purify, went for the Flicker. So that's uh, going to be a target for sure for Flap TZ. And right now looking at the battle here, Sans started to battle off, being very proactive around the map, trying to target Super Marco here. So the question is, for Onik, as well as AB Brand, which is the lane that's going to be targeted? Are they actually going to put a lot of pressure on the gold lane, or are they going to put a lot of pressure, as we see right now, perhaps in the EXP lane? Yeah, the EXP lane for sure, because they need to make... Um, they need to team fight around the turtle. All Very right. important for AP Brand as well as Onik to get this first turtle. All right, the turtle is going to be the name of the game, and we got to look at the, 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 the boots coming in. If he gets level four, as well as Flap Tizzy, both can dive, and both can dive very, very hard, but Kyle Tizzy goes in on his hands. No flicker on Sans, you got to remember it. They go all in for AP Bren. They find first blood by catching Sans off guard. Meanwhile, Kyrie. Holding onto the turtle. Cal Tizi still has that red tree. Keyboard's looking for the flank. Few gonna be spotted out. Heavy spin still ready for Kyrie. Dumps in. Oh! What? It's Flap Tizi who gets the steal on the turtle. Now, Furious dive defensively by Boots. Ogwen following through. Cal Tizi doing the same thing. Keyboy. G Kundo's in front. Boots gonna be chunked down by Ogwen. Boots running away still. Ogwen still chasing. Ooh. A big vengeance. Ooh. And the reset. final slash resetting. Bravest fighter by Flap. No flicker committed, no flicker to be used. Onyx still hovering over the orange buff right now. Stop TZ, looks for the steal. Jumps in, Sans doing some damage back. Raven Spider, the third spot gonna be used up right now. Mr. the gush. No flicker used, flap. He didn't just steal the turtle, he stole the orange buff too. Allow me to say, Onyx needs to breathe because I don't think oh. I would ever say this, but. Oh. 1v1, an outplay from Sans pops the Nether Realm clutch. Massive play coming out from Sans, but my oh my AP Bren with Ogwen as well as Flap Teasy. Early game, aggression coming out from them, and Kyrie was holding onto the retribution because it was cooling down. It was he was two seconds away from the retribution to be off cooldown. But then Flap Teasy steals that orange. Dual hero here, statistic, statistic as well. 70% win rate for Bruno and Fermis whenever they're paired up together. I was about to say. I kind of feel like Boots made a mistake because he was going down and he was going to... Oh, but before that, CW gets engaged on. Good stun over, Flicker. Backwards from CW. Keyboy with the way to the Dragon defensively now. As that's the Mystic Projectile, not connecting. Keyboy has got some stacks on to him, but Super Marco won't decide to pop that Torn of our memory. Cal Tizzi will decide to invade the enemy jungle. Two levels ahead. Who gets it? Was that Kyle? Dude, at this that point... At this point, Whoa. even though Kyrie was able to scurry, but again, the difference there. Two levels. That's Look a that. big impact, Wolf. Absolutely. And this is going to be a big problem for Onik, especially because they're facing up against Brody Lapu Lapu. We're talking about the problems for few, but now you can disregard that totally because AP Bread, they've created four problems for Onik to solve. And few is not a priority at all for Onik. At this point, AP Bread, they can pick up the tempo because for Lapu Lapu, level four is all you need. And now with all the advantages coming in from Super Marco, I feel like. He's just moments away from his second item, and then once he gets his second item, he's moving with the team. Okay, but Flap Tizzy yeah. on the other side gets picked off. Super Marco tried to go for Boots there, but Kyle will be able to trade it back for a neutral objective. He knows the info. Kyrie has used his red tree, and he goes straight for the purple buff. Keyboy, Ji Kundo not connecting. Ogwen connecting on his first skill. Now Onyx will lose out on the purple buff. Kyle Tizzy steals it away, invades Onyx jungle. Right now, I think it's a little bit rough for Kyrie, but I think it's fine for him, especially as an Akai. But right now, the space given to CW having one kill, but I kind of feel, I kind of feel like they're still targeting him here. The turret eater, Super Marco Keyboy finds a Jikundo way the dragon, but it's only on to the offside. Super Marco flickers back to safety, and now Kyle's locking Keyboy down. Another realm HP dealt with by the appraiser's wrath. The taunt connects, and Keyboy will lose his life. Whoa, Ogwen takes it away. Vengeance. At this point, again, if he ran, it gets beat up. Flap was caught. He still wants to fight, and he does fight. Getting onto the back, CW forced a slight tackle defensively. AP Brand a bottom of time. 
for the rest of the members to come through in the mid lane. And even with that play, that's uh, gonna be net positive for AP Brand, forcing out the heavy spin. And Sans cannot do anything at this point but to wait for their moments. CalTC with the Blade Armor pickup. This is gonna be massive. 3.4k compared to Kyrie. It's only secured 2.5 thousand gold. And even the XP is gonna be bad. This is gonna be a snowball. And AP Bren, especially their jungle, this is what they need and this Ooh. is what they get. Oh man. A flanking maneuver on the oh. CW. A brave a spider from Fapteezy. No tonic, open, gonna be kicked back to the turret range right now with the help of the Shadow Stampede. Bringing it back all the way for your side. Mystic Gush from Phil melts them down. Keyboy falls, but Boots gets a double onto Flap Teasy now. Sans looking for another opening in the skirmish. Super Marco with an aggressive dash forward. Kyrie looking to go for this orange up right now. And Abrazer's Wrath secures the orange buff away from Kyrie. Two levels ahead, and they're looking to go for the purple buff next. Dude, right now, I'm worried Super Marco just got that Malefic Roar. This is what all he wants. This is what all he needs. At this point, AP Brand can say, you know what, I'm not looking at minions, man. I'm looking at heroes. He used the red tree, though. Kyle TZ, because he knows there's no he way know. Onik can contest. He knows. It because, that's because Kyrie is half HP. No matter what happens, they will be able to win the turtle fight. And even in Onik wins the red tree battle afterwards, it's not going to matter. They're going to be t taken out. AP Brand's snowball is just online. Dude, look at that cheer, man. Kyle Teezy secures the turtle. At this point, AP Brand, huge power spike. Absolutely huge. Because not just Super Marco securing that Malefic Roar, but few as well getting that Ice Queen 1. And now Keyboy has to get away. For Onik, what are they waiting for? Well, what Ooh. is going to be the power spike for Onik that gives them the green light to fight back? Maybe when they have level 50 on Kyrie, maybe if they have level 50 on CW. That should be the only option. And when will that happen ever? 16 minutes, 18 minutes. They have to buy the time. They have nine minutes to Ooh. buy everyone. And Onik definitely not in good shape to fight now. Yeah, no. Looking at the items as well, a one item lead for the mid laner for AB Brent. Yeah, to 1,000 gold lead between the mid laners. That's something we don't get to see a lot from, but few on this board so far, absolutely lethal. Ogwen. Trying to chunk Keyboy down. Meanwhile, the rest of the team trying to look for a dive. Yeah, right now, Onik, they're in turtle position. This is Onik being defensive. This is Onik understanding the game. They can't take unnecessary damage. They can't take unnecessary risk. So try to beat as much gold as you can. But looking at how Ibibren is playing, Kyrie is going to be a little bit starved. So he's going to get that level 15 much, much later. Three levels down. Keyboy now going to be engaged on on his signature Cho. Final slash canceled away. Shunt boom. Getting out, but not from the taunt and the mystic gush. Even the netherrealm comes in late. Super Marco turn up our memory. Boots gets out in time. Ogwen diving in. Petrify locking him down. Sans pulls Kyle. Ogwen flickers out of the stampede. Up top, a turret traded in. CW finds it, but Flap Teasy might be looking. No. He falls back. The good thing about that is AP Brain were able to force out some of the Battle spells, the Petrify coming up from Boots as well as Sans's Flicker. They did have to spend some of their Flickers, but the fact that they have forced Onik to remove all of their resources means that they can take the Lord fight so easily. 12 to 9. That's the difference between Kalteezy and Kyrie. All right now, looking at the formation here, Lord Dance initiated by AP Brand, doing quite a lot of damage to Lord. Onik, they're spread out. AP Brand, they're clumped up together. Ogwen sees Boots. Conceal, Conceal coming down, the Red Tree will be won by Kyle, TZ, and now they're looking to collapse, they're looking to punish any maneuver. Kyle TZ locking Keyboy down, Kyrie walking on the other side of the map, and Onik will be able to disengage the Lord given over to AP Brett. Sans now having the Lightning Truncheon is going to help him out when he wants to defend the base, but is it enough, Wolf? Yeah, it's not going to be enough for now, for sure. I think that the best scenario you know, for Onik is if they don't lose any of their inhibitors. It's oh. gonna be a tall order. One Kyle. stab, Kyle takes it. Dude, damage dealt. Is oh. this for real? It is Ogwen for real. doing the most. Ogwen doing the most, few second place. Yep. But the damage from Sans looks like it is gonna be enough. Yep. So I kind of feel like I agree with Wolf, just lightning truncheon. Can't do it just yet, yep. but Keyboy goes in. That's a lockdown, but a Mystic Gush connects to the back line. Flap TZ will fall before Onyx frontline does. Now it's a lockdown. Oh, Sans gets wiped. AP Brand blitzed him down, bursted him out. And now AP Brand 
7,000 gold lead. Moving forward, they're looking at the hitter. Holy defense used. Oh! So, again, back to back! A quick stab from Paltese! And Onik has lost again on one member. The laser not quite in range. Onik still able to defend from the first lord of the game. Mystic projectile, side stun. tackle for CW, but it's not going to be enough to get him out of range. Even with a splash from the turret, Onik lose a base turret with the first lord of AP Bren. And now, Black Dragon Forum used by Boots. Oh, that damage go! memory, oh my goodness gracious. Boots was almost melted down. Whew. Two base turrets. Let me just say, AP Bren, their mind games is working. Yep. It's working. It's working. And the thing is, losing Sans twice in a row, I mean, losing him once, that's a fight because they were able to get the kill out of Lap TC, but losing him the second time meant that they will not be able to defend two of their turrets. Uh oh. That's a oh, poke no. down on the Kyrie right now. Another round, not. Oh, it's going to be in time. Keyboy finds a good one in the Dragon, but it's not going to be able to survive in this onslaught of damage. Boots finds a Petrify with no nature. But still, Sparkle falls. The Ghost Burster is able to take him down. CW dealing some damage, but AP Brand decide to disengage. Two for one in favor still of AP Brent. Look at the items, Wolf. What else does Onik need? <laughs> Another defense item for Kyrie for sure, because you see that when he turns up into the fight, even when he's not dying, he's put so low that the heavy spin is not going to be utilized properly. So he needs a second item for sure. We have Sky Garden Helmet eventually for him to be able to tank up. And then eventually a Radiant Armor. They definitely need Radiant Armor here from Onik. Somebody has to take it. Otherwise, Few will just destroy them. SCW looking like he wants a Demon Hunter Sword as well to be able to deal enough damage because Kyle Teasy has been soaking up so much damage coming in from CW. Right now, Onik, they're at the back foot. But again, they've been in this situation time and time again. So I kind of feel like every brand, they can't they can't fall asleep here. They got to make sure to tighten the gameplay and make sure they don't make a mistake coming in. Stampede from Sans. A resource used up. Kyrie poked down by Ogwen and also by Few. Kyle holding the Lord, pinned down. Final Slash used up already. Sans, Shadow Stampede once again. Mystic Projectile connecting, chunking Sans for a bit. Onyx are still hovering over. Watch out, Marco. Yep, right now. Keyboy used the conceal, but immediately found out. I don't know how Keyboy can go in, man. He has to make some kind of miracle play. Sans, even he can't find any angles. Yeah, the flicker. On it looks like they have to disengage. They have to. There's no way they can contest an AP Bren. Capitalize a free lord in the 13th minute. Right now, Onik, they have to defend. At this point, too much damage, man, being dealt out by this Gord. They got the Yuzong, but the Yuzong can't even go in. He flies, and immediately AP Bread strikes and force him down to the ground. Radiant. Boots can't do much here. Radiant Armor picked up by Kairi Keyboy. He has his flicker back. Sans is the most important hero for now, for Onik. And he might be Final Slash. That's going to be a problem for the of Onik. Oh, we're looking for an angle right now. Mystic Gush on the Kyrie. Heavy spin with another realm right now. The Lord's going to be dealt with right now as Keyboy jumps into the back, not able to find an angle. Stunned up, Tain CC. Keyboy taking out. Sans with Flicker. Shadow Stampede. Appraiser Splat connecting on CW. But he's still going to be able to dish out some damage. Flap Teasy with the Braver Spider. On the back with the Flicker as well. Poot finds a better fight on the Cal Teasy. Final Slash bringing it back, but he finds the kill. He dies instead. CW. Four minute waves right now. One more minute wave coming down. Sans taken out by Super Marco. It's CW for the world. A slight tackle back. But what is the member supposed to do? Will AP Bren just lock on to the turrets? AP Bren strikes back. Even though only won the previous game, but they're like, we're in this. The score now, ladies and gentlemen, two to one for AP Bren. And who needs the fifth ban, right? Especially when you drafted this Lapu Lapu together with the Gord. And we kind of criticized at the first try with the Gord, but the Lapu Lapu made so much sense. In combination with this art, the tempo that AP Brent played in, Onik just can't breathe. I gotta say, man, this mind games is crucial for this best of seven. With that being said, here's the thing. A lot of things happen in this game. We got to throw it over to Leo as well as Gideon.
Darn right, LaFell. A lot of things that need to be broken down here at the panelist area. So far, so good. But the real question that I think everybody, it's on everybody's mind. Coach Ducky, Coach Ren, was that a mistake or was it all part of a big grand plan? Given how amazing AP Bren controlled the early, late to mid, I can't even say if the mid or the late happened where it did because of how well they forced the advantage. They bulldozed through Onik, choked out all of their resources, and made it seem like they got all the heroes they wanted anyways and put Onik where they needed to be to go two to one already, oh. this deep into the series. Like truly, it's interesting to see. Did it come to a point where everything fell according to plan? So much so that they didn't even need that final ban at the end of the day, or, was it really just nicely done? The team played perfectly well. Let's not forget the fact that they could stack their CC almost immaculately. But I think we have to talk about our MVP here, brought to you by the Republic of Gamers. Give it up for your boy, Few, leading the team, but playing hard to get. The way Few played this Gord, one could not believe that he even went deathless, all right? There's a Yu Zhong on the other side. There is an Akai on the other side. All heroes meant to find and displace few, but still he went 4, 0, and 5. Hell, homie's not even rocking Wilderness Blessing. He's not, he's not. He's being greedy with it. Just the quick agility. He even takes Mystery Shop on top of it all. I don't know. He gets away with too much, and I think, you know, a lot of these older picks as we jump into the highlights is going to make a lot more sense here, right? Early stages of the game, you have to admit that Ogwin was doing a great job, not only disrupting recalls, but better yet, slowing down Kyrie in his own jungle. Not just, you also have Kyle Tease, who is constantly pushing the advantage. He knows that if I can take everything away from Kyrie, his heavy spins are almost always constantly going to be defensive. And if that's one out of the equation, the Yu Zhong isn't even really a problem. Exactly. Now, the best part about the composition is that you have a lot of these enablers with strong CC, but you can't cash it out without the right damage. And that's where Few comes in, right? Great communication between Ogwen and Few. Great communication between Kyle TZ and Few. And I would even make an argument that even Flap was being part of that equation. That's right, constantly threatening with the bravest fighter. And that just left Super Marco with what we would like to call in the business a gold lane experience. What a performance by few. What a performance by the MVP. And Gideon, come here, let me uh, tell you a little something, all right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Few is yeah. a two time, two time SEA Games gold medalist. He's two time SEA Games gold medalist, no way. I mean, that's not even all. He was part of the original roster when they crushed it at the World Championships at M2. With that said, let's go ahead and check out the emblem loadout here. So far, we pinpointed the fact that it was a little greedy. Check it out. Oh, yeah. Not even a single wilderness blessing from AP Brand, save for Ogwin. Right? Ogwin needs to be where he needs to be, mm -hmm. and he needs to save up his kit for when he's going to compromise Onik with those final slashes, which he did, like, say, almost on the dot whenever it came off of cooldown. Yeah, no, I think what's really interesting overall, right, when we're looking at the emblems, even the item builds start to get just a little bit greedier. Let's hop onto it right now, because as we can see, clearly Kyrie is so under it, under farmed, right? Can't do much about it. But then we jump over to people like Owen, people like Super Marco, people like especially when it comes down to few. He needs to be greedy, right? He's looking for the Ice Queen's Wand to slow down his opponents, but more importantly, making sure that he quickly gets that Lightning Truncheon so that he can maintain his speed at all times. Looking at Onik in their early to mid transition, it was clear that Sans was still playing Gila. He was still trying to displace the cores of AP Bren, and the fact that he can only really find Super Marco made Fuse transition into an MVP core winning performance all the more easy because look, even the purples got compromised. Even Few was taking a little bit away from Kyrie, and that's what allowed for them to barrel on forward. Because even if, if say, if Onik could find a solid heavy spin, mm -hmm. that could have been the saving grace. That could have allowed for the little bit of damage from Onik to come through and punish, but that never happened. But that was only one part of the equation, right? When you've neutered Kyrie, now, then all your focus is on our sandbag here, Mr. Keyboy. 
Every single time he tries to go in for that big dive on towards Fuse's side, he gets punished each and every time. There's just too many layers that he has to get through just to get on top of Fuse, whether it be the final slash, whether it be the energy eruption, or even the bravest fighter who is starting to give him issues. Yep, looking at the damage dealt again, Sans a hair ahead of CW, who had a decent amount of farm. Truth be told, a lot of the firepower from AP Bren was being laid on to Onyx Peel, onto Onyx front line. Mm -hmm. And that said, it's just the matter of what you got and how you use it. Oni can't use it effectively. They have solid damage, they have solid output. It's just, it, could, it wasn't allowed to effectively excel. Mm -hmm. Unironically even, I feel like even when you're locked into farm, as you're trying to play a team fight composition designed around just finding the right team fight around neutral objectives specifically, that might have been the big punishing moment, right? Because you don't have those small skirmishes, you don't have those messy fights, you don't have those enablers anymore. You must move as five, and you cannot divide and conquer. With that said, Onik now down to their, I'd say, few left straws. Uh, there's a lot left in the tank for Coach Yeb and Coach Addy. So with that said, I hope they're ready to regroup and reset because there's a lot left in this series. Let's throw over to Odin. She's outside. Let's see what's happening at the M5 Stadium. Hi guys, this is your very own Odin. Magandang gabi, and we're outside Rizal Memorial Coliseum. And happening right now is a watch party. You can watch Under the Stars with your friends. And if you are not able to secure a ticket, and if you're in Metro Manila, go over here because the night is not yet over. Experience everything for free. No, not the merch, just the experience. And let's go get some fans to interview in the watch party that's happening. Oh, there are some guys here that are having a picnic. Hi, hello. You are live. What's your name, guys? <laughs> Kate, hello. Hi, Kate. Sean, hello. Hi, I'm Aika, hello. Can I join your picnic? Yes. Oh, so how's the experience here in the watch party? It's fun. It's like a music festival slash gaming convention. Wow, it's like the first time that we're holding it here. Yeah, super saya, so punta kayo dito. Super saya is super fun. Yeah, actually, mas maganda feeling ko kasi damo ko yung Tagalog cast, so mas na-energize ako manood, lalo na Grand Finals eh. He's getting energized watching here because we are uh, watching the Filipino broadcast here in the watch party. So guys, who are you rooting for in this Grand Finals? Uh, ako basta Pil Pilipinas panalo naman eh, kahit sino manalo dyan. Pinas for the win. Whoever wins, Pinas for the win. Oh, that's not clear, huh? <laughs> How about you? I'm rooting for the ROG phone. <laughs> you want the phone? I also want that too. How about you? Go, Kyrie! Here to support Kyrie. So you guys don't have a vote in common. No, no, no. That's why you're there and they're here. <laughs> Are you guys sharing some food? Yes. While watching, they're eating because there's a food park right there. So thank you so much, guys. You got a shirt. M5 shirt. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's my birthday today. Thank you so much. This is courtesy of Kidia. So I'm giving this to you because you're rooting for the Philippines. Thank you. <laughs> so let's get another fan. Hmm. Who am I going to be with tonight? Hi. Hello. Hello. Are you alone tonight? Kasama ko po mga kaibigan ko. Oh, so you're with your friends. Where are your friends? Oh, hi friends. They're there. What's your name? Sandy. Sandy po. Sandy. What a cute name. So who are you rooting for tonight? Actually, ano po, uh, Onik. Onik, you're rooting for Onik. Why Onik? Ano po, uh, based po sa playstyle po nila. Uh, Tsaka po kay Kyrie. Oh, simply because of Kyrie. Kyrie, you're so handsome. Even boys vote for you. Yeah. 
How is the experience here in the watch party? Uh, it's good po. Uh, and... Uh, Basta po, masaya. Masaya po dito. Basta! It's fun! <laughs> so, we're gonna give you a signed shirt courtesy of Kidia! Congratulations, Sandy! Any message to Onik? Show it, show it! Uh, Onik, uh, galingan, ano, galingan po sana ng Onik. And Kairi, ganti mo po yung AP Brain. Ay, ganti mo po yung Blacklist. <laughs> okay, anyway. Kairi get a revenge for Blacklist, according to Sandy. Thank you so much, Kidia, for this very beautiful shirt. Thank you. Thank you, po. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And that is the watch party happening outside Rizal Memorial Coliseum. Experience this now. Let's go, guys. Hi, guys. You know what? Two things I want to shout out. First of all, happy birthday, Odin. And second of all, Shout out to the crowd here. <laughs> They're very responsive. Yeah. AP Bread, yay! You don't see AP Bread? Boo! <laughs> I like, no, you know, you know what I like? <laughs> I like the fact that they boo on it, and then once the camera turns to Kyrie, they're like, "Yeah, Kyrie!" It's oh man, dude, it's an experience being here at Rizal Memorial Coliseum. Oh man, I mean. For you guys that's not here, you guys are missing out. But if you don't want to miss out anything more, make sure you guys catch the TikTok drops. Watch for three minutes and you can win one TikTok viewer chess. Watch for five minutes or more, you can get TikTok Deluxe chess and you can wish Odin happy birthday. Yeah, oh, well, you can do that without doing it, but it'll yeah, be but cooler if you, you know, support her job, right? Yeah, just, just tell her like, hey, Odin, I got a TikTok Deluxe chess. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't read, I, I don't understand. Did you read? No, yeah, it means that the Philippines is still strong and M5 is here and M5 will be M5 the championship will be for the Philippines Ooh. Oh, you're translating now? I feel Wait, like you short, understand Tagalog? Yeah uh, Yeah Are you Maybe. Filipino? Yeah Are you no. Ocho Gahaba? <laughs> wait, wait, sorry, 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 that's not related. We tried, we tried. That's not related. That's purple. Yeah. <laughs> NT, NT, NT. <laughs> you know, I... Uh, <laughs> what, what, what kind of... Can I use now? Uh, Fifth anniversary is M5. What does that mean, Wolf? Fifth anniversary in M5. Come, you uh, understand Tagalog? And English. And, and English. English. Congratulations. Santa all. That's a massive Santa all. That's do you cool. understand Indo? A bit. Wow. wow. How do you understand Indo? Have you worked with any Indonesians? No, I listened to We Own This many times. Ah. Ah. All right. Now, going back into the game here. Again, the score right now is 2-1. to one. Looking at game number two, what is... Percentages wise, Onik making this a 2 2. Very high Ooh. chance. I think um, 60%, I would say. 60%? Because what I, want, what I want this series to be is like a one, one team gets the, the first win and then the Onik you know, bounces the back. Eventually, if, you, if we stretch this to seven games, AP Bren will take it because, that's, because uh, AP uh, Bren uh, took uh, game uh, one, uh, uh. right? Yeah, okay. yeah, true. You see what I'm getting? You know what? He's been really impressive with his predictions. Yeah. You want to give him a time to like shine now in the draft? Hey, you know what? Wolf, this is your time. This is my time? This is this your time. Is wow. This is... Uh, okay, the good. world, let's watch. Maybe we'll, we'll wait for the first three bands. All right, all right. Because okay, go, go, go. I think, okay, because I think that it is important because <gasps> so far, <gasps> very early Minotaur, undone. because they want Onik, because Onik wants to take away maybe Fredrin or maybe take uh, an Assassin or Guinevere, for example. Or Claude. But, or Claude, maybe. And April Brand immediately will answer that with, the, with their Fredrin because it has been successful so far. Game one and game three were because of the Fredrin, then in combination with the Arlet. And what value do you get out from Arlet? It's a flex pick, right? right. Then Onik eventually will what? Will take probably their uh, Marchman afterwards, get the Bruno together with something like a Faramis, so that, but the Faramis was banned out anyways. Right now, we're waiting for AB Brand for their okay. final ban. Faramis Matilda, as well as the Minotaur, banned out by Onik. Mm -hmm. For AB Brand, banning out the Nolan, banning out the Joy, they're really Guinevere. considering this. Do they want to ban out the Guinevere? Or okay. do they want to open it up? Looking at the bans here. <laughs> Looks like okay. they're banning the So now, okay, what is Whoa, open? Endless time. What is open? There's the Bruno, obviously, as so well as the Arlon. Me. And then the Frederick's gonna be picked okay. up. Very nice yeah. snatch coming out from Onik. AP Brand might follow this by picking up something like uh, the Arlon that they really, really like. And then, together with that, maybe take the Bruno. So Bruno and Arlon should be the 
Response. Prime Choices are response here for AP Brin. I don't think the Valentina is a good pick anyway, so Onyx might get their hands on the Valentina, actually, their third pick, together with uh, maybe their Marksman already. If the Bruno is picked up by AP Brin, they answer with Claude or Brody, perhaps. Which kind of makes me think, what if AP Brin goes Arlet Brody Ooh, immediately? Arlet Brody, man. I mean, based on what happened just now, I don't mm -hmm. hate it. I mean, let's face it. Sans went to gank, and it wasn't enough to get a kill. Mm -hmm. Super Mario is just like, I'm fine. As long as there's minions here, guess what? I'm here. I'm Super Marco. He is super. Super Marco. Yes. And also, it's whoa. It's different. Totally Completely different. Completely <laughs> different. Super duper. AP different. Brand say on. Oh. Man. Curious. Audience cheers. Kyrie. Audience fall silence. Okay. Onyx. Understand. This guy is making memes on the go, man. Yeah. That was just literally a few minutes ago. Wow. Dude. Meme dedication. Machine. But now. Okay. The 1-1 one, one, as well as the Akai. Talk us through this pick. Oh, obviously, the, the Akai secures the fact that you can get the stacks for the <laughs> ultimate of the 1-1 one, one for the Crossbow Tang. But that top is up here. I think at least the Claude we still got you correctly. Got mm -hmm. And then the Valentina is open for Onyx. I still think it's good, right? Especially going up against this, uh, going up against this uh, Akai. Okay. Unfortunately, imagine if they had the Minotaur right now for Onyx. That would be great for yep. them. Um, Curious to see, yeah, Valentina as well as Alilia. But it's a thing, Kaja, the constant ban of AP Brand now let through. Here's the thing, I was thinking of the Kaja, the classic matchup against the 1-1. One -one. I hesitated to say anything because there's an Akai. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't the Akai be a problem for the Kaja? That is definitely 100% true. But I think that they just want to make sure that the 1-1 one -one will be locked down. And the Flicker as well as the Ultimate coming out for the Kaja, it doesn't matter whether or not they uh, they they get scrambled because of the heavy spin. They can dive in. So I'm, I'm, I think that Onik will eventually close this draft out with two dive heroes. Let me just say, it's usually the cat going after the bird, but it looks like the bird wants to go after the cat. Mm. The Angela, the puppet, well. the puppet. All right. Now with this, right, they have so much sustain. The one one already very hard to kill. The Akai, same thing. You know, you had an Angela. Even if Onik get a divine judgment, right? It's gonna be tough it's to lock be anyone down. <laughs> yep. Wow. This one one will feel like has nine lives. Yeah. Maybe five. Because it's M5. Better than great Better man. Than wow. <laughs> if Ren becomes a champion. Oh, I didn't see it. Yeah. If, We're I hoping think it, for you, man. It was too fast. I think uh, if if, if Ren becomes a champion, he will ask uh, somebody out. Oh. Uh, to be his girlfriend. Something cool. like that. You're the only Tagalog speaker here, so we're looking at you. But now we're looking at the bands. Kadita ban out, and yep. now for Ani, betting on the Paquito. I like both bands here, mm -hmm. because again, very good synergy coming in with the Kaja, and the Paquito has been yeah. proven to be a problem. If, if, if AP Brand does not get any dive heroes after this, maybe Onik might consider something going uh, really, you know, diving deep into their hero pool. Maybe a Farsa, actually, because Ooh. Farsa is traditionally a hero that you combo with the Kaja to take out the 1 1. My yeah. question to Mirko. You don't like the Fredrin EXP, right? No. I'm just throwing it out there. What no. if? What if? Hmm. Is it okay? Is it not I okay? I think I for want. this case, it's okay, right? Onik yeah. have, I think Onik are the only team to have proven that the Fredrin can be played in the XP. Yeah. But you still don't way. like it. But I still don't like it. I hate Sad the Fredrin XP. It's already such a boring work. hero in the jungle. Put in an XP, mm -hmm. and it becomes even more defensive. At least in the jungle, he moves forward. Yep. As XP, he's just like, oh man, let me... Cover from my uh, go laner. Ooh, we, oh, we got a roll. Roll, gotta roll. roll it. Roll it. Roll it. Roll it. Roll it. All right. May you have luck, my friend. The odds be in your if favor. it's a bad skin, it's a boo from the crowd. If it's a okay, good okay. skin, it's a ah, boo. 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 Oh, that's oh. another boo, man. Yeah, that's another Anything boo. that's not the aspirant skin is a boo. Right? Oh, oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. wait. Boo. 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 Oh, wait, oh, that's, that's a good, good. one. That's wait. good. That's my favorite. What is that? My, that's uh, the uh, Uranus. Yeah. Uranus. It's pretty good. Hey, overall a win. Yeah. Nah. If it's not the Aspirants or a Collector, it's not a win, man. A hey, w. hey, hey. That's an L. Hey. Yeah, but that's uh, that's Let's go Dire Dude, the by the way. Shout out to Dire Dude. the priestess yeah. of primal lightning. Edith. The hunter of okay, all so the evil gods. I'm thinking like Eve or Farsa for Onik. If they want to be... Gord? <laughs> Gord is... Gord that's is great, dude. by the way, but dude. it's kind of, you know, boring. Listen. You doubted the core earlier, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, no, I'm saying it's good actually, but it's kind of boring, you know. I don't okay. want to see Sans in that I kind of hero. I hope Valentine. Valentine. Wait, let me just recap. Go back to the Valentina. Gideon hates the Uranus. You hate the Frederick EXP, and you hate the Gord. 
No, I don't. It's just that I don't. Oh, I see sensitive difference. Wait, man's got stats. What? Okay. Man's just got the M5 U Zong figurine. Now that's a W. Wait, wait, wait. That's Who's a this? That's a flex. Look at the face. Look at the face. Look Who at the is face. Who's this man? Okay. Oh, yeah. Dude, you're a man. W man. W you? man. W. Should we give the one on the? No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 no. Ooh. Oh, there it is. Okay. 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 Fred Vinny XP. Hayabusa. The jungle. Mirko, talk Man. us through and Kyrie. AP Brand, if you don't go Hilda, you, you can actually go Hilda here. You're right. The Hilda would be quite deadly. That was the same pick that Todak went for to dismantle Onik at M4. Group stage. Group and, stage. Especially like Edith versus the Frederick, that's a, that's a nothing lane, you know? Oh, wait. Yeah, I, I was talking about the Frederick EXP. Oh, we're okay. doing it again. All right. All right, are you make ready? Quick. Make it quick, make it quick. The stadium, are you oh, ready? This is man if it's a bad Wait, Insta Fisher Diamonds? Bro, oh. Insta Bro. Fisher Diamonds? Bro, Come you're on, a man. Bro. Man Gene, Man Gene. It's impossible. L. Bro, This, this guy's L. the richest caster in the Philippines. Uh, it's impossible he doesn't have diamonds. Master oh, thams. That's what we get finish. against the Fredrin. All right, all right, all right. Bring him back into the trap. Bring him back into the trap. Looks like my prediction about Fredrin EXP was there. Hayabusa here, 0% win rate in M5 so far. The Thamus again performing <laughs> extremely well. Everybody's just flexing. Every oh, it's not way. Tar. Come on, man. Okay, so he's the richest caster. He is the richest is. caster. <laughs> <laughs> no chance to defend yourself. No, no. All right, jumping into this game. Well, what are we predicting here? Wow. I'm thinking. I mean, I'm just happy that the Hayabusa was picked. Remember the last time that Kyrie picked up the Hayabusa M4. The highlights that were made. And I do want to, give, to go to a Game 7, so please, I think that this could be an Onyx game. Well, to everyone watching, especially those Clippers, you know, Mirko, if we see an assassin on Kyrie, it'll be Kyrie! We're Five jumping into Game number 4! As Keyboy said once, when he was told to imitate me, he said, Oh my God, Kyrie Hayabusa, and we get it now. So, <laughs> yeah. You know what? The Hayabusa Welcome is really high. But talk us through here yep. because, again, 0% win rate on M5. I cannot emphasize that enough. Yeah. I think it was used well, maybe twice. And yeah. Uh, but then again, this is Kyrie Hayabusa. Dude. So it's uh, going to be very different. The thing is, they go on, went for the uh, the Edith, which is a hero that doesn't really necessarily lock down the Hayabusa. But they do have the Akai, so I think that's good. And also, AP Bren, we cannot forget the fact that they still have 1-1 Angela, a very strong combo. So. I think that AP Brain will have the more comfortable draft heading into game number four. My only question here, going with the high, is it like a desperation coming in from Onik? Because if AP Brain wins the next one, it is going to be match point. But yeah. with that, let's look at the emblem set here. Yeah, going to be a uh, impure rage, in in fact, for Kyrie instead of the typical lethal ignition, right? Where your RG, typical RG. But yeah, you can see the. Uh, thrill as well as the uh, Season Hunter and then of course that Imperate from Kyrie. We're gonna see if he's really good at it so far. Flexing his uh, quad shadow moves. Yep, and now looking at the item builds here. Ooh, that's Again, flicker. Looks like AP Brand right now as well as Onik. I'm looking at the timings here because this is Ogwen using the Edith as a roam. We saw earlier in game number one how Platzi was so impactful and Super Marco survives mm. against Kyrie as well as CW. Now, back to the question here, yep. the timing from AP Brand. Yep. Timing what time should they strike? Um, every time they have the heavy heavy spin up. Fortunately, they have the, they have Tams, Edith, as well as this uh, uh, Akai. So I think that they don't really have the timing. But every time that the Lord, the, the Turtle fight is there, they have the heavy spin. They can uh, absolutely fight against Sonic. Basically, with the Assassin pick, though, they have to give everything away, neutral objective-wise, right? Platizzi doing a good job right now, zoning Kyrie away. The Quad Shadow going to be used up as well for Kyrie, getting full stacks. Hard guard ready. Sun steals away the Primal Wrap, but the Vengeance keeps them at bay. All for the turtle will be taken for free by Kyle Teasy. Flap taken very low. Hard guard going to come down onto Flap, giving him enough HP, enough sustain yeah. to survive and disengage. Something that I do worry about as well, because we got to talk about Flap Teasy with Vengeance here. A Claude going up against anyone with a vengeance. Yes, sir. It's not going to be looking good for the Claude. CW has to think a lot before he goes in with the Blazing Duet. Yeah. It's like um, AP Bren got the Terizla, but a much faster damage build kind of Terizla. 
I'm, I'm not saying that Thermos is better than Teresa because Teresa still is better overall. But the thing is, that's what they get. It has good lane prio because if you're going to be looking at Teresa, it's quite slow when it comes to walking from lane to lane. Because of the passive as well as the first skill of uh, Flap TZ, he's able to traverse the map from bottom to mid lane faster than a Teresa would. That's how they can keep up the pace against Onyx. So that's the general idea why Flap TZ went in for the Thams against Onyx. So AB Brand, even though they got the turtle in terms of the goal difference, not really, because the only one that has a gold advantage on AB Brand is Few, where he has a hundred, like, isn't that negligible at this point? Ooh. AB Brand, they're trying to slow down Kyrie, but I saw his farm just now. It yep, looks yep. pretty all right. Yeah, yeah, and he just stole that. Oh, well, he just recovered his own creep in the jungle with Retribution, and then straight into the bottom side. So he's actually leading despite not having the turtle. Yeah, it's going to be the, the trend now for Onik. Try to find ways to get something out of the map and do not contest for the turtle fights. Maybe if they find a good opening on keyboard, maybe they could uh, try to contest. But I think that overall, AP Brand, this is their jungle. This is their, their river, in a way. They will take care of the neutral objectives easily. Well, I kind of feel like if AP Brand, as long as they're moving with the, Looking at the map here, they are separated. So if Kyrie finds a moment where AP Brand is not moving as a unit, he can get his snowball going by catching the mistake of AP Brand. But during this turtle fight, it's going to be a little bit difficult. I am wondering if Kyrie wants to contest for this because we've seen him on his ass assassins, man. He wants to try. Flicker, everything used up on the keyboard. Taking first blood, Super Marco gets it. Kyrie in the midst right now. Quad Shadow in and he finds it. Oakwood chases him down right now. The Quad Shadow really popped in. Kyrie versus the world. AP Brent chasing him down. Kyrie. Shadow kill. Boots is here. Shots also with the Primal Wrath. Kyrie Again. going in the back with the crossbow. A tang for Super Marco and a heavy spin from Kyle TZ. Locks them all down. The turtle traded in for two. No, three with Keyboy. Four minutes in. AP Brent move as five. Yeah. That's very quick timing there. Just so happens at top lane, there was the turtle, and obviously the gold daners were there. Oh. See, for Onik, my main reservation for the Hayabusa is that if you, if you uh -oh. get the, the oh. neutral objectives, he can easily be taken out. We gotta look at Kyrie. Does he have the purple buff? No, he doesn't. Not. He doesn't. Okay. Stolen away. AB Brent uh -oh. has started this. He's just 100 gold behind. That's actually very surprising. Where is he getting the farm? Well, he got the farm and he also stole the turtle earlier. So that's technically, right. not that far. But now without the purple buff, right? Yep. That's where the problem starts. We got to talk about the Grojan Scythe as well on yeah. this Thomas. So when yep. he, whenever he tries to create space, even though he doesn't have defensive items, he can take care of himself. Yep, for sure. And it's a great rundown on the on the Frederick, for example. You can slow him down so easily. Even the Kaja might not escape your sights. And that is going to be a good for AP Brand. Oh, some good damage. Onward and the Earth Shadow. The Appraiser's Wrath deals nothing. Not even helping Boots sustain. And AP Brent find another kill on Super Marco. Looking for the Siege in the mid lane, tier one. Another Shatter down. Kyrie with the Quad Shadow and the Retry yep. to keep this turret defended. They will eventually defend. Another problem here that uh, this Hayabusa might face is, is the sustain that you can get out of AP Brent. Uh, Angela just going to be a big problem there on. That's why. Later on, they definitely need both Kyrie and CW to deal the damage because it's gonna be CW to kind of mess with the shields as well as the sustain, and it's Kyrie for the for the sweeps. Now the turtle has been started by AP Brand, CW Sans as well as Keyboy is there. Ogwen finds boots. Heavy spin used up already. Primal Wrath gonna be going as well now. Oh, oh, and you hear the no. crowd's reaction right before a big team fight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please do be patient with us. We will try to solve this technical issue as fast as possible. So now we got to talk about the possibility because I'm looking at the draft coming in from Onik. They could play with the map. They got the Hayabusa. They got the Claude. And we saw at four minutes, AP Bread was very much willing to group up together. Yeah. And so is there a possibility of, of Onik just beating the map? Yes, Th that's what they need. But at the same time, you're facing up against Thames with a Actually, his emblem, I'm uh, looking at the emblem, no speed up, but that's okay. But the Thames is naturally very speedy when it comes to like going from one lane to another. So the split push might not be that fast for the side of, uh, of Onik. It's possible, but it's manageable because of the Thames. Who gets the turtle? We're back though, it seems we're back. The players are already ready. Mm -hmm. Might still be testing, not too sure. 
Yeah, but either way, man, looking at the screen just now, you I saw a 39% win possibility for, for Onik and 61% win probability for AP Brand. We got to remind everyone here that if AP Brand wins this, it is going to be match point. That's so right. it's going to put a lot of pressure onto Onik. If they want to get that trophy, they got to work super hard for it. With that being said, we're now going to be jumping back into the game with a turtle. Who gets the turtle? It's AP Brand. Oh, what? Sonic with a win, oh, went flickering forward, Kyrie is next! Super Mako! Triple kill! On the board, 5-0 and 2! Right now, AP Brand, this is a big lead. Sans can't protect. This mid lane turn is super important, AP Brand just takes it like that! And immediately they go for the purple buff. Nullify this assassin pick again from Onik. They already had the Fredrin. But they switch it back to the EXP lane. And even without something like a Hilda or anything, there wasn't any problem. We're gonna see through the replay what happened in that fight. It's brought to us by Kadia. And you can see that Sans Marco, already stole wow. the heavy spin, but it wasn't enough. I mean, Super Marco just kited all throughout. Everything. What a play by Marco. Yeah, honestly, Marco, you're the 1 1 expert. In this position right now, when AP Brand has 3.4k gold lead, and looking at the items here, three items for Super Marco, how ahead is he actually? Oh, he's super ahead, man. The thing is, on the one one, you, may, you might take a look at the gold lead and you might say, it's just a, an, an 800 gold lead, not even a thousand. But the thing about one one is, if you reach that corrosion site and the DHS, that's already your power spike. That's why you can go for the win of nature, and now he becomes lethal. Because he can find those weakness points, take more of a risk, and still be doing maybe even more damage than CW. Yeah, and Kyle TZ took quite a lot of damage there. But again, the fact that he can take that much damage shows that Onik is not ready to fight just yet. We see Ooh. Kyrie again. I feel like even though he's under this much pressure, he can still do it. Sans doing the most damage here. Onward, catching his dash. The prediction from AP Fred from Oakland. Keyboy taking out Sans now. Looking for some sort of retaliation, but AP Bren are utilizing this chaos to go for the Lord. Onik in shambles. Yeah, but look at Kyrie, man. He's he's looking for the side lanes. Vengeance. Flapsezy just standing there menacingly. CW can't do anything. And Lord gets taken without the help of the retribution. Kyrie in the bottom lane. Look for a trade. Boots brought back to the team. Kyle TZ there. Should be able to retreat and does. Takes away another purple buff from Kyrie. And Kyrie can only get a tier two in the bottom lane to trade the Lord. And a purple buff, whoa. Yep. It's nothing that Onik is getting right now. They're trying to defend. They're trying to, to uh, just go for the clear out on the side lanes, but it will not be enough at all. AP Brand might just uh, steamroll into the top lane, especially because they have the massive objective here. Super Marco is already so farmed up. Kyle TZ is tanky enough. And even Flap TZ, you can see Flap TZ manning up against the members of Onyx, standing in front of them. Not scared at all because he does have the vengeance and he's very tanky at this point, even getting the dominance ice. For 10 minutes. Yeah, but a big power spike from Kyrie. I saw that he built the Blade of Despair, so I think it's not quite over yet for Onyx, but AP Brand wants it to be over. It's really hard now for Onik. I feel like for Super Mario, especially, right? The main idea for Onik was they want to get Super Mario assassinated, but he has the win of nature. So what comes next? Where does the damage come, Sans? Now the Lord is down bottom, but looks like EB Brand is able to secure Ooh. the tier twos. Oh, CW wants to call it easy. He has to be careful. Shadow Kill also used up some damage back to AP Bren. Onyx still trying to defend from the siege that AP Brand are still going at it full force with. Conceal coming down. BMI getting him out. A good splash of damage from the turret to try to take these minions down, but AP Brand do a lot with that minion wave. The base turret in the bottom lane is low, very low. Oh, look at this purple buff here. Kyrie wants it, but AP Brand wants to deny it. He wanted more. Mogwen needs to time it. No, he doesn't even need to. AP Brand have done it. They've taken another purple buff. For the longest time, we haven't seen any flicker Divine Judgment play from Monik. In fact, there's no play that we, no we play. saw from Monik. The, the, the last time that we saw was probably the turtle fight where Sans was able to copy the heavy spin. But that's just about it. Onik cannot find an opening for a team fight. 
and this Kaja pick, even when it's like one of the best heroes that Kiboy has ever played, it seems like he does not have an impact right now. I mean, look in the lineup here, man. When Flap TZ as well as uh, Ogwen is up in your face, there's exactly. no, it, it looks like there's no right target for you to catch because in theory, Super Marco and Few is the perfect target you want to catch. Yeah. But having Flap TZ as well as Ogwen, man-to-man -man defense on you, and even if you're able to penetrate that defense, Kyle is there, man. Yeah. He's going to nullify your engage. Heavy spin. Heavy Ooh. spin. Just one tap away from a cover. So, I don't know, man. I feel like if you ran with the draft, they've successfully nullified the advance that Keyboy has on his Kaja. But if he can prove me wrong, I'm all, I'm all for it. Oh. Keyboy up top. He's they down. spotted him. Keyboy all alone, isolated. Still with a flicker now. Kyle Teasy with a heavy spin. Locks Keyboy down. Super Marco has a monster kill, 6-0 and 3. That's a problem. And AP Bren, even though Retribution forced out, Boots might be in trouble. Is in trouble. Onward, Urshad are locking him down. The top Boots gets him out with a flicker. Fatizi chases him down. CW now pushes him damage. Vengeance! Oh. Fatizi so able to escape tanky. the shadow kill. Not able to take him down. Super Marco! Dashes forward, looking for one more. Boots zoned away. Meanwhile, Kyle, all this time, he's still on the Lord and he gets it for free. The Hive in the Rizal Memorial Coliseum. Go wild. AP Brent has been hiding this Damus pick, man. He just, like you said, stand, stands there menacingly. As long as he has the vengeance. Dude, he feels, he feels strong. He feels invincible. He can make a beeline straight to anywhere and he'll be okay. Yeah. It will take so much for Monik to be able to take down Flap TZ. DHS, uh, the, 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 tri the Trinity actually available now for CW, gets the Malefic War, much needed in this particular game, but they might not be able to utilize it because AP Brand, everybody else is tanky. Everybody else is the problem. Lord, march down, gets a good charge on. The Primal Rat's thrown away. Sans trying to deal some damage. Ogwen, Urshan are out already. No onward just yet. Onward to the back. Kyrie does a bit more damage onto him. But AP Brand will stay disciplined. They have a 7,000 gold lead. They'll look for another wave in the mid lane this time around. AP Brand still with a lot of resources. Sans coming down into the mid lane with a splash of damage. Boots standing in the front. Flap TZ looking for an engage. Cal TZ so good at damage in. Divine Judgment on the Flap TZ with no vengeance this time around. But he has it back on cooldown now. The base turret cracked open in the mid lane. Ogwin gets the immortality. Keyboy with a whip. But that's three base turrets down for Onik. And AP Brand are still, li are still lingering. That's Kyle! With a truncheon by Sans, but it's not enough! The mage, the Gila Sans, has been taken down. Now it's AP Brand, five against four. Super Marco looking for all the weakness points. Mid waves, they're gonna be cl cleared away. Two waves coming down though. AP Brand with a match point. Boots up to the blazing door from CW. A vengeance! With a truncheon by Few, still able to survive. Kyrie marching back and forth. One more minion! AP Brand! The Wild Bees, the Hive, match point. Match point for AP Brand. One more win is needed to keep the trophy in Philippines. One more win for them to be the two-time world champion. Just one more. That is what the crowd is chanting. They can feel it. The first hometown champions, it's just one win away. Dude, the storyline. No host country winning the M series. Right now, AP Brand is looking at it and be like, don't you know who we are? And now, a lot of things happen, man. We got to talk about Flap TZ. But we're going to give it over to Leo as well as Gideon. Oh man, I have to agree with you, Leo. This is one of the few moments where you just 
Let it sit in. The crowd is giving that extra bit of momentum for AP Bren. And it's understandable with the way that they are playing so far, the way that they are crushing it, not only in the lane, but also in the overall team fights, neutering Kyrie from his purple buff, and more importantly, just pushing the advantages, really abusing the weaknesses in the drafts thus far. As much as I would like to believe that Fredrin is going to be the solution to a lot of their problems, unfortunately this time around, I think that even the Hayabusa could understand he couldn't go further than this. Angela being able to protect the right targets at the right time, and more importantly, Few making sure that even Sans felt it in lane. Things have changed so much, but we have to talk about the MVP, Leo. My mic made like the Hayabusa in the jungle. It was very difficult for Kyrie to do anything. And it's because of our MVP that the tempo actually got pushed up. It's Kyle TZ coming in with the Akai. He's actually able to do more than just split up Onik in those team fights. He's actually able to choke out once more Kyrie. AP Breath performance in a game four here was a combination of what they did great so far in the first two games they won. Yeah, and again, Kyle, with one of the most important spells in the game, the heavy spin being the biggest deterrent, a nuke, some may say, for Kiboy to stop him from going in. And worse yet, even for Sans, he's got to be extremely careful because the only all he could really take was the Primal Wrath. And this is where we see Kyle really push that tempo once he got even a slight EXP lead. Didn't even notice that he was sitting at 100 KP. That's just a testament to how well Kyle Tizi used the map and understood the assignment that he has to do more than just take these objectives. He has to take him away from Kyrie and punish where he can to get that lead bigger than ever. But let's remember, at the end of the day, as much as he likes to oppress, it's about their win conditions. And that's where you see Super Marco and as well as Flap Tizi really kind of take that early game into their hands. And when you see Super Marco with three kills immediately after this cleanup play, the one opportunity that Onik had to try and even things out. Had they walked away, maybe, but Super Michael said no. Looking at the way the KDA went throughout all of AP Bren, you look, you're looking at just one core, right? You're looking at Super Marco. But the way Flap TZ and Ogwin also made use of the space that Kyle TZ bought for them, it made them all the more confident in even blocking the main arteries, the movements of Onik to try and find even that one last Hail Mary play from Keyboy where he hung out in the bush to try and get a sneaky Divine Judgment, which now explains why, even in the hands of a very talented player like Keyboy, the Kaja is a very, very low win rate. I don't know what they ate today, or better yet, what preparation that AP Brand has done. They are reading movements across the map extremely well, being able to foretell a lot of the movements, and more importantly so, it's not necessarily just about Kyrie. It's about the big playmakers. It's about Key Boy, and it's even about Boots. As soon as he's out of that lane, they find him a punish. If Key Boy is missing off the map, they find that punish. Let's check out the emblem set once more on Kyle TZ. It's this as usual. Uh, I like the touch on the Quantum Charge. As an Akai, you have a few choices. Again, the alternative would be a Concussive Blast. But here, he's just using it to always be on his targets, always be moving. And again, keeping Onik on their toes, keeping Onik honest. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, keeping Onik honest is what's making AP Bren work out so much, right? Every single time we see in the draft, take away some of the comfort here, take away some of the problems that we saw in the previous game, and there's still another solution. Unfortunately, Kyle TZ might not be the person they want to look to pinch this time around for the upcoming game, but more so to escalate things even further and get CW a winning matchup. It's not just about the Claude anymore. These Wanwans, they've got to go. Yep, looking at Onik though, it's clear that CW had an idea. CW was latching onto the fact that maybe they can hold out for the, uh, what, 18, 19 minute mark, wherein the work he was putting onto the map would pay off. As soon as he scored the Trinity, it seemed like it was going to be a fair fight, especially since clearing waves wasn't going to be a problem. But that's difficult to assume that it's going to work out, that you're even going to make it to the 18 or 19 minute mark when AP Bren are hunting you down actively. Again, it's not just Kyle Tizi, it's Flap Tizi and Ogwin actively manhunting. They're actively looking for kills and those two, actually there's a lot of damage between these two chunky heroes. Best yet, the biggest nullifier of them all. Have any Trinity build, have as much damage as you want, but as long as Vengeance is available, 
You saw CW. He loses half of his health just auto-attacking this guy. He's got to be extremely careful. It is a big deterrent. And now that's something that they have to consider moving on. I think AB Brand, they figured out and cracked the code when it comes down to EXP exploitations. And now it's up to Onik to find their own answers because unfortunately for Boots, if they keep putting on these sandbags, it's not enough, especially when he's up against Kyle, who's doing a much better job. There's a silent MVP amongst us, and that is a few. The fact that he does so well to hide himself in plain sight, to hide himself even from the map when it's so free to just clear waves as the Angela, he's able to provide for all of the highlight players for AP Bren right now. Rich guy, Super Marco, even if he gets ganked by two or three, he's fine, he's got a hard guard. Kyle Tz again, we've already talked about how he has controlled this matchup. And even Ogwin, Ogwin is so, so confident to actually even go for those Tokyo Drift onwards, really, and find targets even if they weren't so sure what were in the bushes nearby. I mean, his greatest strength is the fact that they waited for the right time, the right opportunity, right? He can't just use his onward willy-nilly. The moment he uses it, he gets run down, and he's forced to use his ultimate, and that's not what you want to do as an Edith. You're waiting for that one chance to catch a big fish, and whether it be Sans, whether it be Kyrie, doesn't matter which, as long as you catch them in the middle of that fight, it's all over. All right, here's where the oxymoron, the paradox comes in. Look at the amount of damage Super Marco dealt and look at how dominating he was and how many kills the young Stephen Marco Reketiano got in this game. Compare that to how much CW and Sans were putting on the board. That just shows how effective AP Brent's front line was, how their peel was used for more than just protecting their front line, how they used it to bulldoze on through, coming into the base. What was that? Maybe a waiver leader just taking all the inhibitors. No, that's absolutely true. We're seeing that there is do almost double the damage coming in from the side of Onik. And Flap TZ, 35,000, still being the second highest damage dealer on his team, really begs the question, how impactful is your damage? How well distributed is it across the board? Kyrie could already barely participate in these fights. so. Unfortunately for good guy Boots, he's taken the brunt of those hits. Something in me is wanting to ask. I want to know if the Fredrin has always been the plan. If putting it in the XP was always in the books or was it a mid-draft situation where, okay, we already stole it. You want to push the advantage? You want to make things spicier? Okay, go get the Hayabusa. I don't know mm -hmm. if that was the plan all along. I don't know. One of, it's one of these moments where you're starting to lose faith in your EXP laner. I think that unfortunately for Boots, he's getting shafted in these drafts. And for Kyrie, putting him on a Hayabusa in such a high stakes game, worst yet, we haven't seen Hayabusa come out as hard. It comes down to that purple buff, right? Your purple buff is so important for these assassins to get ahead. And if you don't actually have a winning lane, and in this case, it's not winning. Both sides, both EXP as well as gold. Something else to note, check it out, FlapTZ's Tams, he was also on the charts, top three minimum, mm -hmm. four damage dealt and damage taken. That explains why there is a sudden appearance of Tams in the metagame. For a fact that a hero with no CC, compare it to the heroes that usually dominate in the XP lane, like the Lapu-Lapu or the Terizla, Tams is just a damage soak and Dispenser, is, is, that, is that a term? Yeah, it's a damage yes. dispenser, right? Given the fact that you have a vengeance and you're able to just get in the back line free, willy-nilly, plus the Angela, that just makes for a puzzle that Onik has just failed to solve here in game four. Yeah, it's a difficult puzzle as well, right? I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that so far, early to mid game, AP Bren's overall gameplay seems almost pitch perfect, right? It's hard to punish, and the most you're going to get is an equalization. But so far, they haven't taken any losses on these trades, and unless Onik is able to be able to, I don't know, really double down on that early game, I, I feel like it's, it's hard to actually bounce back to play for those 20 minute games really is exhausting. One can only imagine what's going on in the dugout for Onik with Coach Yeb and Coach Addy at the helm. I'm sure they got something left in the tank. Let's throw over to Mara and Mikey. They're in the crowd. What's going on? Solid analysis as usual. And ladies and gentlemen, AP Bren 
is one win away. And with me and Mara here are two of the biggest personalities in the MLBB community. Oh, you're not? Literally and figuratively. Physi physically, lang physically, lang kami. Physically. Oh, physically. Physically. Okay. We Let's are... give a warm welcome to Eruption and Ghost Rocker. All right. We'll start with Eruption. Eruption. Yes, sir. Who do you think is going to win? Who are you rooting for? Okay. Uh, my content trivia. Okay. Yung nanalo ng M1. The, the winner of M1. Sino nanalo ng M1? Who won M1? Evos. Evos. Alam bansa. What country? Indonesia. Indonesia, okay. Okay, sino nanalo ng M2? Who won M2? Friend! Anong bansa? Philippines! Philippines? Sino nanalo ng M3? Blacklist International! Anong bansa? Philippines! Sino nanalo ng M4? Echo! Anong bansa? Philippines! Now, ito. Sino ang mananalo ng M5? Oh, well, that's good trivia. Oh, okay. Basically, he's just saying Basically. that the Philippines will <laughs> get so, M5. He, you're rooting for AB Brand. How about you, Ghost Tracker? Onik, Onik. You're rooting for Onik. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, the crowd. There's a wild reaction from the crowd. Mikey, how about let's see how they can cheer the fans. Oh, yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see you hype up the bees of AB Brand. Talk to the bees, Eruption. Alright, alam natin ha, yung gagawin natin. When I say AP, you say what? They know, okay, they know. Okay, isa pa. Ito, testing lang yun eh. Oh, okay. Parang, testing. Parang, testing. parang ito. Testing. Hip, hip! Yeah. Yan ginagawa natin sa Pilipinas eh. Okay. Hip, hip! Yeah. AP! There you go. Yeah. The oh, bees no. are alive. He's good. He's good. He's good. Ghost Wrecker, we got to make sure that the Onyx fans have the same level of energy. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, Nick. Oh, Nick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like the energy. I like the energy. Oh, Nick. Oh, Nick. Oh, Nick. Okay, you know what? Ghost Wrecker. Let's see if you're going to win this game because we want to give prizes to the fans. How about this? We have this signed shirt. This is from Kadia, And we're going to give it to two lucky fans. Wow. Okay? You're going to lead the fans. We're going to play a game. And if your team wins, separate team, they'll win this prize. How about that? Who wants to get the shirt? Oh, we'll oh, see oh. what our personalities can do. You got to help these fans out to get the window shirt. Let's pick your people. Let's pick your players. Let's oh, pick Let's pick anybody from the crowd. Anyone from the crowd? AP, AP, oh. AP, 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 Okay. I stay in the middle. Stay in the middle. The fans stay in the middle. There you go. There you go. What's your name, sir? Roger. Roger. What's your name? AP Brand! Oh! You, man, what's your name? Lars. How, what, your energy, like you, you gotta yell your name. Lars. Lars. <laughs> Lars. Lars. Who are you rooting for, Lars? Oh, Nick. <laughs> oh, oh, Nick. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Okay. Okay. To be. And to be sila. Let's see who gets to win this signed shirt from Kidia. Now, all you have to do is name as many items as you can. All right. In-game items. Uh, in-game items, Eruption versus Ghost Wrecker. So the fans, you can coach, of course, the personality. You can help right? them. Give us much. Palitan tayo, we go alternate. Right. We go alternate. First team uh -huh. who can't give us an item, an in-game item, loses. The other team within wins. Five seconds, within, within five seconds. Okay, within five seconds. Within five seconds. Are you ready? Oh, ready, pato, pato, ready. Uh, ready. Uh, rock, paper, scissors. Who goes first? Okay. okay. Oh. You, go oh, you go first. You go first. Okay, 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 okay. All right. All right. Here we go. All right. Welcome to Mobile Legends. Five seconds till the enemy reaches the battlefield. Smash them. Immortality. Twilight armor. What armor boots? Rajan armor. Malefic raw. Divine glaive. Oh. Warrior boots. Ice one. Ice one. Ice Queen one. Ice Queen one. Oh! 
Tama, Lala tama daw! Ay, screen one nga eh! Ay, screen one! Hunter strike! Brute force breastplate! Oh! Ano ko yung sa akin? Five! Windbreaker! Windbreaker? No, 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 no! no. Hindi ang siya! Wind talker! Wind talker! Oh. Eh, sa motor yun, sa motor! Sa motor, sa motor! Mali, mali, mali! <laughs> sa motor ata yun, sa motor! Sa motor! <laughs> Windbreaker is a jacket! Oh, jacket, jacket. It's a jacket! Eh, uwi na siya. Uwi na, uwi na. Ang sinabi ko, wind talker, sabi niya windbreaker. Gusto niya tumakbo. Okay na, okay na. Okay. Oh, ikaw na, ikaw na. Antikiras. Antikiras, oh. okay. Oh, Antikiras, what do you have? Five, Five four, four, three, three. Boots. three. Boots. boots. Meron, meron, boots. meron. Five, okay. four. We'll, we'll take the boots, we'll take the boots. We'll Rose take the boots. gold meteor. Rose gold Five, meteor. Five, four, three. Endless battle! Endless oh. battle! Endless battle! Watch! Oracle! Oracle! Five! Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho! Three! Call a friend! Call a friend! Two! Oh. One! Call a friend! And we have a winner! Oh, Nick! Oh, Nick! Oh, Nick! Oh, Nick! Oh, Nick! Oh, Nick! Oh, oh Nick! Congratulations! Congrats. This is yours! Oh, you know what? You know what? How about we also give him a prize? Oh, Kidia is so nice. We're gonna give it to two of the best fans in here. This is No, we're gonna give it to them. Do you want to say a message to your favorite players? Go ahead. Uh, first of all, I, was, I want to thank you to Kidia for this shirt. Yes, and thank you, Kidia. Good luck. Even I, idol ko po si Kyrie pero good luck pa rin. Oh, his idol is Kyrie. AP Bren. Wow. They switch. They switch sides. They switch sides. They switch sides. My t-shirt eh, my t-shirt ta ois na. Ais na. What do you want to say to your favorite player? Thank you Kidia for this shirt and let's go AP. Before we throw it over to the casters, we're going to do it one more time. All right, Onyx fans, go! Okay, how about the brand fans? AP! Brand! It's gonna be a tough one in here. Who's it gonna be? AP brand or Onyx? We're gonna throw it over to our casters all over the globe. Casters, Fasok! Man, I love the energy. Oh, wait, wait. Should it be the height? Man, I love the energy. Yeah. I love the energy. And I love the energy because it's both sides yeah. of the spectrum, oh, man. What about what about you, Will? Oh, you love, Nick, you love oh, the energy. Oh, <laughs> Nick. Oh, oh Nick. Nick. Oh, Nick. Oh, Nick. Oh, oh, Nick. Oh, oh, no, 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 You want to do the, the other one? What? What? what you said, oh, Nick, oh, Nick. You want to do the other one? AB, bro! No. <laughs> Not even so it. You know what? You know what? Here comes the TikTok drops, all right? Watch for three minutes, and you guys can win one TikTok viewer chest. And watch for five minutes or more, and you can win the TikTok deluxe chest. And watch way more, and maybe you will have the energy that the crowd here has today. But we got to talk about match point here. Match point. Onik wants to win this. I kind of feel like they do. But here's the thing, man. Before we talk about that, there's something I got to announce. Okay. okay. I want to tell all of you guys here, the M5 Battle Night will go live on the 30th of December and okay. last for two days. Two. With plenty of battle bonuses waiting for you, 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 you. Battle Night Skin Chest from 30th of December to the 31st of December, complete battle tasks in the game to unlock chest levels, then choose a permanent skin from the unlock levels for free, 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 free. Awesome battle bonuses, awesome battle bonuses. Play games and enjoy team star protection for three matches. You can also enjoy double star raising points, double protection points, double EXP and double BP for five matches. 
Heroes and skins free to use also from the 30th of December to the 31st of December. Enjoy limited time free access to all heroes and variety of epic skins. Skins, skins, skins. skins. Hey. Hey, hey, we get it, we get it. We don't, luckily we're not on All right, but now we're going into the drafting phase. Potentially, ladies and gentlemen, the final game for tonight, AB Brand. If they do it, it's going to end here. Onik, this is their last chance. This is their last. Hoorah! Hoorah! Whew. I'm thinking about many, many, many things here for Onik. The way that they can solve this problem that they have. Maybe if they go back to the blue side, it could be totally different. <laughs> and with the ban I'm on that Phobius, they, they're one signaling one? that they wanted to go for the 1-1. One one. Right? No Pheromis, no Phobius? <laughs> Exactly. And they do. They Signature do. pick for CW. So, fun little fact as well, right? Onik have lost on the blue side. It was 100%. Right. And then now, yeah. Onik have lost first loss on the blue side today. Ooh. And an, an immediate answer of the card. As well as the Fredrin. I can hear some Kid Bomba. I mean, Kid Bomba called it, man. He said it's going to be AB Brand. Yeah. Looks like he's coming true here. AB Brand again, picking up the Fredrin as well as the Claude. Yeah. Very quick responses here. I'm looking at the mid lane. Should they go for the Valentina or Lilia right now? Oh, could be Valentina, could be Lilia, but maybe they just settle for something like a Martis or a Nakai. Or they go Minotaur. Oh, no, Varia. Varia. Okay. The Varamino, very classic combo, but that means that they will not go for anything like an Angela. This will be their. They, this is a very honest draft coming draft coming out from Onik. The problem that they have right now is that they might be. They might, uh, they might see the Akai as well as the Martis be banned out by AP Brand during the banning phase. I mean, at this point, I'm just worried about Boots because our panelist mm -hmm. was talking about how Boots has been shafted in the draft. Yeah. Given heroes that is going to make plays, but is not winning the lane. So yeah. I'm looking at the draft and I'm thinking, will Boots be having an easier time or will he be the sacrifice lane? Well, good thing is, he will be the last pick anyways. AP Brand. Kai is still open, a hero that kind of is good against the composition of AP Brand. We know for sure that those are, those are the kinds of heroes that you pick up against the Fredrin. There's also the Dira factor for Onik. And knowing that they have the 1-1 anyways, all they have to do is to make sure that the other laners, the XP lane as well as the jungler, uh, should be self-sufficient. Heroes that don't rely heavily on, uh, on, uh, on the farm. So make sure that the 1-1 will have the farm in the end. That's the thing right now, right? For AB Brand, they've been doing really well at shutting down Kyrie, whether he's on a utility, especially when he's on an assassin. Yep. That Hayabusa pick seems like a very desperate pick now that we look at game number four. And AP Brand, now they're starting to nail Boots. They have heard the thoughts and they have yep. seen what happens when Boots doesn't get a playmaking hero as well. Yeah, because I was thinking of the Terizla as well, man. Without... What? Are we landed today from the U.S.? Oh! oh it's on time from the USA. Want. Hey, welcome! I mean, welcome. I'm not Filipino, but welcome! Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. You want to say welcome? Welcome. There you go. Mabuhai. 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 All right, now the Dairov, you were talking about it as yeah, well. Merko it's banned out. Dairov getting banned as well. I mean, at this point, does Boots have the Tamos in his arsenal? He does. Actually, yeah. he does. He does. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think that Boots can play many, many kinds of heroes. Going up against the Claude, they might... What might does this say? Jau, jau ke, ke, ke Filipino to tengok Indonesia juara. Yes. What is that? He mean? says uh, he came from Indonesia, far away to the Philippines Sad to see Onik win. Oh, thank you, man. I couldn't understand okay. that. Your, your backup was well... Yeah. yeah. Appreciate it. 100%, man. Uh, Valentina is open for AP Bren. A valid option for this case. I mean, Few is uh, phenomenal with it. But I will not be surprised if they go pick up something like a Kadira, actually, for mm. AP Bren. Because they need a hero for for a few to kind of eliminate heroes inside of Onik. They need the burst. So Farsa, Kadida, although the most reliable hero might be the Valentina for AP Bren. What about just the Paquito here, right? The mid lane is already revealed. Mm -hmm. uh, for the side of Onik, they pick Novaria, so Valentina won't be contested. Picking up a Paquito here, sure, it does stop that flex from happening from the yeah. Arlet, but hey, it's a strong pick. It's strong. You get it on Flap TZ. You also get Mr. or Master Ogwen yep. on the Arlet. Well. The clock is ticking. 
AB Brand has to make a selection right now. So the hero that they're gonna pick up. Looks like it's gonna be the Lilia. Okay. So if Ani is gonna pick up a utility jungler, he's gonna take quite a lot of damage. Yep. That means that Onik might just go for Lapu Lapu on the uh, on the EXP lane or the Paquito that we talked about. But Lapu Lapu should be a, a wonderful choice. Then when it comes to their jungler choice, they still have Akai as well as Martis. They might just go revert back to the Martis because what they need to do right now is to just rely on the one one. They have solid pickups for the one one anyways. They have the Minotaur as well as this uh, Novaria. So Akai or Martis should be the choice. And then something like a Lapu Lapu so that they can dive the back lines. Right. Looking at the selection here, a lot of crowd control as well as a lot of damage the coming in from Onik. The Kido Kido getting picked up here, as well as oh, the, the box. Oh, yeah. I can't believe that the box is still open. Yeah, yeah but, but about also it. the box into the Lilia, right? That's it's a true. tough matchup here. That's true. Very, very tough. Okay. Now, AP Bren can choose to go for the Arlot again. For uh, They can actually go for the Lapu Lapu. They picked it before. It's Fredrin Lapu Lapu Arlot. That would be crazy, right? A Filipino hero in the final, perhaps, game yes, sir. of M5. AP Brand might be able to do it. What is the voice line that Lapu Lapu says? This what is our homeland? Speak? Exactly. Right? Exactly. This is homeland. And soon be the burial ground of Onik. Let's How see. How fitting would that be? I think but if he does go for sense. the Lapu, the crowd will go wild, right? Yep. Right as he says, oh, he right. doesn't. Okay, Grok. <laughs> they want the Lapu, man. They want to hear, this is our homeland. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, you want to show off your skin. That's why we have time. Oh. 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 <laughs> we have too much power. Dude, we're influencing the crowd. We're very sorry. But again, we're jumping in potentially the final game for today. Looking at the drafts. Wolf, do you feel AP Brands got it? Absolutely, they have a good hero for. They have a good standard matchup, just uh, especially because they have the Lilia, anyways, and they kind of. I, I think that this backshot was kind of forced, but at the yeah. same time, there's no other reason. I dare say though, for Onik, all they have to do really is to rely on Chewen this time. Just rely on CW. They have a very standard draft, Minotaur as well as no Bar. It's gonna be great in the early and the late portions of the game. All Carry needs to do is to make sure that he at least Five trades for the first few turtles and not get, get uh, destroyed in the early stage and they're going to be A-OK. -okay. The host country has never won an M-Series. Will AP Bread be the difference maker or will the Sky Kings ascend and then continue this best of seven? We're jumping into the game. We're hearing it already from the crowd. This is our homeland, they say, as they yell out AP Bren. Ogwen early on invading the enemy jungle, gonna be knocked up. Flicker already burnt out. Kyrie hunting him down. Ooh, the Astro Spear dodge away from CW chasing. Ogwen gets out. Oh. Ogwen, oh my goodness. But that's Flicker that they committed. Burnt a lot of time though. Amazon Onik would be very happy about that. Flicker not being available for the Lord fight for the turtle fight. Looking at the emblem set here, I want to see a little bit more aggression coming in uh, yeah. from uh, Boots because Boots is going very aggressive, having the rupture as well as the yeah. Festival of Blood. And interestingly, you know, Con versus, wanna uh, t take a look at the gold lane. 1-1 one, one versus the Cloud. We saw yesterday that the trend was go for the Master Assassin, yep. but this time they went both for Tenacity. So both are playing for survivability. Both are playing not for the lane, but for the team fights. That's what they want to do the most. And so far, Let's look at this matchup, right? The skill matchup, even in the jungle. It's Bakshia versus Fredrin, but Count TZ has been able to invade early on, That's getting right. a level lead. Yeah, and it's mainly because of the of the Grok as well, being very aggressive in that moment, in that regard. I would say though, Bakshia is supposed to be the hero that has a faster jungle take it's rate. The distraction from Ogwin. Yeah. Distraction from Ogwin. At the same time, though, few can leash, and Novaria cannot leash as, leash as much. Interesting though. Looking at Count Easy, wait a minute. A knock up, a ton onto Keyboy. Should be able to escape this one, but look at the emblem that Kyle actually chose. We've seen yep. many times that now it's the concussive blast that has become yep. the norm for Fredrin. Why Braves might hear Wolf? It's a standard. Actually, it was the first emblem of choice. And then there was the quantum charge, eventually the concussive blast, and they are now going for the Braves fight because he wants a team fight. I think that AP Brand, particularly for Kyle TZ, they're recognizing the fact that. It's the Claude that is the main character here. Minion's Fury and the knockup Keyboy now knocked up himself by the wild charge from Oakland. 
That's Few, the man who is on a mission to get his second M-Series title. Let me just say that play was possible because of Ogwen. Ogwen saw the pathway coming in from Kyrie, making it, making AP Brand know that Kyrie is far away so they can burst down the turtle. No hesitation at all. Onik having both Keyboy as well as Sons trying to create the illusion that they want to contest for it, but the illusion was shattered because Ogwen found out where Kyrie really was. Amazing play coming out from AP Bread for sure. The spacing that they have, they're not stopping. They're not. Keyboy very low, the wall to keep him at bay. No dash, Keyboy. Still able to flick around the wall charge. Now Flap Teasy caught under the turret. One more shot, he finds it. Woo. Sans looking for the turnaround by Flap Teasy. Just walks out. Now Sans walks down. Astro Meteor going to be committed down the mid lane, cleared away by Few to stop that from happening. And what a juggle coming out from Few. He took the aggro of the turret and then survived because of the ultimate. Making it so that they can dive. That was wonderful juggling coming out from AP Brand. We got to talk about the late game scaling here because Onyx, we've seen whenever they have the Novaria, their Lord Dance is going to be very difficult to handle just because Sans can deal out so much damage in the meantime. And now we got to look at the Novaria as to recall comparison, both Sans as well as Few. Games played, wow. Few has more advantage. And look at a cast count. 396 for Sans, but 776 for Few. Very similar. They 36, hit 35. One out of the three shots they make. But that's actually pretty impressive. Very impressive oh. on the Novaria. Boots chunked down by Few, but Ogwen now. Power of Nature getting him out to safety, but Boots dealing a bit more damage. Knockout strike as well. Ogwen gets out again. Master Ogwen doing the Skadoosh here, Few. Knocked up, but he still has the black shoes and even a Purify. Kyrie canceled out on that shield unity. Flap Teezy doing a bit of a damage. The wall comes down, the Guardian's barrier. Minus Fury dodged away from Kyle Teezy. Gets out, oh, it's a wild card, a final slash. Everything. Boots forced the flicker out of safety. Kyrie returns as Poissons. Keyboard isolated, but a Brazer's wrath to take him down for the third time this game. But Onyx find this time around a kill back onto the enemy roamer. This is a very good start here coming in from AB Brand. 1,000 goal lead. They are in prime position to keep controlling the map because at this point, yes. it, I feel like it's hard for Onyx to even move forward. Exactly. Right after taking the, tur the turtle, they know that Kyrie doesn't have the retribution. Then Kyle TZ steals it away. Ooh. He actually gets to creeps, gets the rock horse as well as the, the orange buff. That's gonna be massive. I mean, you will not feel it right now, but every time that Kyle TZ takes away a jungle creep away from Kyrie, that's double the effect. Because not only do you get gold, you also take away gold from your opposing jungler. And now Boots, he's taking a long way around. Boots will be taken out. AP Bren have come alive again in game five. Onik right now, they've been making a lot of mistakes, getting caught out. Ogwen, even though he's taking quite a lot of damage, he's not going to get taken down. Few is here as well. Onik, I kind of feel like they got to slow down, they got to breathe, they got to figure out what is their game plan because I feel like they're trying to force things and AP Brand is just catching their, their mistakes. They've been catching way more than just mistakes. They've been forcing mistakes out as well. All in onto Keyboy, the Roamer. A taunt as well. Kaltizi put out the stacks. Wild Charge, Abrazor's Wrath, Keyboy taken down again! Blazing the way from Super Marco as well. Almost ECW down. Meanwhile, the mid lane. Few gets assassinated by Boots. Yeah, and, oh, I don't know, man. Keyboard right now as a Minotaur 0 4 and 0. Six minutes in the game. AP Brand has five kills. Four of those is Keyboy. AP yeah. Brand, they have a target. And that target's name is Keyboy. Big problem. Turtle is going to be available. They're forcing the retribution onto Hyrie once again. Level 10 to level 8, and Cal TZ gets it, but he does utilize the Retribution. Now Kyrie shield unity instantly onto the turtle. That's now already being started up by Sonic. This is a desperate move, but it might actually work out for them. Kyrie has the Retribution. AP Bren forced back. That's a Retribution secured for the turtle right now, and Boots is able to pop in that black shoes, and Astro Sphere dodged away from by Pew. Boots still chasing, but Pew gets out. Let me just say, AB Brand has been doing quite a good job avoiding all the damage coming in from Sans because we see the U-turn coming in at the end of their movement, making sure that Sans is not going to make that big of an impact. So I kind of feel like that's also a small thing, but it's really stacking up. Yep. It's really making it so that AB Brand is not really all that fearful getting into those fights.
And Ape Bird also transitioning into overtaking the jungle. And that's the reason why they prioritize utilizing their retribution. Onto oh. the purple buff, Boots in trouble. Flickering back out, Feezy chasing and Battle Mirror Image is there, Boots! Will be taken down again, this time it's Super Marco who picks up the kill. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, not the same thing happening. AP Brent stopping any sort of trade from happening this game, eight minutes in. Oh right. no. Disastrous for Onik. I'm just, I'm just listening to the crowd. I mean, at this point, AP Prime 1.7k lead for Onik. What is the timing here? Super Rock Horse pushing, man. The only timing for Onik waiting right now is again for the game to equalize once again. They might forfeit the early to mid game again. The first 15 minutes, it's going to be AP Brand for sure. And all they can do is to hope that Keyboy lands a beautiful Minion Fury into CW's ultimate. Until then, it's going to be difficult for them to find a fight. Unfortunately, AP Brand has the better heroes in the early stages of the game and the better items, the better economy. They just have it right now. One way out for Onik, it's to fight. But AP Brand are doing the best they can to stop that from happening. Yeah, and right now again, Onik, their mechanics are going to be tested here. Because AP Brand, they're definitely winning out when it comes to the macro. The Lord has pawn. Boots up top with Super Marco. The Lord Dentist initiated by Kyle TZ. Keyboy probably looking for an opportunity. That's a good chill unity into the Astro Spear. Cross all tank and be locked in. TW on the Kyle TZ. He's taking a half HP right now, but he has it. Brazier's Wrath! Well turned from Oakland! Kyle TZ very low. CW watching forward a few deals of damage. Well, CW once again doing a lot of damage. Who's in the back? That's a concealed play. Kyrie going to be able to secure this Lord of the game. Oakland very low. Conceal. Trying to get out. Dark House Sprite locks him down. And that should be a kill over. Boots the Heavenly Fist is what we call him in Indonesia. Now getting it, CW finds another. Onik needed to fight. They fought. So Marco, with, with, with the nature. nature. Oh, oh, that's crazy. Oh, I couldn't even finish my sentence there. Yeah, me neither. Whew. And that's a team fight that Onik badly wanted. We're looking for an opening. They have found it. They made it, actually. Uh oh. Boots taken very low. So Marco backed up with the Battle Mirror image. Now Kyrie with the shield unity. Looking low. Oh, my goodness gracious. Every single time he throws this one, man, it's panicking, but CW gets a turret up top. Mirko, yes. breathe, we need you. We right. need you, man. Whew. I'll breathe. All right, so now we're going to give it over to Wolf. Looking at the items here. Yep, rush onto the Wind of Nature. Interesting choice coming out from CW. But that's the reason why they were able to last the fight. At the same Jeez. time, deal the damage. And now Onik, they all of a sudden get 2.4k. What? Wait. R rubber band from 400 gold to 2,600. Five man Astral Echo. Onik looking for steel minus fury. Yep. But Kyrie will just secure the purple buff. They're getting chunked very low. That might be a bad engage. Flat TZ. Oh, he no. went in a bit too aggressive. Super Marco, a great battle mirror image to escape from this onslaught of damage. Another shot down. Man. Threading the needle, Sans. I would say here, Onik has been winning those fights where Flat TZ made a bad engage. And I don't know, AP Red, they gotta stop that. Because every time, every time we see Flat goes in. And then Onik feels like they're having an advantage. His, his HP, he has, he has to look at that, man. Yes. And my smart translation to that is that the box that was set up by Onik was already so rigid, and AP Brand goes into their box one after the other. Especially when Flap TC starts it, they're waiting for Ogwin to go for the jump, but unfortunately, Onik has established this box where Keyboy is in front, CW is waiting for the stacks. When they do have the ultimate, they will be able to pop it. And I think the real Game changer here for Onik is Sans. Yes. Every time he lands the Astral Echo onto many members of AP Bren, Onik will have the better decision making. Because Ogwin can't find any wild exactly. charges. The wild charges become very tame. And that becomes very powerful. Oh. Kyrie knows it's time to go in right now. Flap TZ. Crossbow tank already. Fly. Oh, final slash not what? able to be casted in time. And he gets bursted down. And Ogwin didn't cannot do anything. Didn't Nothing. do anything. Even if he uses the wild charge, it's just a waste of an uh, ultimate. And what's going to happen is that Ogwin will also be taken to the grave. Let me just say, man, this is not a fun game to be a frontline. Because every single time, you, you're you just doing your job. You're just doing your thing, man. You just get punished too much. It's like, excuse me, sir. Let me play the game. This game turned out to be a battle of 
mechanics in the end because they both teams have good heroes. And when I say good heroes, they have the 1-1 oh. on the side of Onyx. They oh. have the Claude on the other side. Meaning to say, no matter what happens, there will be the late game insurance. And it's just 12 minutes of the game. Boots now, I, I, I gotta say, I don't think he's been shafted by the draft. He's Not been getting all. a hero that can make a difference, man. And he's performing on it so far on this Bakito. Two deaths, but with those two kills now, they're looking for a little initiation. Astro oh, Echo once again revealing forward. Boots flanking around. He's making a miss. Cal Teasy going to be chunked down by the Astro Sphere. Kyrie still on the Lord. Flap Teasy not able to enter this. Final slash only on the Keyboy. Peter Fury! Keyboy finds three. That's another knockup. Two Marco still holding down the Fury. Bye! Marco! With a lazy duet. But CW with a crossbow of time into the Astro Sphere. Now CW chasing few down. Forcing another what? big punch from Boots. Four for one. He got that? Unbelievable. What? And it's Sans again landing the Astral Echo to four members of AP Bren. Then immediately what they did afterwards was to go to Cal TZ. The front to back damage coming out from Onik cannot be contained anymore. Cal TZ steps into the box of Onik once again, gets punished for it. Wait, they're going for the end. One base turret up top, one base turret in the mid lane getting me dealt with. Super Marco gonna be chunked down. One second on Flap TZ. Can the wave it? coming down. CW focusing it. But Onik will decide to disengage. It's a bit too risky with all the members coming back. They, they don't want to risk a one straight push, but they oh. have another Lord. You have the Lord is here. Astral Echo connects onto everyone. Oh. The Ocean Bumbaco taking a lot of damage. Amy Brand still protecting their base. Onik doesn't find a way to go in. Amazing defense from AP Bren. Onik now looking for the bottom lane base at the final one. Flap easy, looking for a big play. Weakness points. Getting caught out. Flap easy, two more. That's a good final slash on the GW for the nature. Wild charge, and that's the turn. Three man minutes fury into the blaze duet. Boots in the game castle with a helmet key boy. That's an astral sphere. Dodge away from once again. Flap easy, very low. Boots in the midst of it all. Dealing some damage, getting some shields. Able to disengage. The and the base turret, the Winions, oh. take away the final base turret in the bottom lane. Only the base left standing. But AP Bren are fighting. The defense there from AP Bren. It was really good, but they did lose a lot. And the thing is, Onik, all they need to do is to make sure that CW is cleared for takeoff. And AP Bren finally am able to stop them. Flicker is going off cooldown on Ogwen. And AP Bren punish, they get one turret. You gotta live to see another day. Another Lord Dance for sure. It's gonna happen in less than a minute. Well, we were talking about how they will. Oh! Another big shout out to Ogwen! Kyrie unable to take him down, it's ticking, but Ogwen survives. Pops the power of nature. Oh my goodness, this game. Onik, they're in a position where they push AP Brand. Now, looking at the base, half HP, basically. Whew. Right now, I'm looking at Boots as well. I'm thinking, Onik has a lot of ways to play this. They can wait for the Lord. They can go for a fight. They can go for a split. Exactly, because they have the Pakito anyways. There's a lot of options here for yeah. Onik. The pressure is on to AP Brand now. Ooh. They gotta figure out what Onik wants to do and be two steps ahead. Well, look at the draft. Remember what Onik did to AP Brand. Now Few is the one on the Lilia. Now they are the ones who have good wave clear. Could it possibly happen? One big fight to end the game from AP Brand. There's so many possibilities, in fact. Right now, I'm curious because Super Marco as well as Ogwin, they group, they're grouped up together. Oh. They might punish Boots. Well, charge into everything. Boots able to dash away. Four now with the That's wall. That's the play. Catches him and Few takes the kill. That's the play indeed. AP Bren. That's the opportunity, the golden one. But Cal Teasy going to be locked down. Crossball tank ready. CW popping it now in the final second. Able to translate it over to Ogwin and find the kill. Phew. Four sees the black shoe. CW all alone. But they should be popped in. Super Marco jumps in as well. CW is dying for the guy to wait for him. Super Marco survives. Keyboy right there. Sans dealing damage with the help of Keyboy. Four for two in favor of AP Bren. Keyboy very low. Another one. Oh, winner Truncha. What? From Phew. A flicker back. What? Sans and Keyboy looking for the miracle play. With looking for base. a snipe down. Oh! Teasy with a dodge! What was with that vengeance, Keyboy running Ogwen down. Very low, has the mortality. Does he buy some time? Astral Media, but look at him in ways. Oh! An Astral Spear connecting. Ogwen flickers out the safety. The crowd goes wild. 
But the base is still wide open for the minion waves to come crashing down. It's right open. now, Sans finally gets it! Dude! Sans right now! Whoa. What is this game? It's like, it's like playing tag! Sans trying to catch everyone and everyone just dodging him left and right. But look at the timers. Now it's Ogwen who's down for 20. And he doesn't have the immortality when he wakes up. This is what happens when you have two of the best teams in the world of Mobile Legends going up against each other in the best of five series with the best heroes that we could ever expect from them. It's a duel. Right now the Lord has been started by Onik. AP Brand will not contest. Onik now has the Lord. They will push with this. The question is AP Brand. They have the Lilia. They have the Quad. They have ways to clear the minion. But Onik, oh. can they force this out? Sans! Sans Gila. And Gila Sans. Sans. And I want to say, majority of the damage output of Sans obviously comes from the Astral Sphere from the second skill. But actually, his Astral Meteor usages were yes. so much on point. The choke points. The choke points, he's utilizing it to... He's playing it like a Lilia. Exactly. He's making a lot of space for the team because he's blocking so many of the passageways of, of AP Bren. And the slows are actually super duper annoying to deal with. Look at the timing, though. It's not an evolved yeah. word. It's yeah. not. It's not. Right now. And they have the Lilia. The Lord marches in. The wall has been brought up. Astral Echo hitting a four. Look at Boots. Very low, able to get the shield down. Now the base wide open. Minus Fury, not gonna be casted just yet, but the Lord has been cleared out. Kyrie taking low, towards the Poisons. To run away, oh, they go and collapse out the Kyrie. With the final stock as well. Minus Fury catching everyone. CW looking for the play, on the field, winning the lack shoes. Four man knock off of Keyboy as he flickers out the safety, but Flap Teasy is chasing him down. Sans clears out of midway. Flap Teasy with a good stun. That's another Astro Sphere not connecting this time around. Keyboy taken down. Flap Teasy. Finds the vengeance! Awning has to change their strategy, man. They gotta take advantage of Sans. They gotta let Sans do the damage. And it looks like AB Brand was able to protect their base, but back to my point. 30 seconds. Oh, wait. CW can wants... they do it? Oh. No, he can't. Nah, he can't. He can't. He can't. He can't. It's very risky. Very risky indeed. Has to recall out. He's keeping at it. He's keeping it. He's waiting for information. Few. Can he take a few? The Assassin. 1v1. Black Shoes used up. CW needs one crossbow attack. But he saves it. He saves it. He outplays Few, but Immortality gets bought out. And CW will okay. back away. Few has done it. Oh, boy. What a play. Oh, boy. The turnaround. Now it's going to be Kyrie, who still is able oh, to no. bomb in that Poison. He's isolated from the team, but he Final is soaking clash. a lot of damage. Final Clash might be happening right now. The Immortality, no! The Immortality! Kyrie has been taken down! And it is mainly because of Ogwin. The usage of Guardian's barrier to isolate Kyrie away from his team. Then the supplement of the Final Slash, the displacements. Ogwen, wild charge, King keeping it at bay. Super Marco now trying to turn it around. CW. Ooh. Jumping forward, Woo. a mechanical duel between the two best goal laners in the world currently. Let me just say, I don't envy the position of CW as well as Super Marco right now, man. Too many things is going through their heads. A very intense fight. I mean, everybody's trying to outplay each other, forcing so many mistakes and at the same time, like, making the mistakes their own. Carry 12 seconds before respawning. He does have the shield unity so he can get back. And the lanes are naturally in favor of Onyx. Final slash, CW is down! Flat T -C! The final slash that might have just ended this game. Another wild charge. Super Marco finding the kill. Kyrie jumping on the Super Marco who buys immortality. An Astro Spear from Gila Sans. Super Marco, battle mirror image, boosting the image of it all. Trying to look for a big fight right now. Sans comes back in with the Astro Meteor. An Astro Echo, another immortality pop. Kyrie still going to fall. Few finds another for the base, the minions, the drama, the drama. Oh, oh my goodness! Oh the, my goodness! The cannon event, the flapping, David Charles Gallo, that's his name, saving this game with the final slash to take up CW, then saving them from the minions. It's the cannon event. This. This is the oh. game. Sans has to carry the team, man. 
He has the damage, he just has to connect them. Kyle TC very low, but it looks like AB Brand will secure this Lord. This is not looking good for Onik. And the wave clear is not that good for Onik. It's not like for AP Brand where there is the Lilia as well as the Claude. This is the 1-1, one single target hero. This is the Nefaria. Although you have the Astro Meteor, it will not be enough. AP Brand, because of Flap TZ, the flappening. And here, you can hear them. End it. End it now. Well, Onyx gonna try their very best to deny that. Because again, this is match point for AB Brand. Once that crystal is down, we'll crown a new champion. The Lord is marching up top. Ogwen's delaying it. He's trying to sync up the minions. This is gonna be very difficult for Onyx to defend. Even the base turret down below will be taken down by Super Marco. An Astrosphere in the mid lane. Can they clear it away? Is it still possible, Wolf? Again for Onik. I think anything is possible. They still have boots. Or maybe that's a way that they're looking for. And Sans, a key hero, needs to survive for the entirety of this defense. The base is cracked. Onik on full defense mode, under siege. The Golden Road at risk. AP Bren in their world tour. In the mid lane, cleared out. Super Marco gonna be chunked down. The Athena shield already popped away. CW is able to clear out the minion wave in the mid lane. Kyrie, the shield unity, backing away once again. That top lane now gonna be dealt with by Onik. And we are back Ooh. again to the waiting game. Resolve Memorial Coliseum! Are you not entertained? Listen to the crowd. This is an amazing match. 24 minutes in. AB Brand with a 6k goal lead, but at this point, the goal is only about switching your items. View, as well as Oakwen, finds all members of Onik. And AB Brand, whew, they're just moving around, they're just waiting for a point where Super Marco can just go in. Lilia, the super duper late game, oh, oh, the ultra late game oh, is so good. A full NCW again, oh gets my God, God. God. A big mistake, a big blunder. AB Brand has found it once again. An Astro Spear, this time from Sans, an Astro Meteor in the bottom lane to try to clear things out. Super Marco knocked up, has the Battle Mirror image. 55 Ooh. seconds on CW, on Calvin Winata. Oh my goodness. Flap TZ once again. Boots going in, trying to force out the Black Shoes. Minion Wave in the mid lane, gonna be chucked down once again as Boots is able to dish out some damage in the bottom lane to clear the Minion Wave out. Both waves dealt with, but AP Brenner slowly sieging. Flap TZ. Oh, he's jumped in into the base. Very low, Astro Meteor, Ogwen tanks it up! What a juggle! What a juggle! Super Marco there, oh! Still gets out. And for some miracle, Arnica holds on to two of their turrets. They might let go of the other one though. Bottom lane base turret. Hey. They might be taken down, that is a big resource, but they are able to keep it at bay. Flap TZ up top, clearing up the wave. Arnica looking for another way to reset this, to stop AP Brent. Right now, four members are caught in Astral Echo. Boots is from the side. The view finds him. Slap wants to go in. He CW. wants to find a target. It's back up, Astral Sphere. Key boy in front of it all right now. Kyrie's gonna be chunked out. It's a rack of boots. Finds it on strike. Minus Fury onto four. CW is now here. The Lord, who gets it? It's gonna be an all out fight. CW marches forward to shut down the redemption. Wait for a Calvin without a guy. Twice the red tree. AP press scrambling. Fast. It's about Super Marco. Now CW is looking for an angle. Also, Ogwen, he's running away. Boots finds a kill. Now it's Pew, who's still going. Oh, CW! Pew! Mortality bot, Black Shoes. Dude, CW, man, as long as he survives, there's space for Onik. Right now, they got the Lord. The minions have spawned. Onik can push right now. But look at the positioning here, Sans, CW, they're in the face of yeah. AB Brand. Sans is preventing few from laying down the glooms so that there will be no defense. Sans with the place, the aggression, now turning we, things around. We can hear now the chant coming in from Onik, Ogwem. Sans looking Slow. for a shot, Kyrie jumping in, CW. This might be the end for this game. Ogwen running away. Onik has found a miracle! Onik! Denying the 4-1, Onik! Continuing this battle, Onik! That's one more chance to push us. That's one more chance to become the world champions.
After so many heroics coming out from Flap TC and the entirety of AP Brand, it was Keyboy who finds the middle one here in the end. Kyrie buying the immortality out of nowhere under the rest from the Lord Dance. And then eventually Sans acting as if his base is the other end. What a game! We need a breather, man. Mirko needs a breather. We need towels. We need everything. For now, we're passing it over to our panelists. Boys, I don't know what to tell you. I thought that was it. I thought AP Brand, they were going to close out that game, but Onik pull it back somehow. They look so broken in the early game. I think it's safe to say, and uh, I speak on behalf of everyone watching, that was the best game so far in this series. Oh, my lungs are giving out. This, I don't know, if Onik can pull it all the way to make this a full best of seven, Good luck to them, because the crowd is against them and it doesn't help that AP Brent had so much momentum. And yet, despite all that, they were able to synchronize calm and down for just the moment. A split second, some might even say. Sans poking them out, great job coming in from him. The final play with Keyboy and the whole team. The synchronization like no other. All throughout early, mid, late, ultra late, there was but one Shining Beacon for Onik to hold out for with hopes of not ending the series just yet. And this series was Gilak, and he is Gilak Sans, your MVP for a game number... I even lost track of what game this is. Oh, it's game number five, technically, right now. Game number five. It's, it's, I can't even explain how insane this man is, the number of shots that he was able to connect, the number of times that he has saved his team, turning in losing situation into a winning situation with a single click of a button. This was game four. Now looking back, I'm doing the math. This is game four. Three to one. Looking back at the highlights, you can see exactly how Sans all throughout was not just but a vision getter, a source of damage and a reason for AP Bren to scramble. Anywhere Sans was in the map was a hot zone for AP Bren to either engage or to reinforce. The fact that Few is a short to mid-range mage means he can only really interact with so much from Onik. Compare that to Onik, who's playing on so many different ranges of both engagement and damage. I mean, in a lot of these moments, right, you're looking for the big playmakers, and I don't think it comes down to the playmakers anymore. It's about synchronization of your abilities. If you're using that knock-up strike, and if you're using a double knock-up strike, it still counts as CC. Even if it is what some people might call a micro stun, it doesn't matter because everybody else is piling in on that damage. You saw that the only losing situations coming out from AP Bren is when Super Marco happened to get caught by the knock-up from Keyboy. And if that doesn't happen, then AP Brand has a lot more in stock. They can overload on CC. As for Onik, it was but just one big turnaround. Again, a big knockout for Keyboy. Boots coming in from an angle. Those are the ways Onik win. Yet, some way, somehow, they're able to clap back from this almost unwinnable position. Flap DZ was fishing homies out of the base. He was pulling people out with the final slash. And if you get pulled out that way, the way the CW did there, a lesser team would have crumbled. A lesser team would have just crumpled up and said, you know what, all right, it's over. It, most people would give up at that point because this is such a creative way to fish people out, to use conceal in this manner. Conceal, send the person who activated the conceal to run into your opponents while you have one person to fish, walk outside, walk back in while he gets distracted just to find CW. Who thinks of that? You know who? Let me tell you, you know who? 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 He's a season MVP, season 11 MPL ID. Oh my goodness, no way. Don't tell me that he used to be a mid laner. No, a jungler that turned into a mid laner. He was rocking with the Astral Recall. Ah, every time he hits it, Gilak Sans makes that difference. And when we're looking at the emblems, it's the same exact story time and time again. This time, no Master Assassin for any of the laners. The story can be told based on the supports and not only that, the EXP laners. Because good guy Boots, I mean, he was taking a pounding. And in this matchup, especially when you're up against Flap TZ on an Arlet, it's a pretty skill-based matchup. I can't believe that he also was not rocking the... Agility. It was the penetration and the wilderness blessing. So that plus the astral recall allows for him to weave in and weave out the way he needs to. Looking at the item build, 
Though he ends up with just the same build. Again, this is how confident Sans was that no one was going to get to him. Didn't even need to juggle the tranche or the immortality. But let's also talk about the supports here because, again, for supports, once you're getting to those final items, you really have to think about cost efficiency. It's not about how many items you can switch out because you just don't have that kind of money. We look at Ogwin making a very smart decision, deciding to go for the Guardian's helmet because he knows he's going to get hit by the poke. But if he can regenerate and if these fights go on long enough, he can then walk back in and participate without having to recall. You know who else was a testament in this bout was Kyrie. I saw the young man from Bataan now playing for Indonesia under Onik juggle so much towards the late game. I'm looking at maybe post 18 minutes. He was so willing to die that he would just put himself in the way of harm just to protect Sans, just to protect CW and then the odds be damned. He will just wait until he comes back because once again, I remember getting a shouting, he has no money, he has no money. He can't even juggle with the tranche. And then again, that just shows how well connected Onik is. They're able to make these sacrifices and not get uh, uh, punished for them. I mean, it's coming to a point where we are seeing some of the greats learn from their past predecessors. We all know Cartesi from M2, and even when he won at, during M4 on Echo side, switching items is no new concept, but to be able to play from a kick but the style of Assassin to now a more utility jungle. I think Kyrie is going through the exact same phases. Oh, wow. To be following in the footsteps of such a great in Carl TZ. Hey, they're both in the top 10 greatest, so I'm not even surprised. Looking at the damage dealt again, you'll see that it's a majority on Sans, that's no question. But what is surprising to me is the fact that Super Marco dealt more damage than CW, even when you're looking at a map that was controlled completely by Onik. Where was that? Are we looking at a point wherein the turret was... You know what? It was a very long game. That's why it led to that. That's why this looks this way. It's because the Minotaur was healing up. That motivation roar changes the math when it comes to an ultra, ultra late game. Absolutely. You're absolutely right on that one. And let's not forget the big problem that unfortunately AP Brem was trying to solve was how do you catch Sans? He's never there half the time. He's not even on your screen for a majority of the game. And the only win condition that they could have was to take out Mr. Calvin Winata in the first place and then hope to maybe outlast the onslaught coming in from Sans. With that said, it looks like we're in for quite a ride. This series must have waken up something inside of Onik Indonesia. As for AP Bren, I guess they're saying, gloves are off, pal. Now the series has gotten closer than it has ever been. Score now, two to three? Two to three. This could be the equalizer for Onik. This could be the game ender here, and we might crown a new world championship. Regardless, this has been one of the best series we've had thus far in the entirety of the M series. It's been so long since it was not a sweep for the very first time in a long, long time. Something to note, now it seems like mid has been reactivated for Onik. And in the games that they've lost so far in the series, by attacking both the jungle and the XP, AP Bren has been able to min minimize Sans's efficiency. Now Sans is back online. The question now falls on the coach Vren, coach Ducky, and AP Bren. What do they do now? What else is left in the tank for them to choke out parts of the map, parts of Onyx lineup for them to once again stop the Gilak, stop the madness? I mean, they're going to have to dig deep, as deep as they possibly can, and more importantly, choke out that mid lane. They did it once before, they had that checkmate, and if they can find it once more on that blue side, well, casters, you know what to do. Take it away. Well, we're taking it, and the score now is 3-2. to two. And let me just say, from the English desk, shout-outs to Chantel. I okay. heard... I heard from all the PH talents whenever she's on, yeah. we're expecting a seven game here. In fact, she's actually called the mother of all series. The, the mother, mother of all series. Of all series. That's right. Seriously? It is true. So we got to thank <laughs> Chantel for this 3-2. That's exactly. Okay. We got to go back into the game. <laughs> Sans. Sans. If he wasn't there, I don't see how Ani could have came back from that one. I think it's straight up they would have lost, right? I mean, looking at that MVP performance, looking at his performance, how did he not die? Exactly. Well, 
I guess the biggest answer here is... This is Gilak Sad. Yeah, and for all those who don't know, Gilak actually means uh, crazy. crazy in, He's uh, local, man. He's Basa insane. In Basa, Indonesia. I know that. Why? How do you know that? Have you visited Indonesia quite a lot? Yeah, for events, you know. Damn, rich caster. No. He is a rich caster. Yeah, that's rich not caster. true. Going into this game, it's still not impossible for AP Brand to close things out because we saw so far the trend in this game. Yep. AP Brand controls the early and the mid. So yep. it kind of looks like Onik, they kind of figure out a draft that transitions well into the mid and transitions well into the late. And I kind of feel like AP Brand will start sniffing that out. Yeah, for sure. Um, for AP Brand, we can... If you look back at their lineup, they all, they already have the Claude, which is a hero for that's great for the late game. Yeah. And even Lilia is arguably good in the late game right now because of the changes, the revamps that you can reset easily your uh, spells, your stacks. Most importantly, though, I think the reason why the Novaria didn't die in this game is because there's no actual dive from the side of uh, AP Brand. Surely they have Laptizi, but it's not like a dive dive kind of hero, right? Because you want to bring back people to towards your own box anyways. So it's not like an actual dive hero. That's uh, the reason why Novaya didn't die in this game. Yeah. And I got to say, man, Laptizi did a lot. Yes. Yes. Like, the mo like, okay, sure, early game, he, he got attacked quite a bit. But the moment he got a little bit more tanky, Vengeance, Vengeance goes in, final slash, man. Laptizi right. is a game changer, but now, we're looking at the players here. We got to talk about their mental strength. This is where, if you want to be a champion, a lot of sacrifices have to be made. A lot of preparation all year, all throughout 2023 is on this point here. Can they handle the stress? Can they handle the pressure? It's been like, what, five games going into the six? This is going to be a lot for the players to manage. Sure. Doesn't change at all, right? Even after winning that game, AP Brenner still at match point. That's correct. One game. Onik need two. Back to back to become champions. Heck, well, if we count last game, three. Whew, that's back to back to back. And the thing is, that particular game number five alone is a series on its own. <laughs> you think about it, it's with what, what 28 minutes? It's almost like a 2 series. If it was series. best of five, it would have been over. Exactly. And, but the thing is, uh, there's a lot of fight in them. It's what, what, what they could say about Ani. Given CW getting, what, three, three, three times killed back to back to back by Flap TZ yeah. in the gang and still managed to land a beautiful uh, crossbow tie in the end, right? And then Keyboy suffering zero and four. And all throughout the game, land, um, always having to be forced to use the Mino and Fury, but also lands the game winning Mino and Fury at the Turtle Dance, right? And uh, Lord Dance, I mean. And then lastly, yeah. Kyrie was. Under duress, he was in the middle of the Lord Pit, but he still managed to to secure an immortality for some reason. I don't know if he bought it or if he sold something, but he didn't have the immortality before the fight happened, and then he had it afterwards. So there were so many micro gameplay that you have to take note of that game. Mirko, right now, there is one similarity between you and Kyrie. Okay. Both of you all are sweating, because look <laughs> at Kyrie, man. Like, he's drenched. Like... He's not been having a great series, and not, it's not because he's making mistakes or anything like that, but the constant pressure, man, is like, I know you guys love me, but come on. Imagine if he was wearing a three-piece suit. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> there you go. Well, it's for the trophy. So all the sweat and tears that may have come along the way to get to this point, it's all for the trophy, but you guys, everybody Whoa. in the stadium, everybody watching at home, y'all have been amazing. 4.45 million. That deserves a clap. Come on. Come on. That deserves a clap. Thank Round you very much, everyone. everyone. Let's go even further. Let's try to hit six. That's right. Oh, six would be. Hey, if we go all seven games, man. We You're got right. Chantel in the building. We yep. do have Chantel in the building, and we have this wonderful crowd as well, right? Yeah. I feel like Sif is doing something as well. I kind of feel like this will go all the way. Yeah. You want to ask the crowd? I think they'll say no, right? Because right. They want yeah. Or no, technically they can say yes because four three could be for the team that they're supporting. Yeah. Yeah, but before that, man, like <laughs> I don't know. I want to save some of my energy going into this game because <sighs> even I'm starting to run out of breath because mm -hmm. looking at this game, Onik, what else can they do? Do they really have to just let go of that early game? I don't think so. I think that they've, they've, they've been doing a great job securing the early stages. And there's no reason for them to change up their strategy anyways. So maybe, you know, remove some of their habits so that it will catch um, Onik off guard. But I think that 
AP Bren, even after losing that match, they're still at match point, like Mirkov said, right? There's nothing here to change. It's just a hard reset, perhaps. Well, here it is. You guys are seeing the countdown as we're going in to draft of what? The sixth game of this best of seven. Where again, the pressure is not stopping, it's not slowing down. As we look at a trophy, reminding both teams what they're fighting for. Yeah. And what already is good for AP Bren is that they have secured the, the, the blue side. Yes, and AP Bren blue. So far, only one on the blue side. So they take that away. And that means that they will be the first ones to take the 1-1. One, one. Will Onik ban it out though? They no, won't. they won't. They won't. One one or Fredrin should I mean, be the pick here for AP Bren. If they pick up the one one, Ani can pick up the Faramis. That's true. And maybe eventually the Phobius. Exactly. Faramis and Phobius. Faramis. Wait, Guinevere the... is open. Yep. Guinevere is <laughs> actually My open. Imaginary world. Wow. They pick up the one one, and that's Faramis Guinevere or Faramis Arlet that I'm seeing Ani will pick up. I feel like Guinevere is a solid pick here. No. Yep. You don't want to give both the Guinevere as well as the 1-1, one -one, right? Yeah. But then again, yeah, Gwyn, Gwyn Fermis or Arlot Fermis is what I think Onik will pick up. Just because of how it's good AP Brain is with that hero. That the yep, the Gwyn. Up. And maybe the Fermis to follow. Yeah, Fermis is a solid pick, but no. I think they're taking their time here. Yeah, I think there's Valentina the anyways. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> still they pick up. <laughs> so Gwyn Fermis, Arlot Valentina, perhaps from AP Brain. A lot of spins here, folks, but sorry, oh this draft is... Yeah. This draft is cooking. Congratulations yeah. to all that got the amazing skin. Ooh. But now... I'm, I'm thinking Arlet Oh, no skin Green. at all. Oh, wow. Ooh. Wait, wait, so he says. All right, all right, all right. All right Can one. he get it? If he... Oh, nope. <laughs> yep, nope. We, we got we to gotta look at the draft. Because, again, yep. this is the sixth game here. Yep. Onik, very good start. How is AP Brand going to supplement this 1-1? One -one? What if they pick up the Akai, I think? So maybe Akai, Akai or Fredrin for AP Brand for sure. But I, I think they might they might be leaning towards more than the Akai. Then pick up the Faramis, uh, the Valentine as well, so that they have an answer to the Faramis. Yeah. So another Akai option might be Arlet. There it is. And Arlet. There it is. Akai, Arlet. Yep. That's the combo here with the 1-1 one -one as well to try to Got cover it. for her and also to try to punish this clump up composition that yep, they sorry. are going to try to look for with a Faramis. Yep. If the phobia is not picked there, he's going to get bad. Yep. You go Martis, where they pick Martin. up the Claude immediately because you don't want to not have a game-winning hero on your side for Onik. And Onik will just ban out the mages here for a few. Perhaps the Valentina, because still, it still is a pretty good hero, and it's a hero that can also one-shot the, the Claude later on. If the Claude does not pick up the Rose Gold Meter or the Athena Shield, Valentina is a hero that can one-shot that hero. Then the Gord, which... Or Eight Novaria. Point. Yep. That's also true that Novaria. Because I kind of feel like if they don't have a hero, they can dive. Oh, he oh. got it. Oh, yeah, Spirit Rookie! No way! No okay. way! He did it! The draft was the... Even From the zero to a hundred. Even the draft had to go down for that one, man. Congratulations, my man. Dude, shout outs to everyone getting in the skins. Five, Sana all. Sana all. Actually, I do have that every skin as well. Done. All right, rich guy. It's just... Well, either way, he's looking at the draft here. Looking like Minotaur getting banned out by Onik. So now it's on to AP Brand. Whether they want to ban out the EXP or the Rome, I kind of feel like banning out that EX, EXP is going to be a, a safer choice here. Yeah, definitely the safer choice, right? You want to take Boots, Helmet also. When I give Same with Khalid. That's going to be the Khalid ban coming through. Maybe Terizla as well. Yep. Terizla Khalid would be solid to take away from Boots, but. After that game on Paquito, do you want to respect that, right? That's my question. They can pick it up for them. Wait. No. First pick on red side. Yeah. So that is a viable ban, actually, to go for. Paquito. So what's the Benedetta? So, well, also the Teresa is a pretty good hero. But usually what you counter with the Arlot, uh, against the Arlot, is the uh, Teresa, right? You pick yeah. it up. It's a good hero to go up against the 1-1 no in a way. So yeah, oh, the court, as we expected. And I think Onik are willing to give the Valentina. I decide. Oh, by the way, there is a chance for AP Brent to all act to also pick up the, the Lapu Lapu once again. Okay. We've yeah. seen that it worked before because it's a, like I said, it's a great hero versus the Faramis. So I'm thinking for AP Brent, they might just mind out the turret stuff for good measure. Yeah. I would say because, again, the Paquita was strong. 
but boots on the Terizla, we see that it's a comfort pick for him. And yeah. I kind of feel like I don't have the numbers, but if boots gets the Terizla, the, the the percentage of Kyrie actually securing those turtles and lords significantly increase. Yep. It's a massive chance of a uh, hoot hoot as well from Monik. Ooh. Knowing that there's the Arlet and the Kai, that could be a one one. And one one. one. Yeah. Oh, they manned the Dairoth and the Khalid, so you're right. The Diggy could actually still come through That's for right. Onik here. Yep. But they might pick up the Boots Hero first, though. Because they want to keep this Guinevere kind of flex. So, what are the heroes that could be there for Boots? Maybe they steal the Edith or the Lapu Lapu, actually. Again, a lot of EXPs are open. Yep. They could just go for Terizla, right? Yep. Terizla is like the safest. It's like one safest. of those, like, just pick it up and then um, almost like you can autopilot. Because I'm, I'm guessing Boots has been playing this hero even in his sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. He's like, yeah. Oh, penalty Five zone. Penalty zone, yeah, yeah. He's a lot of XPs. I think XPs and M5 have yeah. just been that way, right? They can play Terizla in their sleep. It's the most common hero. Uh, they go Grok. for the hero that's not as common, but it's a Grok in the roam, I'm thinking no, I now, mean, right? Technically, Flex still. Yeah, but technically, so far this tournament, have we actually seen a Grok XP? That's my question. I don't think so. We haven't. Oh, the pickups. For AP Brand, Lapu Lapu still is a prime option. There's also the option of the Edith, because Edith is naturally a good hero going up against this uh, Faramis. But you spend that out, and then the Valentina. It's a valid choice as well for AP Brand, unless they want to go for Eve, which has Ooh. been proven to be good against the Faramis. It is. Great against Great. the Faramis. Against I the mean, Faramis. there's a reason why the Gore was banned out, right? Exactly. Mm. But they could also just go for the safest choice, Lilia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lilia. Yeah. Such safest choice. So now the clock is ticking down. A lot of good choices, and yep, Lilia has been picked up, and Damas live again. I mean, Ooh, he's been waiting on this Damas, man. No reason not to pick it up. No. This might be the game-winning draft coming exactly. in from Ren. The series-winning draft. What Board wins all. That's why it's banned. That's why it's banned. That's why it's banned, Naisu. With the Dyroth being banned out, what else is left for Onik for Boots to use going up against this Thams? There's still this Edith. This is technically not a not a very bad hero, but at the same time, it provides you with the front line that you need. And then you can run down the enemies with it. And maybe they're, they might even consider Uranus, actually. Oh, <laughs> For that, they have bad. the split push. For them to be able to have the split push, you'll purify, and then you can stay in front of this um, Akai. Yep. Clock is ticking down. It looks like Tremble Onik. They're going to pick up the Whoa. Phobius. It's all part of plan. It's all part of plan. AB Brand 4 3. Mm. I mean, we talked about the Phobius the moment we saw the 1 1. That's right. Yeah. And then on top of it, the Arlet comes around, and then you think, okay, Phobius. If it's not picked, it's going to be banned. That's what you said yeah. in the first phase. It wasn't picked or nor banned. So oh. it was picked up. We have Mr. Bomba again. Oh, there you go. And Mr. Basic as well. Mr. Building. Basic and Mr. Bomba, the two Bs. Two Bs. We just need Beloisky to complete the BBB. BBB. <laughs> All right, going into this game, Wolf, the Phobius, will it be a difference maker or will Boots won't be able to do much with him? Difference maker when it comes to the team fights, 100%. My problem is, how does it fare against the Thams in the EXP lane? I would assume that it's not that good. Well, so there are many few heroes that actually win against the Thames in the laning stage. The golden road for this year is for the Sky Kings. Five seconds till the the enemy dream is still alive the for them to complete Smash it, them. but they got to take down AP Brand. That is again in match point where we're going into game number Welcome six to, to see Legends. whether it will end here or it will go all seven games. At the start of the game, it's... Kyrie who has a significant advantage on the Guinevere. This is the reason it's so heavily prioed in the draft. Baptiste and Owen, though, very aggressive start of the game. Actually clears it out very well. Kyrie has already rotated. This might be a miscalculation. Sans as well is here. Flicker out from Owen. Baptiste holding on to that orange buff. But in the end, will disengage. Yeah, yep. interesting idea. Because we know that the Phobius will not win against the Thames, but he gets level two now, so it's gonna quite an even matchup. And the reason why that happened is because Keyboy did the anti-glue treatment in M4. If you remember, they yeah. used the Grok to block the minions twice so that the minions will be in favor of Boots. And that was a genius move coming out from Onik. That's why they drafted this Grok earlier on. We got to talk about Super Marco again. Now using the Master Assassin, where before this, he used the Tenacity, but Kyrie 
Trying to go for the invade. Spatial migration. Retribution secures the invade steal over to the gold buff now. It seems like he should be able to find this for free unless... Nope. Kyrie takes it. Yeah, it looks like... Yep. Looks like Flapteezy still again wants to go for that Corrosion Scythe early. And maybe try to bully out Boots because... The Vovia is strong, but if the Vovia can't do much in lane, then it's not going to be that big of a problem. Kyrie again, always getting pressured by AP Brand. AP Brand has a thing for Kyrie. Yeah, they know. I mean, he is cute, but you know, even the fans in the building. CW versus okay. Super Marco, one v one battle. Oh my goodness! Marco able to escape. Regen pop. They like CW. Does this mean Marco has already used it? Oh, a diamond oh, tap. Oh, oh. needs one. Super oh. Marco gets Ooh. away. My God! Every little fight. Woo. I, I, I feel like after this game, they're gonna be best friends, man. Yeah. They are. I mean, like, that or kind maybe of... maybe not, you know I mean? like I mean, dude, you, you bonded over a best of seven like that? <laughs> true. That's true. You gained respect, man. They have an even better or special, more special connection for sure. Clapteezy jumping forward. Final Requiem locking few down. That's a lot of damage. Black Shoes as well with a heavy spin. Clapteezy secures it. The heavy spin knocks Keyboy out of the frame. Demonic Force still. Now on the Clapteezy. One more shot should do it. First blood secured by Onik. Keyboy still onto Owen who still has the Vengeance, but he gets knocked out. Final Slash into the Vengeance, into Kyrie, one shot, but he's still able to survive. Ogwin turned around now, still brought back to the team by the Stampede, and it's AP Brent who win in a prolonged team fight. I mean, that was a very prolonged team fight. I kind of feel like Onik really wanted that kill because, again, he was right in front of them. Who wouldn't want it? But yep. AP Brent was able to buy enough time for the rest of the team to respond. Exactly. The thing is, Onik will be will manage to go for double lanes this time. That this is the effect of CW winning some of the early stages of the match of, of the this laning stage, allowed him to get even more gold for his team. And that this is the main win condition of Onik. Stat pad, this uh, Claude give all of the things to to CW and let him carry the game later on. Looks like the first item coming in from Lilia is going to be the enchanted talisman, going to help out quite a lot during that turtle fight. Well, wow. CW as well, Super Marco, they're really going at it. Blazing Duet in the bottom lane. Super Marco gonna be chunked down. He did get the gold buff, however, and Onik now trying to look for an angle to attack this bottom side of the map. Meanwhile, Spatial Migration into the Requiem finds a kill in the mid lane onto Few. Without the Purify, he was a sitting duck. Going at the able to force the final slash or the Purify onto CW. But that was a great pinch coming out from Onik. They have found a reaction coming from AP Brand because there was a massive push in the bottom lane. So naturally, you want to defend that, but they cut it off. Right now, how he has a level advantage onto Kyrie. So for me, it just signif signals that the invasion onto Kyrie was definitely worth it because yep. Kyrie is. I don't know. This is Kyrie, man. Even with a level disadvantage, I feel like he can still secure the turtles. Final slash, though, on the Suns. Might force a flicker out with Easy jumping in, but he. Actually, instead goes for the Ooh. nether realm, brought back! Sans taken out, the flicker with one second off, Spatial Migration though, locking him down, and Turret gets the kill back, and it's a one for one. Now it's Boots, who's rotated over, Demonic Force already used earlier, Ooh. so now it's gonna be reset. it's gonna be on cooldown. Yep. Nice reset coming out from, uh, Whoa. Key Boy. Coronation, wild charge, plays into it! Getting him down, Key Boy gets the kill, CW. Goes for another wave, pushing the mid lane, but Sans respawning. Kyrie holding the turtle down. Yeah, right now the turtle has been started. Sans is there. Ogwen, Chewe, sees yep. it, but looks like Kyle Tizi is going. Yep. I don't That's know. Heavy spin. Still no, has it. No demonic force, spatial migration, Vile Rec, we have retribution. Kyle Tizi finds it, and even a pin onto Kyrie and AP Bren come alive once again. That lead going back and forth. Absolutely, AP Brand taking advantage of what they have. They, they have the heavy spin versus the Guinevere. The Keyboy getting chunked down. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. oh my goodness. What was that kill? That was Flapteezy. The fadeaway. And, and what he does is, I think there's one thing that I really want to comment about Flapteezy. A very smart move that he made. After he was able to take out the Nether Realm, there's a suppression, right? So he threw his sight, waited for Sans to be not invulnerable anymore, then swings him back with the sights, then gets the kill. And he does it, almost does it again against Keyboy, taking full use of the sights. We gotta look at the goal lead though, because even though AP Brand has the goal lead, but CW has the goal lead. Oh, before that, Sans getting chunked down. 
Looks like Oku and understanding that Sans is not in a good position. He wants to force it and forcing on CW. Purify now brought back to Oku and the vengeance is going to be reset and he goes back to the other image. And he pops in that blazing duet but Flap Teasy is there to punish. Keyboy wild charge defensively and AP Brent take the lead. Significant lead as they will be able to take out the turret up top. They get a kill onto CW who uh, we have been commending to be able to farm out the early stages of the game, but now it's stopped. And AP Bren have the absolute lead in the first six minutes of game number six. Oh, Flapjz. Looks like he is not the one getting caught here. He aggresses even though Kairi was the one initiated. Yeah, even Keyboy now opens it up. Super Marco getting the turret in the bottom lane. Ogwen poking Keyboy down, doing a good amount of damage. But right now, AP Bren, they're moving as a unit. Boots is moving around Sans to make sure that Sans is actually able to survive, actually able to farm Look up. Look Marco. Super Marco is just pushing. He's alone in the bottom lane. It's a 4v5 for Onik, but they're not actually going in just yet. They go for it. Space Migration Battle Requiem locking Ogwin down. That should be a kill. Kyrie picks it up. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane. Tier 2 should be taken down by Super Marco. Fuel. So able to pop the Glooms in. Demonic Force. Sony clap TZ away. Keyboy break taken very low. Count TZ with a good pin down. But Demonic Force is still on him. Fuel. Black Shoes back away. That's Sans flickering forward. Kyrie finds the turtle. Meanwhile, Sans will fall. Clap TZ outplays him under the tier 1. I mean, he was the, he was greedy, man. Like, he really wanted it. And the thing is, he paid for it. Right now, Onik, even though they won that, 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 that turnable again. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I feel like losing that tier two yep. is going to hurt Onik 100%. in the long run. 100%. The only good thing that might have came out uh -oh. from that is the fact that they pushed the mid lane. And the fact that they pushed the mid lane means that they have access to better access to the mid lane. And obviously, you get, somebody just can take care of this long lane anyway. So that's the only good thing that came out of that. And of course, the oh. gold that they had afterwards. And look at... This is interesting. CW. Actually, wow. I'm looking at boost because usually you see the Clock of Destiny, but he went for the Lightning Truncheon. Yeah. Yep. I, I think I like this build better. Dominance Ice Rush into the Lightning Truncheon as, uh, as the Fovius. You're not that required to actually output the damage anyways. You have the Claude for that and you have Sans to dive with you. You badly need the dominant size because you're the one to be in, in the front lines. And AP Bren, with the, the fact that they have both Ogwin as well as Flaptizi, good sustained heroes, somebody has to really man the front lines and then take over with the dominant size. I'm very interested to see the Lightning Truncheon on the Fulvius. But before that, Kyle TZ finds Kyrie. It looks like they want him. Heavy spin, but the Valor Requiem cancels it out. Sounds gonna be pinned down to the wall. Final Slash used up another round. Gets Kyrie for man, Keyboy! Finds a wild charge of few, gets Kyrie down. CW, we're able to fight. Venture still gonna be popped in by Flap TZ as Boost jumps into the back line. Demonic Force from Boots! Crossbow tank though for Super Marco. Sans goes first, turns in. Super Marco is down. Ogwen jumping in. Another one from Boots! Flap TZ, one last member standing, and Ghostbusters to shut him down. Onik won a big W there. They got a wipeout. An alpha of AP Brain finding a good jump onto Onik, almost taking out Kyrie. Sans' ultimate was just uh -oh. pixel perfect. Oh, Sans, they're blitzing it here. They're blitzing it. Kyrie's yep. already here. Kyle is bought. They, they are giving it away. They're giving it up. Onik have taken the first lord of the game. Look at the life coming in from Indonesia. They're excited, man. Right now, Onik having the lead here. But again, AB Brand, they have showed time and time again, they can fish out that mistake coming in from Onik. And we've seen quite a few times with Boots. Let's talk about Boots, 2-0 and 5 here, Wolf. Yes. Was the last one to get into the fight around the uh, Lord area. But his timing was perfect because now he is able to force out Super Marco. And big shout out to Kiba with the flicker play. Or the the wall charge play, in fact, in a previous fight. That's, that is what allowed Onik to win that fight afterwards. Right now looking at the items as well, even though a big goal difference coming in from the Claude as well as the 1-1, one -one, but I feel like Super Marco can still dish out the damage. For sure. Sans here, just, he's zoning everyone out. He's just like, I'm a Fermis. Choo-choo, I'm going to hit you. Choo-choo? Is okay, that what Fermis... Yeah. Is that is the noise and sound? Choo-choo. Okay. I believe choo -choo. you. I, I play Fermis a lot, man. I believe you. Fermis, the train engine. Nope. Doesn't have the right ring, but you know what? Oh, we'll, no. we'll, we'll work okay. on it. The most important item for Boots gets the Winter Truncheon. Able to tank damage coming on Super Marco. Definitely going to be able to dive that. And now that's a massive problem. Spatial Migration onto Flap. 
Final slash between Kyrie back, but Flap TZ is still gonna be isolated. Kyrie taken down. Another round late for the wild charge still connects him on the force. In the midst of it all. Kyle TZ now with a heavy spin. That's still Flap TZ falling down. Boots in the midst of it all. Getting out with a winner trunch and he buys it in time. Another demonic force off the wall. Go! Boots buys it, he double out! Smurches forward! Bites! A triple kill! Oh boy, key boy. Keyboy, the one to tag that, but I think that they will just sacrifice to take the Lord. And nice touch from CW again. Boots falls as well, the sacrifice necessary. Sans and CW bringing him back. The damage coming through. CW, whatever nature. Oakwood, vengeance. CW, guns him down. It's a wipeout. But Flap has respawned. Onik need to back away. Okay, what's going on? CW looks angry, man. He doesn't want to back down. He's using a claw, but. He feels like he's the Thamus. He wants to see it oh right. He wants God. to do the damage. Wow. CW. He wants to take his family to Japan, and I think <laughs> that he's doing everything that he can to do it. I wow. cannot. Uh, it is indescribable the way that he held his ground and knew exactly who can kill him. And the fact that Boots already took out Super Marco with this wonderful Winter Truncheon play, that allowed CW to be unafraid of fighting under the, the base of AB Brand. Well, Konnichiwa Mina-san. Onik right now having a 5.6k gold lead. And CW again, 8-1-5. and five. Very, very impressive here. It does look like Onik did. Now they have the mentality is that they want to get everything from AB Brand in terms of their skills. All of their survivability once is gone, CW is just going to go in and he's going to clean job. Now AB Brand, they're in a position where CW is a problem, but you can't ignore boots and you can't ignore stats. Kyrie has not been having a great game, but Dude, everyone else around him is is moving forward. Exactly. Even Keyboy with the wild charge usages, the way that he's tanking for his team. And then there's Boots. The Ooh. proper timing all the time. No contest. They're waiting for 3 13 10. Yep, there you go. It's not going to spawn this wave. They'll have a bit more time to prep for it. 13 40. Yep. Whew. So now, prepping the lane, CW has to be careful because I feel like in yep. brand, that's, that's, the, that's the goal. It's like, yo. But I feel like Flap did it. Ogwe, you gotta do it, man. Mm -hmm. Flap did it. He did. You, you you can catch him. You gotta find a slash. He's he's gonna be the one that's like, you know, everything's on his shoulders now. Those gold meat are available for the one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Final okay. Slash to, oh my god. Okay, Ogwe, Ogwe. I know I know what I said, but not like that. Not like that. Not like that. NLT. Not like that. Alright, now the Lord is marching down mid. Kyrie's down bot. The top lane is coming in a little bit slower, but the mid as well as the bottom, they're gonna crash together. In sync. Mid lane held down by the barrier. There you go, the three-way push that they built up. Top lane gonna be taken down by CW right now, but Flap TZ has dealt so much damage, but an agent gonna be popping in right now as another round gets used up. CW has to back away. Flap TZ has used the bench as well. Charge! No initiation from Onik. They'll be happy with a base turret. CW is too low for them to go for anything else. Great play coming out from Flap, forcing the vengeance and finding CW, even forcing the wind of nature. That's going to be a massive resource that Onik will not have, but they have to defend for more. Well, CW is top, top, but we got to think about Sans. He doesn't have the net realm anymore. Can Onik even force it? Oh, Ogwa, that's a big mistake. Plays in the web from CW right now. The pullback from the Stampede to the Onik force to execute them in the back. Now it's going to be viewed. Dealing some damage, but that's a double kill. Oh! Super Marco finds a cross ball tag. Now Thayne, that's Keyboy with a wild charge to take us to game seven. There is absolutely no way we can end the M5 World Championship without going all seven games. Onik and AP Brand, this isn't the best of seven. Now it's just the best of one. And I wish this will go game 9, game 11. I wish to see these teams fight against each other time and time again because every single play is just amazing. It's smart, it's amazing, it's mechanically skilled. I'm so entertained. I'm going to pass it to the panelists and let me just say, the question is, I don't think Busk is getting shafted anymore. I know for sure now we're in game 7. We're going to game seven. Onik takes game six, going all the way in hopes of claiming the golden road. What a turnaround, a back and forth in the early to mid, and now here we are. 
I, I thought they didn't have it in them, you know? It's easy to lose faith for some of these teams, but I'm so just as surprised as all the Onyx fans out there. They found a second win. They're looking cleaner than ever. The fact that Mr. Calvin Winata apparently is aging like fine wine. His laning is getting better and better each and every time he touches the land of dawn. So I cannot wait to see who our MVP is going to be. Brought to you by the Republic of Gamers. Let's have a look here. I'm just as curious. For game six, we're handing it over to Calvin Winata. Stone cold, thumbs up, all according to plan. Amazing, he's able to duel, he's able to own lanes, he's able to threaten after Boots, after Sans, after even Keyboy engages. And that's after a game wherein Kyra was clearly struggling. I, I cannot believe it, you know? from where he came from. And more importantly, the fact that this is not exactly the easiest lane to win. He has been abusing every moment. He's ending with a GPM of 990, 10 off a thousand. This is uh, as high as it gets in the current metagame. We are far from the days of two, three years ago where in MVPs or even cores would be hitting a thousand, a thousand and change. He got this much of gold throughout game six because of how Onik controlled the map. It came in at a turnaround, a rubber band wipeout in the mid game, wherein they so, so well orchestrated, even after AP Bren pulling out some punches, presenting threats in the early. It's just this lineup right here, this team fighting lineup. It's insane, right? And I think, you know, the first issue that they have to address is what do we do against Flap TZ Stamos, right? We know that the early game is played so perfectly by AP Bren. And the solution to that is, you know what? Take it. Because Stamos' biggest problem is that he runs out of gas, whether in the late game or during team fights, where he is by far, I would say, He's got a time limit on him. In comparison to Boots on this Phobius, who is able to delay and really stretch out, really get the mileage out of the hero, that's when you know that AP Brim were exhausted in fights. Boots is an unsung hero. <coughs> You'll see him here making the call. I want to pick up the Winter Truncheon third item and make it count. Yes, he eventually does get punished. Yes, eventually he does overheat, but this is the writing on the wall right here for AP Bren. It was hard for Super Marco to play the way he wants to. It's one thing to try and outplay a Fovis by just walking, but how do you even take the skies? I don't know, man. I really don't know. I think, you know, CW in this particular case, you know what, come on over here, come on over here. Let me, let me tell you something about Mr. CW himself. Before this, Kage's used to rule the world. Kage's used to be the one coming from Onik, Indonesia. I hear you. And I when hear they you. made that first change, it was CW who took that place in the gold lane. You know what? We saw his 1-1 one, one here, along with the days of his old Melissa. You remember his Melissa? Oh, yeah. Was, I was like, oh, 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 oh. Muddles. And then he was like, Muddles, and get away from me every single time he makes it work. And that's the difference. That's a difference maker here, right? From Mr. Calvin Winata. If we start looking at the emblems, we see a deeper story going on here because immediately it's about itemizing based on the tempo of the game. And that's what a lot of people don't recognize here. When we start to look at, for example, Sans, he understands that he needs to be able to rotate fast, but more importantly so, having the CDR to build up stacks so that when he has just enough in the early game, hey guys, I can dive, I am willing to die for this, I'll be right back when it happens. And here's another matchup where in the Master Assassin, really didn't do much to win you the lane. Very early on, Onik and AP Bren were team fighting, and that's already one emblem null from Super Marco. So he really wasn't able to take advantage of that one bit of extra early percentage damage to try and quell CW's reign here. That's why he's the MVP, is because he was able to make the most of that advantage that he had, wherein it's Onik playing with numbers. Here you see it ended very, very quickly. Not even enough time for Super Marco to find that window to try and play out of Boots' ult. Absolutely, and I think, you know, the biggest problem that we're seeing right now in the laning phase, considering that Super Marco should technically won the lane is the fact that he is not as generous with his battle spells compared to Mr. CW. But even then, right, we look at the items generally about the same, and of course we've already touched on the Fovius. I was surprised that he didn't go for the Ice Queen's Wand, but again, tempo of the game. He's looking to dive, he's not looking to chase. 
he already had it on the way. I believe after that Radiant Armor, it would have become eventually an Ice Queen wand. Again, rich guy, 990, carry, 95.4. It's what oh. you can expect when everyone from Onik is just setting it all up for an amazing, for a big time blazing set. And not to mention, Flap was really overloaded here. Now you kind of see how in the games that he actually won with the Thams, it was working, is because AP Bear were able to close the fight out. But when you're on the back foot, when you're up against the ropes, you're just a big dude with a lot of cardio. You're not really punching back as hard. Mm -hmm. And we look at the damage dealt, right? CW coming on off top, of course, coming up with 95,000, 85% of the overall Team 5 participation. But the question is, what could have AP Bren done better in these cases, right? And obviously, there were a couple. However, it really comes down to the micro mechanics of it all. The fact that Few was getting chased around in the manner that he did because Keyboy was holding him hostage with that wild charge, making sure that the black shoes were always covered. One could only theorize, and here's mine, all right? The fact that AP Brand's playing with a Thams able to come in from the flank and try to stop via damage, again, absorption and dispersion. Two, you have the final slash from Ogwin, and three, you have the heavy spin from Kyle TZ. They never really got to break up Onyx formation. Onyx had superior communication here, and that's why after Boots took to the skies, they were the ones left scrambling. Note the places of which they actually took these fights. A lot of it happening around the river, a lot of it happening around neutral objectives like Lord and Turtle. Even though, yes, it is technically an open and a very enclosed spot to be in, as long as Sans is nearby, that Nether Realm makes all the difference. That extra bit of time makes all the difference for people like Boots, like the Art of Thievery on this claw from CW. So now we've come to this. Game number seven, all on the line. The last time we were in this situation was about two or three years ago in Singapore when Brenny Sports went all the way against the Burmese Ghouls. Here in the now, the greatest finale. What else is left? It's just a matter of who doesn't overheat. It's just a matter of who doesn't just tilt first and who has better communications. I think, mechanically speaking, these teams have shown that they're the best of the best. I mean, it's three variables that they have to worry about. The laning stage, the team fight, and most importantly, the heart at the end of the day. Can they coordinate just as well as all of their team members? With that being said, this is gonna be the final panelist with me and as well as Leo. It's been good doing good work with you up here on the panel. Oh boy, with that being said, we're gonna be throwing it over to a break. And when we come back, the grand finals will conclude.
Ladies and gentlemen, we are here now in the Philippines. It has strike 12 midnight and we are going to a game seven. Let's go! This is the grand finals we want. This is the grand finals we deserve for the final game here again. LaFell, Marco, and Wolf. It could not have gone any other way. This golden road from Onik, this travel all around the globe yes. for AP Brand, it's gonna be completed in the final game of the day. They had to work for it, right? Everybody has to work for it. If you look back, everybody's shooting for AP Brand now. If you look back, in their M2 run, it's another best of seven. So every time that few plays, and Flap T's you face in the grand final so far, it will go to a game seven. <laughs> hey, you're right. Team memberships, man, it helps you out in a lot of ways. That's right. <laughs> they are here for endurance, man. And right now, three to three. I think it's safe to say for us on the desk, whoever takes it, we're satisfied, man. Oh, yeah. Game seven in the best yes. series that we have ever casted yeah. in our lives. Definitely. Is it exactly. true for you? It is, it Definitely, is true. Yeah. Which also makes it ever We've so an amazing like, desk. And by the yeah. way, Amazing panelists as well. Quick yep. shout outs to Leo as well as Gideon breaking it down all this while. You guys have been great. But now, it's we gotta time. look at the players, man. Look at the trophy. Remember what you're fighting for. Look at that trophy, Mirko. Does that not spark emotions? It does. It sparks more than emotion. Hard work, dedication, everything put the entire year to build up to this one moment. For Onik, the Golden Road lies ahead. For AP Bren, the World Tour shall be completed with one game victory. And it's going to be the most nerve-wracking game for sure for everyone. The winner will celebrate so much. But the losing team, how do they recover from that? Game 7 in the World Championship awaits. And it is... It's totally, totally intense for hey. anyone. All I can say is, we're gonna bring our best. The players are gonna bring their best because the energy from the crowd here, they've been here since, what? This is like, what, seven, eight hours now? Yeah. That's right. They're still strong. And looking at all the players at this point, I'm even questioning what is going through their brains, if anything is going through their brains at this point. I wonder if it's all just muscle memory, man. It has to be. At this point, it's mental, it's mechanics. Everything goes down here. Well, this is the best of the best. This is the final trap of the day. We're jumping to trap game number seven. AP Brand against Onik. Who wins this one? We'll be the world champions. Right off the bat, bat. we can see the Guinevere going to be banned out as the last ban. Wine one also banned out. So this, does this mean AP Brand will take the Fredrin immediately or Arlet? As we know for sure, Arlet has been the favorites of AP Brand. But, but Matilda also banned out. Kind of makes me think, yeah, surely Bruno or, as, or the Fredrin should be the pick here for AP Brand. I almost feel like... You got to set up for that Claude, man. Either you're going to use it or you're going to go against it because both Super Marco as well as CW, which in my personal opinion are the standouts for this tournament, they're really showing up with the Claude. And I kind of feel like it's going to be picked up in the first phase if you ran to pick up the Frederick. The Theramis is the typical answer for Onik this time. Maybe they pick up the Claude with that. Or maybe they, they take up the Bruno. Bruno Theramis or Claude Theramis. No reason not to pick it up if you're Onik. Yeah, especially considering they might be up against either a Claude or a Brody. Two heroes yep. that up against the Nether Realm will struggle. Yep. Onik can definitely go for the Faramis here with... I mean, just take a look at the bands, right? Just throughout this series, the progress yes. that we've seen. No AP Bren started out with just Cryo heroes. Kandida. It's a Kandida for Sans. It's an or Indonesian hero. Keyboy. Oh, you're right. That We're flex talking potential. about Onik. We're talking about Onik. Oh my goodness. Do you still want to go Lilia for AP Bren or do you want to pick up the... I mean, the Bruno is good. Famous plus Frederick though. That's a valid option here for AP Bren because it's a classic combo. 
Decent versus the Kadira. Oh. There it is. Maybe they pick, they close it out with the Darlet. <laughs> Here's and the thing, man. I kind of feel like that Kadira pick Weaver. was forcing that Ferenmin's pick yes. because it's a good, it's a good answer, right? Kadira goes in, wants to burst. What does the Ferenmin's do? Cancels out that burst. Yep. So this Kadira feels like a bait, man. Yep. Something about oh, this doesn't seem right. The art. Oh, of Brody, a very early Brody here for maybe Brent. I mean, it did work before. It's instantly okay. answered by a Terizla. Onik are going in for their signature picks. Or the picks that work. I'm looking at the draft here, and I kind of feel like Onik, they want to have a very solid front line. I feel like they want to go in. I feel like they yeah. want to pick up the pressure. They want to pick yeah. up the tempo. Sure. Not letting AP Brand time to think. Yeah. Because AP Brand is a very disciplined team. That's right. And if you break up their Systematic. And if you... I would say if you break their formation, maybe at a game seven. Yeah. In the best of five, you can't do it. In yep. the best of three, you can't do it. In the best of five, sorry, in the best of seven, that's where you see the cracks. Yeah, you're right. Because you've seen so much games, you've seen so much, uh, you've battled against him so much. And you even mentioned like CW versus Super Marco, they might, ha might have developed their own relationship in that cold game. <laughs> because of how many times they have poked each other out. It's a very likely option here. Uh, AP Brand, gonna be looking for um, some bands on the Marksman for sure. Like the Claude still is a good band for AP Brand because you don't want to give that out. And, and also, Maybe the maybe the Bruno Bruno. There's no time to chit chat. They ban on the court anyways. They're seeing this this pick as suspicious as well. Yeah. This might be it. But if it ban out too many mid laners, maybe no. sounds just like yeah no I can't use the Kadita no yeah. worries. That's the beauty of using the flex pick here in game seven right. Meanwhile yeah. for AP Brand they've gone for solid picks in their own roles for the Brody the Fairmis and the Fredrin. Yeah. I would say the Frederick can be flexed, but for AP Brent particularly, we've never seen it at M5. Yeah. We've seen it multiple times into the mid lane, even, even in ISF. Yes. How about the Dyroth here for Onyx as a man? Because we know for sure that the Dyroth is great versus the Baksha. Got to be pick up, and obviously the Novaria um, from a few. Yeah, we got to look at both players, most years hero, 71% win rate for the Valentina for San, 77% win rate, Novaria for few. Again, very impressive heroes where we saw doing quite well in this game so far. The stats is on the screen here and looking at Onyx mm. betting out the, the, Grok. the Grok as well. Yep. My inference here is that it is a hero that can be used against the Kadida in a way that you can spot out where the Kadida is. It's a bush checker. I don't know if that's a proper word, but yeah. It, it, it is now. You, you said it on the world stage at what? Like what? Okay. Four million people watching? That's right. If we can go up to six, that would be amazing. But yep. the final ban here coming in from AP Brand, we will see yep. if Brand rules. Wins. If Brand wins, I'll propose to my girlfriend. W Mans. W Mans. Wait. Do it, do it now. Do it now. Yeah, yeah, do it now. Do it now. Why are you waiting? <laughs> Projection, right? Yes. You gotta imagine it. Mm -hmm. You gotta do it. Do it now, man. Do it now. But Lilia getting banned out as well. They're really not taking the bait here. They yep. do feel like this might be a key boy. Kadida. Now that they see Ooh. this Brody, do they pick up the Bruno or do they still want a Claude? Claude is going to be a solid option for Onik. But if they don't pick up their gold leader now, I think they might be eyeing for something like a Harith. Yeah. Oh. I, mean, no. I was about to say yeah. that too. It's a, it's a good hero. Maybe they pick it last. So now it means that they might pick Happy up... Happy anniversary, by the way. Yep. Happy anniversary. They might pick up something like Edith here. Oh! Edith! It's the Faramis, of course. 1% ban pick rate, 100% win rate. rate. That's right. And it's against the Faramis, against the Brody. Two heroes that struggle against a Eve. That's right. This is what happens in a long series, man. You, you wait to you hold on to your ace. Exactly. You exhaust everything and then Bad you... Merko? I'm sorry. Nani? I said 4-0 something, remember? You're not right. fair. You're fair. not fair. Fair. Oh. fair. fair. You're fair. Fair. Yeah, true. Oof. Okay. Now you're going to be looking for maybe a Roamer. Maybe a Rupee actually for AP Brand because it can check the, the waves. Minotaur is also open. That's also a valid hero going up against Eevee. I mean, you don't get some the real world manipulation, but at the same time, you Sorry, stop him from doing it. The world. So they eat it. They go eat it and the Khalid. So this leaves us with a gold laner. Will it be Harith? But that might be an overload of magic damage. Yeah. So they might just go standard. Go for Claude. Yeah, go go for standard, man. This is game seven. Game seven. You, you don't want to leave it up to chance. 
If they do pick up the Harif, then again, keeping their ace in their sleeve. Yeah, yeah. Bruno, Bruno or, or Claude. Claude. Yeah, yeah. 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 And Bruno or Claude, definitely. I think Bruno, more consistent damage. Claude yeah. can do the same thing, yeah. technically, with a lot of pressure they already have yep. already, but Claude. CW is feeling it. CW is feeling it after an hey. MVP performance in the previous game. What did he do? He went in their base and he said, fight me. Fight CW. He took that fight. He got that wipeout. I mean, at this point, you got the momentum. Don't stop. This is for the world championship. And the thing is, if you're looking at to compare both of the lineups, we know for sure that this Brody composition from AP Brand is very strong at the early to the mid game. Come late game, though, deceive with the Claude, and then you have the Kadita factor. It's going to be hard to control the map. AP Brand. They might win this best of seven. They should win this best of seven only with their standard play style, their early game. To everyone tuning in, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the last game of the M5 World Championship where either the Golden Throne will be completed or the World Tour be completed. We're jumping into the game where this game will determine the world champions! There's no other way to see it happen. One last time. Rizzo Memorial, Coliseum, give it up for the two teams! Now, Keyboy as well as Ogwen, man to man defense, looking at each other here. Looks like this time, maybe Brand is opting not to go aggressive into the jungle. Kyrie, for once will have an easier time forming up to level 4. CW opted to go for the Purify, knowing that he can be gone upon by Ogwin. And obviously, Flap TZ can go for the Flicker place, we know. That can eliminate the Goldener easily. So Wind of Nature might be rushed here by CW. Maybe his third item, or maybe fourth. Okay, some damage placed down. Quick Sand Guard gets him a bit more HP. Kyrie already looking for an invade. Kalti is able to clear it out. Just a big one, though. Kyrie looking for a little small one. Retries it, gets level four, and pokes Kalti getting boots a bit more prio in the bottom lane. And, and again, we got to look at how Sans and Keyboy. I got to say, this duo has been doing well for Onik, but the same can be said for Few as well as Ogwen. I do feel like with the composition that they both have, the mid duo is going to be a very big impact in this game. Speaking of uh, the mid duo here for Keyboy as well as Sans, it's a it's a tricky duo because you clear the waves fast, but you don't necessarily stay in that lane. It's going to be up to Onik on how they utilize this, Keyboy, Kadira. And at the same time, AP Brand, they don't have the best heroes to kind of check the bushes. Maybe Kyle TZ could be there, but of course, few can uh, save his teammates, but they're not built for this Kadira. Few able to pull them in, but not that much damage. Both Sans as well as Boost just want that level 4, Kyle TZ. Already leashing the turtle in a position where he can cancel at any moment. Kyrie thinks about it. Will boost as well as science, not level four. Doing the same thing. Kyrie with the shield unity into the back right now. Able to connect it onto Ogwen, who has the Earth Shatter. And now the onward. Turns the point Sans. Flap Tazy finds him. The real world replacement is popped in. First blood secured by Flap Tazy. Another round coming down as Boost deals some damage. Retribution battle still for Kyrie, but few finds it. And that's going to be. A skill from Keyboy. Ogwen with the Primal Wrath. The Praiser's Wrath! Ogwen gets the kill onto Keyboy. And Onik lose out in the first turtle fight. Oh, yeah, definitely. AP Bren won the turtle, won the fight. This is the usual story of this best of seven. Look yes. at AP Bren to win the early. Yes. It's the early game for AP Bren all the time. They're the masters of the early game that we saw all throughout this M5. Every time that they win, they destroyed their enemies in the early stages. And you gotta say, FAPTG started the charge once again, going in for the flicker play. In fact, they have poked Sans. Sans forced to use the flicker and the real world manipulation to try to keep himself alive. But in the end, during the turtle fight, he was a non factor. And it's all thanks to FAPTG. Yep, now, looking at the item builds here, the clot has to delay a little bit just because he has to build a little bit of defense. But Boots getting attacked here. Look at that burst. My goodness. The Ghost Bursters as well. Boots, defensive penalty zone. Kalteezy dives, flicker. Out. Real world manipulation. Popped down by Sans. Ogwen just posturing, zoning Boots away. Meanwhile, well, looks like CW just Ooh. wants to farm up safely here. My and goodness. again, Onik, they have to find a way to slow down the game while AB Brand has to figure out 
how to get these objectives because they've been getting the kills. They got the turtle. Yeah. The faster they can get the outer turrets, the more space they're going to deny from exactly. Keyboy. However, few with two assists and a lot of lane, lane pile. Able to get to level 6. It's actually a level, almost a level ahead of Suns. Gonna be waiting for that. That's a massive lead that Aperbrand has. More resources, more EXP means that in the early stages of the game, yeah, surely they have the advantage and they can team fight. And eventually they will activate Super Marco. Fortunately for Onik, the turtle is onto the bottom lane where Super Marco is not at. That means that they might not suffer from the Brody, but at all the same, Onik, they don't have the best tools to go up against Aperbrand, anyways. Yep, and now we're looking at a turtle. Kyle Teasy initiated. Kyrie finds Flap. The Flap just wants to wait a little bit of time. He sees Suns. Pokes him down. There's a good amount of damage. Kyle Teasy as well there. Both junglers at level 7. Flap on the turtle. No quick sand guard this time round. Kyrie picks up the gold buff. Meanwhile, up top, there's also a little bit of a gank. Oh, going to be caught. Taken down. Kyrie versus Flap versus Kyle, and it's Flap who takes it. Kyrie brought back to the team of the Shadow Stampede. The real world manipulation, not enough to take wow. it down. Kyrie with the juice. Whoa. And that is a trade. One kill up top for a turtle for AP Brent. Kyrie is one of the oh. only junglers that can play a utility hero like exactly. an assassin. How the hell did he thread the needle? He gets out and into safety. Unfortunately, he still missed the retribution. So, a still massive coming up from AP Brent. Almost a free turtle, if you think about it, because they didn't lose anything. At the same time, Onik. They had to just back down after all their investments that they did. Q in the mid lane, very low, Nether Realm. Popped in, Kyrie brought back to the team and onward. They're shattered. Not connecting bomb, get out! With a rough wave! Ogwin Bowie, few as well! That was Kyle! With an appraiser's wrath! Key! Boy! Fight! The Oddity! Another one on the Marco! Go to Barbara! But Sans picks him up! This is why I say, man, Super Marco, as well as CW, they're developing a relationship. Super Marco came in and was like, I want to go down, but you're going to come with me. And that's a positive trade, obviously, for Onik as they switch back to toward their side. They give two, two assists to CW, one kill after that. Eventually, he died, but that's all, all good for, the, for a Claude who's looking for farm in this early stage of the game. Most importantly, they have punished Kyle TZ. And Onik have recovered. It's going to be good for the uh, Delusion squad. Yeah, I, I just want to say, man, this time they're picking up the pace. Both teams are fighting, I would say, in a faster tempo here. Yes. Both teams are finding the mistakes, and this is what happens in the best of seven. Key boy, I got to say, very good counter engage. Wonderful. Coming in from AP Brand is like AP Brand, it strikes, but then Key boy is just like, I'm just waiting for you guys to clump up. And he, look at I want to deal maximum damage. Look at his position right now. He's trying to. Pin down Super Marco without the flicker. Does have the Petrify. Super Marco not feeling oh, so I... confident walking towards that bush. And that's a smart decision on his part. I mean, at this point, he doesn't want to get wet, man. Like, he, he smells something and he's like, I'm smelling a fish. Kyrie smelling an engage. Flapteezy jumps forward to Petrify. He knocks Flapteezy out, but he's still able to get out in time. The quick sand card buys him a little bit more time. CW. Able to bat away with a battle mirror image, but he did just bait out a raging sandstorm and a quick sand guard. That's good enough because me sands can pop the ultimate this time. No petrify this time though for Keyboy. Oh. CW no blazing the web flap TZ jumping forward on the sands. Doing a bit more damage. CW trying to turn it around. Earth Shatter. Oh, went compromised. Oh, look Onward. at the turtle. Out turtle. Cal TZ finds it. A beautiful retribution, a beautiful macro play by AP Brett. Looks like Onik, they just want to get some kills. They don't really want to contest with the turtle because we saw that they are basically avoiding the turtle. They just want to go in. They want to get Super Marco down. Speaking of Super Marco, looks like he boy has to use the rough ways to, to escape. We see AP Brett uh, pushing the envelope up top. Blazing the wet on the Super Marco. Still able to disengage for now. Pots in the snacks to zone TW away. Does the same to Kyrie and Boots is waiting in that bush. Flap TZ needs to back off. And Onik and AP Brent, both these teams. Look at Kyle TZ. He's taking advantage of this chaos. He's like, hey, if you guys want to go up top, I'm going to go to your purple bomb. It's a massive win. The retribution, he steals it. AP Brent are making micro moves that eventually pile up. And now it's great macro from AP Brent. They have regained the lead because of the small things that they have done. And and they are doing it cleanly.
Oh yeah, very clean. Right now, Onik, it looks like they're being more responsive than being proactive. Whatever AP Brand is doing, they want to counter it for better or for worse. And AP Brand, I kind of feel like they, they're starting to understand the mentality coming in from Onik. So if you guys are waiting for us to make a move, well, we're going to give you the sleight of hand. We're going to show you the left side while we take something from the right. Bro, this up, up top. That means Onik might go for the push here. But Flap TZ ever so on point with the defense. And AP Bren are just denying everything away from Onik. Onik just can't catch a break. Yeah, look at the position from Onik. Everyone is on one side uh -oh. of the map. Sounds now engaged on right now. No Not able to pop anything in time. And falls. Keyboy in the midst of it all. Petrify. Rough waves. Taunted up. Canceled up. What Too a bad. Kyle TZ shuts Keyboy down. A turn of our memory. On to Kyrie, who pops in. That turtles his poison. And AP Bren now with a significant advantage oh, in the no. mid-game. The mental distress, man, is getting to Onik. That's Sans right. Sans now making mistakes. And the, the, the problem there for Sans as well as Key Boy is that they're not tanky heroes. They're eliminated easily. They didn't have their flickers. And the thing is, the Lord was already respawning during that time. So every single move that Onik did in that fight is a mistake. And AP Bren punishes with the Lord take. Right now, if we ran 3,400 gold lead. Onik, they have CW on this quad. It's possible. But AP Brand, I don't feel like they want to wait that long. They're waiting for that, that point where Onik will concede a team fight and then they might try to push to end. Stampede, Kyrie with the flank. A weird angle, an off angle to catch AP Brand off. The Purify going to be used up by few. CW claims the orange buff. Keyboy gets out of the taunt. Lord spawning back in the land of dawn, this time on AP Bren's side of the map. It'll be the defense for Onik. Fortunately for them, they have all the tools to defend. They have an Eve. And this is something that they can use to bridge the early game to the mid game. At this time, Onik needs to go full anti-disaster protocol now. They need to just regain the, their part of the map at least. Yeah, and they can use the Eve for that one. So Marco able to get the turret up top. Kyrie so far is taking the opportunity of AB Brand setting everything up for him to farm for himself because he understands that he needs to get as tanky as possible. Hold up, that turret. Oh, still kept alive by Onik. Now looking at the mid lane tier one. Boots holding it down, but the turret should fall. Tier one over to AP Bren. You see what move coming up from Kaltiz. He's zoning out the members of Onik by just literally walking down and AP Bren are e taking an easy turret in the middle. Further, increasing their lead to 4k, and off, of course, they're going to get another turret. Now, Onik, their base falls. This is not looking good for Onik. You can hear the cheers coming in. Amy Brand has the energy coming in from the crowd. Boots goes in, Kyrie as well. Does the same, now taunted up. Brought back to the team, Turtles of Boisson is going to be used up. Kaltizi has the appraiser's wrath, gets chunked out. Penalty down! By Boots! Kaltizi, raise his hands to the back. Keyboy, looking for the flag right now. Goes in, but doesn't find anyone. Rough waves, only onto one. Boots brought back once again. Ogwen, conceal, Earth Shatter to lock Boots down. Kyle doing the same thing. Keyboy with Oddity. Kyle sees him knocked up. Ogwen with a follow up. And that's the Earth Shatter to lock Onik down. Onik, they made a move. That was a brave engage. Everything went right, but the damage was not enough. Mid lane base turret at risk of getting taken down. One more shot. Two hoop. base turrets, 10 seconds on the clock for Keyboy, 6 for Boots. Admirable coming out from Onyx to go for the play. Because Boots landed a beautiful penalty zone, but they didn't have the damage. And Sans was sitting back. In fact, CW was babysitting Sans during that time because he knows that the Khalid will eventually jump and they needed to punish. What that meant is that after the jump coming out from Boots, there wasn't any follow-up damage. Even the real world manipulation is not enough because the flap, because the nether realm is available. So Onik tried to go for the play, didn't have the items to back it up, and unfortunately lost so much because of that gamble. AP Brand now doing the Lord as Kyrie! One against oh three. no! Brought back and taken down. Onik on the brink. And AP Brent capitalized. Now on to Boots, DPC, Keyboy with Oddity, with the rough waves, the Nether Realm saves him, CW with a Purify, AP Brent are running on it down. Keyboy gets another side close. Super Marco has slain the mid lane. But there's no defense, Sans is 
down for 30 seconds. There's a fat minion of waves in the bottom lane, and they have the pro D. Mid lane, gonna be cleared up right now by Boots. He's still holding on to the bottom wave. The base! Gonna out as well. They're gonna look at the base. They're looking for the base. AP Bren, the Sky Kings have been taken down. The Golden Road to death. Bren, Lang, Malakas! The gold, the host country has never won a World Series. Look to the face. They kept the trophy here. They continued the domination. They are the curse breakers, the two-time world champions. They are A, B, Red. It's a pleasure working with you, gentlemen. My name is Abel. Alongside with me, Wolf and Mirko. It's a pleasure serving all of you here. But now we are throwing it over to Mara with a world Champions! Congratulations to AP Brand! What a recovery! And now we'd like to call Onik! Please come forward! We'd like to call on our first runner up, Onik! Onik, thank you for showing us greatness in your M5 journey. You may now take your final bow. You may now take your bow. We admire the grit, the determination, and we hope to see you guys stronger next year. this moment, we'd like to welcome Mr. Lucas Mao, Managing Director of Moonton Esports, and Ms. Sophie Guo, Regional Esports Head of Moonton Games to award the champions medals and check. The Bees return to cement their legacy as their first ever Two-time world champion! Team manager, Addy. Bando! Super Marco!
And of course, all the people behind the scenes. Coach Fran. And the legendary Coach Ducky. All the people behind the scenes, managers, staff, and everyone who made this win possible. You are now two-time world champions. Once again, everybody, give it up for AP Brand. Thank you, Mr. Lucas Mao, and thank you, Ms. Sophie Go. Now it's time to announce the MVP of this grand final series. Let me hear it from you. And to celebrate the achievement of our final MVP, let us all welcome Smartphone Country Product Manager of ASUS Philippines, Sir Jerry Chow. Incredible! Best of seven journey! Now, it's time to announce the M5 World Championship Finals MVP. Congratulations to Flap CZ! Flap. Flap! Flap, congratulations, Flap! Flap, parang nasupresa ka! Congratulations! You are now a two-time world champion and you are the M5 Finals MVP! What's going through your mind? What are you feeling? What do you want to say to everybody? Uh, sobrang... Ay. Sobrang nakakashock po kasi... Di naman ako yung nagbanalo eh. Yung mga teammates ko yung ano eh. Nagbanalo eh. Actually, nagbata nagbatalo pa nga ako nung ano eh, nung arlot ako. So, di ko kakalain, parang ano, parang surreal. He did not expect that he was gonna win the finals MVP. He thought he made them lose. But look at him now. He's the finals MVP. And let's now take a photo off. Photo, photo up, up. We'll photo, photo up. up with the finals MVP. Thank you very much to Mr. Lucas Mao and Miss Sophia Guo. Thank you to Miss Jerry Chow. All right, AP Bren, your trophy is right there ahead of you. You may now take. Your walk of victory! Your pursuit towards greatness has led you to be crowned as the world champion. And now, it's time to raise the trophy that will immortalize this legacy. In three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, AP Brand, your two-time world champions. This epic clash of titans, AP Brand has proven their greatness. Champ 
Championship has finally come to an end. We have witnessed history. And let's not forget that M5 is powered by Moonton, presented by Kidia, and supported by ROG. The official gaming phone, Grab, the official super app partner, and Secret Lab, our official share partner. On behalf of all our sponsors, our partners, our production staff, the players, the talent, the crew, we hope you enjoyed this tournament, and we thank you for supporting Mobile Legends Bang Bang World Championship and for being part of the AB Brands journey to greatness. My name is Mara Aquino. And I'm Tito Mikey. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in M6. Pinas lang! Malakas!
myself into this game, yeah. I feel the power to dominate fate. Championship mind, no time for the week. We're starting to the game. Shout reveal, better than great. That's how we feel. I feel like the floor is lava. The energy's getting higher. You're saving my eyes. Cause I know just what I got, got, got. I got you like you and I. Nah, nah. And you know I hold the power. Just feel it on the Oh, yeah. Make it my ground. 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 Make it my ground